Brought to you direct from Studio 3B at Baird Brothers Fine Hardwoods, the American Hardwood Advisor is your source for trends, tips, and insights into how the building industry has evolved. Join me, Steve Stack, along with guest builders and industry leaders as we talk shop and go in depth on what it takes to be the best of the best. Dive into topics like architecture, industry trends, project plans, historical tools, tricks of the trade, and life's lessons from more than six decades of experience in the hardwood lumber business. Hey folks, Steve Stack, Baird Brothers Fine Hardwoods, uh, Studio 3B, Canfield, Ohio. And uh, we've been working with this next guest for, I don't know, eight months, a year almost. Seems and a lot longer <laughs> to them. Now watch who you're talking to. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Hal Schaefer. Hal, welcome to Studio 3B. Man, thank you for having us here. Boy, I'm telling you, this is like, a, it's almost like coming to a family reunion. We missed you guys. We've been away for a few months now. And right? it's like we haven't got our dose of Steve and Baird and, and all this. It's kind of nice to come get an IV plugged in and, and get back to where we were. So we are in the midst of a partnership, Baird Brothers Fine Hardwood, Renovation Hunters, Outdoor Channel, and we're excited. Well, I don't think you can meet our excitement. I'm telling you, this is... Uh, it was quite an adventure. So it's so different than anything that I've ever done, but this this has definitely been fun. And, and that's the great thing about it. This part of it, the relationship with you guys, making this just feel like we just joined a big family, it just doesn't seem a lot like work. We're busy, we may even be sweating, we may be tired, but it just don't seem a lot like work. And and we've, we've done all the above, the, the sweating, hustling, oh, you got getting it. stuff done. And, and before we, we go down that path, but it's important for folks to know that they're seeing Renovation Hunters clips on Instagram and Facebook. They're yep. seeing Baird Brothers clips on Instagram and Facebook. So that's where you recognize this face from. Yeah. <laughs> that and, and a couple milk cartons. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> we promise not to bring that up. <laughs> but it's okay. So, so we've got all that going for us. And, and before, we, before we go there and... and recap some of the stuff we've been up to over the last six, eight months. Uh, the folks want to get to know you a little deeper. You have been... Oh, now I'm scared. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> it's a story path. I wasn't nervous till now. <laughs> so you, 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 you've, you've dabbled in a little bit of everything. I mean, you, you're, from, you're from NASCAR, you're talk radio, you've got your own TV show now, uh, Drop Zone on, on the Outdoor Channel, and that and our conversations over the past few months, you love the outdoors. And I don't mean you love being out in the outdoors, you love and appreciate the outdoors. No doubt, and that's, that's the truest sense of, of the way to put it because it's, it's a, certainly a, a big affection that I have, only, only, only third to, to my wife and the good Lord above. Uh, is my passion to the outdoors, and uh, and that's it's it's just it just it always feels like everything we do, right? Everything you're out there doing when you when you're doing positive stuff in the environment and for and, and for the outdoors, it it feels like you're doing good, right? It's it's not a reward just for you. It's a reward for nature. It's a reward for the general yes. public. Yes. It's a reward for the landowner. It doesn't matter. There's, there's lots of rewards to be reaped from it, and they're not just selfish rewards. No, and, and for anyone that hasn't, your audience will completely appreciate this. The Baird Brothers Fine Hardwoods audience, some will, some may not, but they should. Take three hours out of a morning. Hunting, oh. not hunting. Whatever it is. Walk. 30, 40, 50, 100 yards into a wood line and sit your back down against a tree, close your eyes, listen and smell, and there is so much life and oh. vibrance out there. It is, I tell everybody that they say, well, you know, when do you have time for church? When do you, when do you have time for this? When do you have time for that? I'm like, let me tell you something. I go to church every day I get in a tree stand at, in the morning at dark, and I watch the world wake up. You can think about how the good Lord made all this, right? right. And you, you feel closer 
to nature. You feel closer to him. It makes you, when you're in, in that passionate moment that, that you so, that, that, that it's just electrifying what it does to you. You, that's what it, you, you not only think about nature, you think about all the people you love in your life. You think about, um, it's just so much positivity that just flows through you when you sit there and you watch the world wake up. It is, it is amazing. And if you've never done it, if you've never done it, if you'll go do it once, just go do it once. Yeah, right? It will not be the last time you do it. You don't have to. You, you don't, don't have to be a hunter. No, you don't have to be a hunter. And, nope. and, and it, will, it will flip that switch for some of our finest natural resources. Oh. And, and you will develop an appreciation and a respect for what he's created. Yeah, you know, my whole life, I, I, um, at times, I made a living indoors, right? Mm -hmm. Right, uh, because it was necessity. Had a growing family, three daughters. There was things you had to do, right? That's just, that's how I was raised. I was raised in a fairly big family. Um, I was raised in a very strict family, right? That we, we all had to be responsible for certain things in our life. Young people hear this. Um, and there were consequences if we didn't. And, but you think, oh, he had a hard life. No, I had an amazing childhood growing up because what I got to do is every night, I sat at a dining room table with everybody in my family and sometimes friends, and we all ate together, we talked together, we communicated together. We, the, the bond of closeness continued to grow every time you do that, right? This day and time, we have kids eating up in their rooms while they're playing a game. Mom and dad, maybe at a bar top, you know, or, or, or an island, there's not a lot of gathering around the table. Um, and that whole family aspect. My family, when we went on vacation, we all went camping together. Right. We were in the right. outdoors, right? Some of my best memories, very best memories, are where our cousins come together, all of our families, the families joined, right? Made it a huge connectivity and a strong bond between us all. And that's what we're losing in this country today. And it starts right there. Uh, the, the things that are wrong in our country right now all starts right there at that dining room table or the lack of not being there. The lack of not being there. And, yes. And, and it's, we're all busy. Oh, no doubt. We're all busy. You know what? And, and if it's not every night, that's okay. But you need to make it a point to sit down. Uh, you know, I've threatened the kids at home when we get together. Um, and they're, they're grown adult kids. Yeah, absolutely. You know, but I, I threaten them. I, I see the first cell phone come up on the, on the dining room table. That, I say, I'll get a basket and everybody will put their cell phones in it. So we're going to talk to each other. We're going to find out what you've been doing for the last week or this, that, and the other thing. And that, That's the thing. This day and time, people know more about what's going on in the world and they know nothing about what's going on that's going on with their loved ones. They know everything that's going on in the world. They keep up with it every day, right? But they don't know the real importance of what's going on with their loved ones. What's, what's you know, is there a way to help them? Is there something bothering them? Is there something they're excited about? These are the things that we're missing that, and with all this said, what we just talked about, this was the dream of where we went to the current show. This was, exactly. this was, exactly. this was the passion to that show. That's, you made, you made the tie in there and, and that, as folks will see, right. that that is a very important element to the premise of the, the entire premise of the show. That's to the core. Right. And I think I had growing up, you don't know, baby, I was the baby of the family, right? So I ultimately got to sit back and I got to learn from watching my older brothers get whoopings. So I didn't <laughs> get as many. <laughs> I was pretty smart. My dad, my dad lay one to you. I didn't I got I got one. I got one. That's all I needed. Um, but you know, even at that, kids, even me, everybody, we, we all are going to make mistakes and, and, and have errors in our life, but it's kind of like the old saying, 
you, you keep them between the ditches, right? They're going to do this, but you keep them between the ditches and out of the woods and off the cliffs. Uh, Kel Yarbrough used to come on when I did talk radio, uh, Carolina Outdoors Radio Network. Kel Yarbrough would come on with us, and one thing he said stuck in my mind. He said, I never saw a kid go wrong that was raised by a bird dog, right? Boredom is the root of evil in our children. That it truly is. I do not think any kid is ever born bad. No. I don't think they're born a bad person. But when, when boredom strikes a child, they're, they're at a part where their brain capacity is growing. The curiosity is at a peak. Everything to teach them, inform them, when they're bored is left wide open. And when we don't have the family connectivity that we used to, then those kids are led astray. Right, but and, and end up in places where it's hard to get them back from. So that's what the outdoors has always done. And it's not just hunting. I mean, I'm a big hunter. I love the hunting aspect of it. Um, you know, I, I, I love, you want to be an organic person and that's a big move. There's nothing more organic than going out and, you know, getting your own meat, super low in cholesterol, super healthy for you, doing all the things to help, right? Doing all the things to help the environment, to make the deer herd healthier, to make all the other animals healthier by putting in food plots and all that stuff. All this stuff comes back to being the best, most organic eating food that you can eat. Right. Right? And Very I mean, much so. So, so uh, as a kid, uh, growing up watching that, um, the one thing that I really loved doing, I always found myself drawn to the outdoors, right? Um, I played... I played a lot of sports, basketball, football, track. Um, that was my three major sports growing up. Um, and, you know, did, did my, my, my college stint, but my college stint didn't, didn't take me in life where, where I am now. Um, uh, grew up doing lots of things. I, was, I, was, I worked on power lines. I was a lineman for a while for uh, Duke Power and Pike. Um, then uh, got a job working with Mark Stahl, who was a Winston Cup driver in NASCAR. Um, was working in the shop all during the week, working on cars, uh, race cars, doing everything from welding to, to body fitting to uh, motor work to, you know, you name it. And, and then to actually doing pit crew. Now, let me tell you something. Pit crew guys this day and time, they're really good. They're really fast. When I did it, the, in the times that I did it, which was from 83 to 86, during that stint, there were no speed limits on pit road. Those you, cars come in there, and I do mean they were hauling ass. You, I mean, you were a target. Oh, <laughs> yeah, moving target. <laughs> but, and it, it was way different pitting cars back then. It was totally different. But... That was a great learning experience for me, but there wasn't a lot of money in it for pit crews back then. And I had just had Lauren, my first daughter, um, and quickly found out after I had that, being gone all week long and only home very short amounts of time, was not going to be good for the marriage, nor was it going to be good for my daughter. And my daughter was a big-time daddy's girl. I mean, I couldn't push mow a yard without having to carry her with me. I mean, if I went to the store for five minutes, she went with me. That's, that's just how it was. And, and pretty much all three of my daughters ended up being that way. They were all daddy's girls. So going through the family thing, I didn't always get to follow my passions. I got out of NASCAR. Racing was fun. Uh, ended up uh, in the car business. Um, stayed in the car business for a long time. Ran some stores. Uh, th then did a lot of work for uh, motivational sales training. Uh, and then ended up starting my own fleet sale company. So it was, uh, it was quite the niche. It was funny because I would go buy cars from Enterprise and turn around and sell them to budget. It was a great business. <laughs> <laughs> it was a great business. Um, then, um, you know, like so often we do, you know, my, uh, my marriage took a, uh, took a fall and had to go through a divorce and it kind of, kind of changed my path in my direction, but it also changed my mentality because I was working so much, sometimes working 100 hours a week, right? Trying to keep up. I, I, I was telling you, I used to rebuild motors for people in my driveway. 
right? I'd, I'd rebuild them over a weekend in and out and, and, and get them back to them inside of a week um, to, to make extra money. But what I found out is I, I listened to, and I can't tell you, I, I almost think it was Anthony Robbins that always said that no matter what your education was, no matter what your skill set was, if you found a way to, to make a living and something you had a passion for, you ultimately was going to find the most success for the least amount of labor because you had a passion for it. And you, labor's not as measured when you're passionate about what you're doing as Correct. it is when you're out doing you know, a, a, a job, right? right. So um, I was doing all my own radio ads for the car business. And I was doing the TV ads, the commercials. So they were having me. So the radio guy came to me and said, hey, look, we got some people that some of our people want to know if you would do voiceovers for, you know, their thing. And I'm thinking, wow, I'm a desperate, I'm a redneck boy from <laughs> Alabama. Somebody's <laughs> asking me to voice over their ads. Wow. You know, so, um, I, so I started doing it. And, you know, six months later, the radio guy goes, look, guy, we, we're getting great response what would you think of doing a, a talk radio show? And I'm like, well, how often would I have to do it? He said, once a week for two hours a night on a Wednesday night. I'm like, I can do that. And he goes, well, what would your subject matter be? I said, it's going to be the outdoors. That's, that's my passion. That's what I love. And he goes, well, I'll tell you what you do. If you can go out and get me $15,000 worth of sponsorship in the next few months, then we'll kick the radio show off. And... I called him four days later because I had a passion. Yeah, I had that. Fifth, I had twenty-one thousand dollars in sponsorship. And four days later, and he shook his head and said, "Well, when are we starting?" I said, "You said Wednesday. This was Monday." <laughs> <laughs> so he got me a producer, and the funniest thing ever is WRHI in Rock Hill and uh, in Interstate One Hundred Seven was the first two stations, uh, FM station, country music stations, and so the producer comes in there. And he hands me this script, and I'm reading this script. And I'm like, I can't spell script, right? <laughs> you know, I, I've never used a script. And I just kind of laid it to the side, and we kicked it off. And after the first break, the producer goes in there. He goes, do you realize that was a script? I said, do you realize I'm not going to use it? <laughs> um, I said, I, if I can't do this and, and follow the emotion part of me and – and just shoot from the hip. I said, that's what people want. People don't want me reading off of a script. And to this day, even in Drop Zone and everything else I'm doing, there's no scripts for me. I, I just don't do them. Uh, they, like when we're doing our studios, they'll give us uh, copy points and subject matter. But I don't think people want to hear you scripted. I think people want to hear what, what comes from you, what your thoughts are, not what a producer thought you should say, right. what, what you feel and you should say. And so... That's Basically, that's what I've done my whole life, and it's worked to this point. No, you know? and that's 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 so true. I mean, we here at Studio Three B, uh, we we try to approach our our American Hardwood Advisor, or Build It With Baird series, our Shop Talk. Y'all do a we great have, job with we, these things too, though. We 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 <laughs> have we have bullet points that we want to make sure we cover, but we want to cover them and convey them to our audience in our own words. In, in our, you know, uh, a prime example, we, we, have, we have some of these old uh, antique woodworking tools. Right. I had, I, I had a gentleman in, 50-year-plus antique woodworking tool historian. <laughs> right? Yeah. This is like having Encyclopedia Britannica in front of you on woodworking tools. I'd throw a question out and I'd shut up because people wanted to hear him talking about it. And he talks with passion. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's, that's right? what it's all about. And, and okay, check that one off. Okay, let's go on to the next tool. Let's go on to the next subject matter. Yeah, it's a great well, here's approach. The thing, here's another thing i tell you about passionate people. Passionate people generally are the most trustworthy people you'll find. Their passion so, is so great about what they do, they don't have to invent things to be creative and interesting. Okay, so how, you know, we've, we've, we've talked this and that. I, w I wanted to ask you, some of your first hunting experiences, what were, you know, I know what mine were, what was yours like? You know, it was, it was funny, my, my dad had guns, and, but he, my dad was, 
probably the hardest working person I've ever met in my life. Multiple jobs, worked for the phone company, but he, he just did not have that time, right, to yep. spend. So um, actually, my girlfriend's father, um, Tom Hicks, was a gentleman that got me started hunting, and he used to take me deer hunting. And so he lived about seven miles from me, right? And it was straight through the timber. <laughs> so my dad had this 1960 model J.C. Higgins semi-automatic shotgun. I'd go grab a pile of shells, stick them in my pocket, and I would try to walk up quail and rabbits the whole way to Tom's house and to uh, his daughter, Michelle. And um, I would always come over there and I'd have rabbits or some quail or something like that. And, and if I brought them back to the house, mom wouldn't cook them, right? I had to cook them <laughs> and I messed them up. And then I finally realized if you wrap everything in bacon, it tastes pretty good. <laughs> so I figured out how to cook them. But, but truly, Tom Hicks is the one that got me started. And I'll never forget the first time we went on a hunt in low country, South Carolina. It's August 15th. It's 95 degrees and it's 90% humidity and there's a thunderstorm every, every day. And so we're down there in this big dog country and it's, there is a lot of what they call Geechee and that is how people talk. Right? So Geechee was a native tongue to that area. And so there was a lot of that in there. And so I'm riding with Tom in this old Toyota pickup truck and they, I get in there and everybody's on CB radios. And this guy comes across the radio. Oh, you better get him caught the roar or whatever now and now they're you know, coming out of that barn. And I'm like, what in the hell did they just say? He said, we better hurry up and get down by the barn. There's a deer coming across the road over there. And it, it was the funniest thing. And it was wide open action. And to be honest with you, the way I started hunting was not boring. I didn't sit in a tree stand to start. I, I walked somewhere yeah. trying to jump up quail and, and rabbits. So I was always busy, so it was never boring. And then I started dog hunting with Tom and we were always running to get to here or running to get there or setting up there. And I got to listen to more deer hunting stories from old guys and deer hunting recipes. The first recipe I ever learned was to take uh, a deer neck and you cut the meat off the neck of a deer, you put it in a crock pot, you put it three quarters Coke and a quarter ketchup and let it cook all day. And it was some of the best barbecue you ever ate. Right. Amazing. Right. So, you know, it was the memories like that that fueled the passion to what I do today. Isn't that cool? Yeah. In our experiences over the last eight months as partners for the Renovation Hunters Outdoor Channel and Baird Brothers and and Crescent Tool, yeah. and Metabo, and oh yeah, and Wall Wall Panel, True, True Work right? Boys, True Work, right? Oh my gosh, the best clothes in the world. Every person I have met on set, they brought a certain passion with no them. No doubt, right? No doubt. Whether it was sponsor, maker, influencer, camera people. Oh no, I, I could not be prouder of my partner Chris Flaherty and. Uh, Kevin Tarkovich, um, we all put our heads together and really tried to find a group of people that we thought was super relatable, but truly had a passion because let me tell you something, when you're trying to renovate a house in eight days, they better be passionate because they can't be clock watchers, right? Clock watchers will never make it in what we do because we do something that nobody else does. And th that's, I'm very p proud of our group. I'm proud of the partnerships yep. that w we have with guys like you and, and this company literally could not, you could not have drawn it up, done a computer analysis and everything else and find a better partner than Baird Brothers. It's yeah. just, it's and, impossible. And I'm not saying because I'm sitting here, I'll tell, I've told everybody that down the road. I've never had partners and we have some good ones because, but you guys are there from day one to end day. We didn't expect that. We, we expected to get the greatest materials in the world from you guys. We didn't expect to get the labor from you guys and truly saved our butts 
I mean, so many times yeah. because all of our partners came in and worked. Our That's... wall control people, the Moss exactly. Epoxy. I mean, you think about it, Matabo's been there. Um, our Crescent Tool people. I mean, you think about it, all these people have showed up and, and went to work and for a common goal and a common passion, and we have truly changed some people's lives. Yeah, and, and, and you, you just said it. Everybody brought their passion. No doubt. Right? We here are, are, are passionate about the product that we manufacture, uh, and, and because we're passionate and we, we produce uh, a quality product, we're, we're proud of it. And just like some of the other folks on set, they brought oh, yeah. their own slice of passion. <laughs> you kid, you know. Uh, I'm thinking. I'm thinking uh, on one of the one of the sets. Uh, gentleman from Toledo, uh, sign maker, iron worker. Oh yeah, and he Dane, right? From uh, uh, Twisted Toledo. Yeah, uh, Ironworks. Uh, yeah. Dane is uh, that guy's amazing. What a talent. You know, but then we saw. We saw Steph jump in. Oh, no. And, and, and do some artwork. Right. Some layout work. For so him. everybody was working with each <laughs> right. other, right? To, right? to make it happen. It was. But the so, passions came together. But in, and the thing is, is you sit there and look at this, we couldn't have sat there and say, okay, Steph, you go help him draw this out. You got, it all mat, just maturates and happens. It just, it just yeah. naturally comes together, it flows together. And, and wow, I mean, it's, it's a tremendous team. And I'd put this team we got with with Kevin up top being our GC. Um, I don't think that I, I would seriously tell you that there ain't a renovation show group anywhere that can overcome the stuff that we've overcome yes. in the amount of time we overcame it and end up with a quality product that we produced. Kevin, Can't happen. Kevin, you called him. You called him a GC. If this thing ever goes south and he's looking for work, he can go to the circus because he's a hell of a juggler. <laughs> you ain't kidding, boy. Yep, right? there ain't no doubt about that. <laughs> and the problem is, is oh, oh, Hal Schaefer keeps throwing balls in there for him. <laughs> Man, it'd be really cool if we could do this. Whoa, here you go, buddy. <laughs> so, so this isn't your first go round <clears throat> in front of the television cameras. You got that. You got that little show drop zone going on. Yeah, I'm going to tell you now. That uh, I started out in 2003 um, with a show called Carolina Outdoors. I'd done talk radio. We had multiple radio stations on there. We had it was Carolina Outdoors Radio Network, and all the TV, outdoor TV networks were advertising with us, right? <laughs> because we were spreading word. We weren't preaching to the choir. Right. So it was a way for them to spread the word about their network outside of their own broadcast. So one day, uh, it, it, Michael Cooley, that owned the Sportsman's Channel at that time, come to me and said, how oh, man, he says, we have a lot of fun on the, on the radio with you. I'd, I'd really like for you to, we'd like to get you on TV. And I'm like, well, my mama told me I had a face for radio. I maybe <laughs> ought to listen to her, you know? But um, so we did, and it was the coolest thing in the world. We had, uh, for the, for the radio show, we always had the fishing report, the inland fishing report, the coastal report, and the salty dog, my old buddy down there in Charleston, always did my offshore report so we could tell people what fish were running, what baits were working, where the de what depths, everything. I mean, it was, it was really a great show. People really appreciated that show. And so he goes, so he called me up one day. He says, so are you going to do the TV thing? And I said, yeah, I'm going to do it. He goes, what are you going to do your first show? And I said, well, I probably do off some offshore fishing this time of year because it really wasn't hunting season. He goes, he goes, I got a first guest for you. And I go, a first guest? He goes, yeah. He goes, this guy, when he's in town, he listens to your show, your radio show all the time when he comes fishing with me. And I told him you were going to do TV. And he said, yeah, let's, I, I'd, I'd love, let's do, let's do a show. We'll do a shark fishing show. And he goes, but I don't want to tell you who it is. I said, you can't do that to me. You got to <laughs> tell me who this is. And... Um, he goes, well, it's Dan Marino. And I'm like, what? <laughs> what? I don't have a camera crew. I don't know. We went, my buddy Kenny Cobb come aboard with me with Hunting the World and, and Carolina Outdoors is what it started, and we ended up being Hunting the World Southern style. We rented a camera, and we stayed up in a hotel room all night long before we left at 4.30, 5 o'clock in the morning to go fishing with Dan Marino 
to learn how to use the camera. <laughs> figure but, it out. But by gosh, <laughs> we figured it out, and we produced a pretty darn good TV show. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. Dan Marino was a hoot. That was a lot of fun. And, and we cool. caught a bunch of sharks and fish. I'm going to tell you, when he goes to set a hook, he broke two rods that day. <laughs> Snap them. Oh, I'm telling you, okay. <laughs> we want to leave their teeth in their mouth, buddy, but um, <laughs> what, what a cool first guest to have on your TV show to start the career off. But, yeah, in 2009, Zip had been, uh, Greg Zippadelli uh, had been, you know, on our other show a lot, and me and Zippy had a similar direction that we wanted to go, right? So sold the other show, and uh, Zip and I started Drop Zone. And I'm going to tell you, Zip has been huge in my life, not only um, with Drop Zone, but a guy that's super successful, knows how to team build, knows how to handle adverse situations because you got to realize he was a crew chief for Tony Stewart one of the winning his crew chiefs in NASCAR still to this day right and multiple uh, championships cup championships this guy knows how to overcome adversity and right. it's it's something that when I got into this end of the world I struggled with um, I'd been a single man for a long time well the advice I got from him through this life advice was was second to none. I mean, you couldn't have paid for it, got any better, and we've become brothers. And, you know, we just have such a good time with Drop Zone. And Drop Zone has always been about it's kind of like a good old boy show, right? You know, yeah. we try to teach, you know, as much as we can to people about quality during management and helpful and all this. But, you know, when it comes down to it, it's relatable. We, and our success has been we are relatable, right? And, and that's the thing. Like, if we miss, which we do, we show it. Right. We don't hide it. We don't need to be perfect. And ultimately, what I call the Bubba Hunters, the 85% of all the hunters in the country, they don't get to go on high-end hunts. They don't have precision everything that they get to use. So missing is part of it. And when they see that, you know what, it happens to him, I don't feel so bad about myself anymore. You become extremely relatable to those people. And if you ever forget that, if you ever go into this thing, and we've seen it happen in our industry, people think that they're, they're movie stars. We're not movie stars. We make our living in the outdoors with a, with a cameraman behind you. And, and that's, that's the extent of it. Yeah. That is the ultimate the extent of it. And we all need to sometimes think about that and check our ego at the door, right? Because... The, that's the people, we wouldn't be doing any of this if it wasn't for all y'all out there. That's why they call it hunting. By gosh. <laughs> right? Yeah. Well, we don't have near enough time to go into hunting stories. <laughs> but, so, renovation hunters. It happened because we, we, we started a relationship with Crescent Tools, and it has been the most amazing relationship. Those people have, have been incredible. Um, it's, it's tools that... It, I had used, my dad had used growing up. I was a mechanic, yep. but I, like, I, I built the deck on the back of two different of my houses. You know, uh, uh, So when I grew up, especially in the South, you, know, you learned to do a lot of things when you didn't have money to pay for it, right? It was trial by error, trial by fire. And um, so you, you have to be a jack of all trades and a master of none, Correct. right? Just right. enough to get it done. And so that's kind of what we did. Well, Crescent understood that the outdoor people, the people who love outdoors, are the people that use their hands. They are the people that work on their own stuff, that, that put up cabinets in their house or put a deck on their house or put shelving in their shed or, or work on fences and, and work on their own cars, which I do. Yeah, right? right. You know? So they understood that, and we were struggling with – how do we give them good content? And we were at the house in Missouri. <laughs> so I decide, I was sitting there talking with Chris, and man, wouldn't it be really cool if we remodeled this house using Crescent tools? And then, because I'm not an infomercial guy. I don't want to sit there and sell stuff to people, right? I, I, I truly want to see them see us use the stuff that we would go buy off the shelf ourselves. And that's one that is one, th one thing that Greg Zippadelli said, I never want to use something on the show that I would not buy off the shelf myself. And 
honestly, we have done it, and we have turned down partnerships because of it. Um, and he has stuck to that, and that's one thing about him I will say. And he, is, he is loyal to a brand just like I am. But anyway, so we, we wanted to, like, how are we going to really show the, the vast versatility of their tools and the amount of different tools they have. The, it's unbelievable what Crescent has. I mean, it's I, giant. I was, I was taken by, like yourself, like my father, everybody knew the Crescent, the Crescent Ranch. Ranch. Right? Yep. Right? Until becoming involved with Renovation Hunters, I had no idea of their product offering. It's unbelievable. And so with that, with a, such a vast product offering, we had to figure out how we do this. And then we're sitting there, we're, we're sitting in an old farmhouse in Missouri on our property, and I'm like, wow, we should, we should remodel this kitchen. And we started like, let's knock this wall out and all this. So, so I suckered Kevin in. <laughs> I said, Kevin, you want to go help work on it? We're just going to demo this kitchen and get it ready to do some work on it. And he didn't know he was going to have to come back and finish it. But <laughs> So we invited him out. And in front of cameras. <laughs> Me, him, Chris, and a friend of mine, Matt, who's a builder, um, Matt Varney in, in North Carolina, <laughs> we went over and we, 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 we knocked it out. I mean, we tore down walls and put up some sheetrock. We got it all prepped. And then so we come up with the original name we were going to do was Pimp My Deer Camp. Well, <laughs> seems pimp It's not the best word for <laughs> family-friendly shows. I thought it was really cool. It had a nice sling to it. So we were challenged um, after we did that, we said, man, we want, we want to keep doing this. Because I knew what it meant to us to have that done. What if we did this for families who had passed down fishing cabins or hunting cabins or hunting camps? And in the transition, the place got dilapidated or the people didn't have the knowledge. It wasn't passed on to them how to keep it up. What if we did this and enabled families to have that connectivity to have a place for everybody to go to and to build a custom dining room table where everybody could sit down and eat. That was the two things. Yep. That was the two accomplishments we wanted to have. And you know what? We, that idea has grown to renovation hunters. It's grown to Baird Brothers. It's grown to all of our partners. And you want to talk about something that's just so exciting. And, and the biggest reward is not looking at how cool the thing was we built. It is watching those tears roll down <laughs> people's faces. It's hard for me to even say. Yep. Um, you think about it. I mean, we, we, we were able to do something and truly change people's lives. Yep. In a way that most people can't. And in this day and time, in the world we live in, everybody needs to figure out a way how to give back, figure out how to weigh to improve family and figure out how to way to bring this country back to where it once was on the, in the morals and foundations in which it was founded. This is a little thing, oh. but it's big to us, right? And, and, and it all comes back around. And, and thank you and, and Kevin and Chris for, for allowing uh, Baird Brothers and our partners Ice Energy for being on set and experiencing it. Bottom line, what you did, the end outcome, was allowing those families to reestablish and continue traditions. When you guys see the reactions <laughs> and the words that come out of these people's mouth oh. and from their heart, the first time we did it with in Kreitz, Virginia, I, the Joyce family, I turned at Kevin when Chad got through talking and in tears and what he said, because I'm not going to tell you what he said. No, no, no. But I'm not going to tell you what he said. I, I, I was like, mission complete. This is a thousand percent a success. And, you know, you always have things like your questions. This is so hard on everybody. This is good. Is this, is this truly what we need to be doing? When, he, when, when that came across and then we did the exact same thing, we followed up, um, you know, uh, in Tynesta, PA, and what what happened with them, man, it, it's just like, okay, we can't quit, right? We 
This is no longer a question of whether we're going to do it. It's just how we're going to do it. It, it, it has to happen. The Pennsylvania Project, uh, one of your other partners, Sweet Dreams, right? Oh, yeah. Them guys are right. awesome. That little, that little box truck sitting out in front of the place with the family tucked away behind it and 20-plus cast and crew lined up, right, for right. the truck to pull away, sunglasses down. You you knew it was coming. Oh yeah, you knew it was coming. Yeah, it was like somebody turned on the irrigation system. I, I just got goosebumps. <laughs> yeah, it was. And and you were talking about the sweet dreams, people. How about the effort that Katie and Greg put in to interior decorating and and put into these places? I mean that that is so far over and above what we even expected. Oh gosh, right? Yes. Oh. I mean that finished product. <laughs> It blew me away. I, I, I could not believe just, and everybody's, it's just so cool. Every, every, we're all passionate, all passionate about the same things. And I think that's what it is. The chemistry is so great that the product is always awesome. I've, I've, I've made the comment before, friends, family. I, I said it to you guys. Yeah. I said, we can transform this place into a dollhouse. Oh, yeah. And sweet dreams put the icing on, on the cake, right? My gosh. Now so you know why it's, it, it should be your dreams <laughs> are going to be sweet <laughs> dreams because I, I could have never imagined but that, what that place yeah. turned out like. Um, and, you know, you, you, you look at it and, and Chris supplies so much of the back structure, the stuff that, that Kevin and I don't have time to do. And then you, you look at, You've got that in place, and then you look at Kevin. Never in my life, ever in my life, I've known Kevin, and me and Kevin have been very close friends. We're like brothers. We've known each other for a long time. But I have not until Renovations Hunter did I ever know somebody who was a problem solver. I've never seen a problem solver like that guy, ever. Never in my life. It is it is unfathomable, <laughs> you he's, know, how he, it happens. He, he, he's that guy. And and I, I have I I have a complete appreciation of his efforts. Oh yeah. I mean, he gets on a job site and he lights the candle at both elbows. Hands. Elbows are up, buddy. <laughs> right. <laughs> and yours better be too. Because <laughs> we're going. Yeah, it is. And, and well, that's the whole team. I, I tell it you. Yes. I mean, there's there is every person. I mean, from Rachel, Christy, Camper, Mike. JR, the Ginger Bros, Joni, uh, I mean, you name it, everybody brought something to the table that we couldn't have done without. Okay, so you, you kind of sort of threw out a little teaser there. After, after the uh, <laughs> premiere year of, of, to be introduced, to be uh, exposed on, on the Outdoor Channel, but after the third project, you, you said, we can't stop here. What's down the road? Wow. <laughs> Boy, you, you ain't seen nothing yet. How about that? Um, we got some really cool ideas. Of course, um, we are putting it, the page back open, the landing page. We are going to be asking everybody to send in. You have to send in a video. It has to be a video. Just get your phone out. Do a video. Give us a compelling story of why we should come renovate whatever it is about you. Now, we're not going to come renovate the house you live in. This has to be a gathering place. Yep. It has to be a vacation home. It has to be a hunting camp. It has to be a, uh, a fishing camp, whatever the case may be, right? But it's got to be a place where family gathers. And, and we just want to hear your compelling stories because we know we haven't tipped. Oh. We, haven't, we, we haven't even come close to seeing what's out there and the people that truly deserve to have this done. And it's all going to be um, outdoor channel forward slash outdoorchannel.com forward slash renovation hunters. It's, it's that simple. You, you just put that in your computer. It takes you to a landing page and it shows you where to upload your video. Send us a video. Don't send us a picture. Send us a video. And give us a compelling story of why a little backstory, a little backstory. Because we're going to look at every single one. There yeah. are no guarantees. We're going to look at every single one, and the one that moves that needle, 
The yep. ones that move that needle, yep. that's the ones we're going to. No, no, and, and, and uh, folks, these, these, these first couple, they're, all, they're spot on mm -hmm. and, and looking for more. And I'm, I'm excited, I, I, I'm excited. Back, <laughs> back in December, January, uh, Chris approached us and, and laid out, laid out the, uh, the approach. Right. And, and we thought, wow, this is cool. Yeah. This is cool. Doing it for the right reasons. Yeah, that's right. And so, so you guys know, though, on the very first build, we did not do that for a family because we had to have a proven ground. This was trial by fire. And, and I'm going to tell you, we threw everybody in a very deep pool without any life jackets yep. on because yep. there was no lifeguard that on old, duty. That, no, there's no lifeguards. There's no nothing. But that taught us so much about our team, about what we could and could not accomplish, right? And we didn't have to do it worrying that we may come up short for a homeowner. Yeah. So this was our trial by fire. It was an expensive one, but it was our trial by fire. And, and the great thing about it is it did exactly what we wanted it to. We knew where our weaknesses were. We knew where our strengths were. So we were spot on after that. Um, and it's only gonna get better from here. And as we add new partners, there's going to be new twists and folds coming. Can't tell you everything, no, because, but it is going to be a lot of fun. I, I, this coming year is going to be uh, an exceptional year. I think we're probably going to do it in a little cooler temperatures. Because, <laughs> <laughs> because Kreitz was was rough. That was a rough one. That was hot. Tanesta wasn't a walk in the park. No, no, but <laughs> poor Kreitz. It was in a bowl. There was oh, no air up there. There was no air. No <laughs> air moving, but well, it, it was really cool. All worth it. And um, so I, I'm, I'm pretty excited. And, you know, just stay tuned to the social media pages for Renovation Hunters. My friend, Hal Schaefer, it has been our pleasure. Uh, Baird Brothers Fine Hardwoods, myself, our marketing partners, we have had a blast. Oh, it has been so much fun. You folks, uh, you, you have to stay tuned. Follow along. Hal Schaefer, Renovation Hunters, Outdoor Channel. Uh, there is going to be some fun stuff coming at you. Baird Brothers, we're, we're partners with these guys. You follow Baird Brothers, Instagram, Facebook, across the board. Here in a month or so, we're going to start teasing some stuff. Oh, absolutely. And, and it's going to be fun. And if you think we're excited, the Outdoor Channel, our network, <laughs> is so pumped over this show. And I'm going to tell you this. I'll challenge anybody... The quality of production you're going to get from this show is going to be second to none in the renovation world. Second to none. And I do mean second to none. You just heard it, American Hardwood Advisor, Hal Schaefer. Stay tuned. A lot of great stuff coming up. For all you folks listening, thanks for talking shop with Baird Brothers Fine Hardwoods. If you've enjoyed this episode and want to stay up to date with the American Hardwood Advisor series, give us a like and subscribe. For more tips, projects, and inspiration, Check us out on Facebook, Instagram, or at BairdBrothers.com. Until next time. Brought to you direct from Studio 3B at Baird Brothers Fine Hardwoods, the American Hardwood Advisor is your source for trends, tips, and insights into how the building industry has evolved. Join me, Steve Stack, along with guest builders and industry leaders as we talk shop and go in depth on what it takes to be the best of the best. Dive into topics like architecture, industry trends, project plans, historical tools, tricks of the trade, and life's lessons from more than six decades of experience in the hardwood lumber business. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, Steve Stack, Baird Brothers Fine Hardwoods. We find ourselves back at Studio 3B, and uh, we've got a great edition of American Hardwood Advisor for you. Uh, met this gentleman about eight months ago, and uh, son of a gun if he didn't turn out to be a friend, and I am most appreciative. Kevin, nice to see you again, buddy. How Thank you. you. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me here. Thank you for making the trip up from North Carolina. This is like uh, contractor's candy land, <laughs> carpenter's candy land. You know, the, I got the five cent tour. I need to get the other half so I get the full 10 cent tour. But what I've seen so far is like a kid in a candy store. I'm walking through here going, I could use that, I could use that, I could use that. 
Fabulous. You brought that pickup truck up. We can we can load it up and head it head it back down. North I might Carolina. have to rent a trailer too. <laughs> no, great facility, great staff. Uh, the owners. Thank you. I mean, and in this place, three B. Uh, uh, it 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 it's been a blessing, uh, and and like I like I told you when we were talking about doing this, I could only promise you one thing, and it was going to be fun, and and. Uh, most definitely. To this to this point, I think we're doing okay, and 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 we've got we've got some more time to spend together, and we're going to take full advantage of it, man. Because uh, I don't consider this work like we've experienced uh, together over the last six eight months, whatever it's been, and and not complaining about that because uh, there's a lot of different ways you you come to fulfillment, and you and I. Uh, along with everybody else, cast and crew of Renovation Hunters, uh, we, we had a chance to experience it these past few months. Yes, we, I mean, definitely getting to know you, especially, you know, you meet somebody the first time, you don't know, it's like being in my business as a general contractor. Are they a paper contractor or are they a seasoned veteran? You come in, you know, all dressed up, shake hands, how you doing? Next thing I know, you have a tool belt on and you're in the trenches with us, hammering away. Uh, it, it's been a blast, it's been a blast. And, and you, mentioned, you mentioned your construction company, uh, Tarkovich Construction. Uh, what town do you work that out of? I'm out of Claremont, North Carolina. That's out of Claremont also? Yes, okay. Uh, how, did, how did you ever get into construction business? From my childhood, I mean, old enough to hold a screwdriver and take stuff apart. <laughs> um, if it was broken, I would attempt, I may not have fixed it, but I could at least get it working or use it for something again. Um, my father had been in construction. He was actually an apprentice uh, for Conrail, Consolidated Rail. They, uh, they worked on cabooses, yeah. refurbishing cabooses, back when the rail industry was, was a, a mainstay, I mean, a way of life. Um, my grandfather was, was a, I don't say handyman, but he was always into something. Um, and that when, when you're exposed to that as a, as a child, you know, the tools are there. We didn't have much money. So if you wanted to do something, it was a true DIY. You did it yourself. And dad always, he was willing to tackle anything. And I was right there by his side. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, Fast forward 30, 40, 50 years, here I am, and uh, on Renovation Hunters. So yeah. in conjunction with still having a general contracting business in uh, uh, Claremont, North Carolina. So, you know. so, so uh, about your construction company, what, all, what kind of projects you all take on down there? Residential, commercial, um, it's, that also has been an evolutionary process. Uh, I started out, actually what brought me back down to North Carolina. I was born and raised in Pennsylvania. Went to school at UNC Charlotte. One of my roommates uh, was an architect and I was in school for engineering and also did some architecture. Went back to PA to Millersville University for industrial technology and drafting. So ended up going back to work for my father who was in electrical contracting. My roommate calls up and goes, man, it is going crazy down here. This is late 90s. He said, you need to come back down. He said, I can get you a job as a project manager or I can get you a job with an electrical company. So I came back down, worked for a uh, gentleman as a project manager and I'm looking at the construction process and I'm actually telling the GCs and their carpenters how to do things while I'm overseeing or doing the electrical work on it. My boss looks at me and goes, you're not gonna be here long, are you? I said, what do you mean? He goes, I can see it. You're gonna, you're gonna get into this. I go, no, no, I'm gonna, I'm, I'll stick it out. Well, two months later, <laughs> I think is when I pulled the first permit for a construction of a house. Yeah. And the, the theory was to, you know, get in there and, do it the right way. Um, so many times people just jump into something and, you know, haphazardly, oh, we'll, we'll fix it later, we'll do this. And you get down to a certain point, it's like, you know, if you would have just done this the right way. So that was the motto 
you know, that I brought in, like, let's do it the right way first. Um, and it has made a substantial difference. So I've transitioned from, you know, repairs to additions to new home construction, and then also gotten into the commercial end. Um, currently, I'm actually working with my college roommate. He has a construction company in Asheville, North Carolina, um, doing high-end residential um, renovations and projects like that, where the ornate woodwork that you all supply here at Baird Brothers um, is a key feature key feature really in, in these homes that you have. Um, whereas, you know, on the commercial end of it, you don't see that much, but you know, it, it's an, they, the two complement each other because you need to stay on a fast track for commercial, um, rather than drag the feet that you see sometimes in a residential. So mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's a juggling act. <laughs> you, you know, it's, it, it, in my career here at Baird Brothers Fine Hardwoods, I've, I've had the fortune of, of uh, number one, representing a, a very high quality product. Uh, I didn't need to be a salesman, it sold itself. And I was just the tool to service that, to get it from A to B. But I, I, I received the best in the field college education that I could have ever wished for. I, I've, I've seen uh, some of the finest builders over the years, uh, both in the Cleveland region, the Pittsburgh region, here in the Mahoning Valley, uh, where, where we are blessed with some superior craftsmanship. We really, really are. But, uh, you know, looking back over the uh, 22, 24 years being on the road and, and now uh, traveling to national home and garden shows and, and seeing different things, there's, there's I, I know I have, I have a couple favorite projects that, that I was exposed to over the years. And I remember a home up here in Richfield, Ohio, uh, was just a, a just a killer house, you know. It had it had all of the the qualities that that I would look for. You know, it was livable, it was entertainable, mm -hmm. you know, it was comfortable. And and there's one right around the corner here uh, uh, from from our campus here here in Canfield that was uh, the volume was was taking. Uh, you know the 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 guest apartment mother-in-law suite over the six bay garage and the tunnel connecting the underground tunnel connecting to the lower level of the main house and the theater in the uh english pub and the bowling alley and you know I, and and it's like wow you know this yeah. this is really neat and and just like you're 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 referencing that particular builder okay we got one shot at this. Let's do mm -hmm. it right. You know. How about you? You got you have a favorite project? I, the completed ones. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> now, the uh, there, there's been you know a, so many projects. Um, what it, what I enjoy is is to start to finish. I mean, meeting with the customer, um, the potential customer. I think it's a dual interview. You know, for construction. You have to look at it as that because they may look at you and see, oh, I, you know, I like Tarkovich Construction. They got good reviews here on whatever. You don't have a review basis for the customer necessarily. It's word of mouth, um, and you have to find that you can work with this individual because in construction, especially nowadays with sourcing materials delays. Uh, an average project is four months. A, a small project is four months. The average new home can be a year to two years, depending on yeah. the complexity of it and the size. So you are you are in a, a temporary relationship with this individual, and you all need to get along. Um, so you know, starting that process, and then the evolution of the project, and there's so many times that everything works on paper. 
you can make it work on paper. But until the customer, the designer, they see the thing come together, they see the potential that's there, then you see the evolutionary process of more that you can do, your underground yeah. tunnels or whatever you know yep, yep. they're putting in. Hey, what if we do this? When you have that customer receive your ideas, actually think about it, uh, that excites me because it's, it's, I call it construction is a fluid process, you know? Very much so. And when you have a customer who is engaged to that point, that is rewarding. Um, you know, I've done, the, the first house I did was for my parents. So that was a, a learning curve. <laughs> the second one I did was for my sister. So, you know, that worked and, you know, started going down through, did one for a mother-in-law and did some spec homes. Um, so from the home process of it, it's every project that I do where I can see the appreciation, not say, oh, you did a great job, but for the decisions that they made and that they love what they now have, that's the most rewarding. That's my favorite. And that transitions into what we've done here with renovation. Nice. You, you beat me to it. Uh, same, same, right? I, it, it doesn't have to be spoken. Uh, we've shared a couple reveals and their faces say it all. Yeah. <laughs> and I would have to say, you know, aside from all of the construction in my business, the faces and the experiences through Renovation Hunters, um, watching those families, yep. the, just to see the excitement. I even, even like the, the couple that uh, we've looked at, the Tynesta build, when we told them that we were going to do their project, I mean, that was more excitement than some people experienced ever in their <laughs> lives. And, you know, we got tears flowing. We we're on Zoom calls or, you know, FaceTime and the sisters crying out in South Dakota or wherever. And, you know, to see that impact off of potentially something that we're going to do. That's it, and and we're not going to give anything away, but your buddy, our buddy, Hal, was downright dirty that day. <laughs> <laughs> and that, like like you said, the 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 sisters and and their reaction that day, it made you want to come to work for them people. <laughs> yes. <laughs> And, and that's it, you want, to, you want to perform, and that's my drive you know, in doing these, doing any project. I look at it as a challenge, personally challenged. Yeah. And it's just like, all right, what can I do? What kind of impact can I make? And think through it um, and give it your best. And because you don't wanna go home at the end of the day or the end of the build and go, you know, I wonder if we would've, done this what what the potential could have been or you know i it's, it's like playing a sport you know if if you won okay great if you lost yet hurt i could have done better um but when you come in here with your mindset of i'm going to give it my all and there's no there's no turning back i mean when we start on these projects we are committed right to the seven eight day build you know um, we say seven days, but it's actually eight, just the eighth day is our reveal day. Some days it's a loose end day, uh, just trying to tie some stuff up. There's, there's, there's definitely been some midnight oil burned. Definitely. Lots of midnight oil. <laughs> but you know, that goes back to also, you know, doing what we're able to do and doing it the right way because we can't go back to Hyannis to fix something. We can't go here, we can't go there. Oh yeah, we left that go. No, we need to take care of everything. And, uh, and it's, it's been a big, big help having the team in place. Um, and you know, our, our influencers, our team of uh, uh, contractors and influencers help, help out in every situation too, so. <clears throat> pretty, pretty good team. Pretty good team, and 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 I have to I have to applaud you in the way that you managed 
to manage them <laughs> because <laughs> I, I, I'd be having a conversation with you and, and next thing I know, somebody walking out, hey, Kev, what are we going to do about this? Hey, Kev, can, can I have you for five minutes? Hey, Kev, that's all. I, I thought you had two first names. Hey, Kev. Hey, Kev. <laughs> I'm next. I'm next. I'm next. Whenever you're done with him and him and her and her, then you come see me. Right. So I'm mentally tracking, okay, where do I need to go to next? Uh, <laughs> no, it's, you, you approach it with kid gloves, you know, and they, starting out the first build, two or three of them knew me from doing our, our pilot in uh, Missouri. Um, so, you know, but we didn't engage. That was like a three day process. Yeah. Uh, we didn't get to the level of engagement that we needed for starting the show. And it's been a, a work in progress. Uh, probably one of the, the biggest situations that you have to deal with is you know what someone has the potential to do they're not familiar with the stringent time frame that we're on is the biggest thing because as as an influencer is doing something in the studio yeah i do a little bit take a break right when i come in there and go we got seven to eight days <laughs> 10 12 15 hour days you know weather outdoor environment heat rain snow depending on what's happening and you still have to get everything done and there's no exception and they look at you like, really, I signed up for this? I, I yeah, you know what? And, and I, I'm, gonna get, I'm gonna get back to the, the, uh, the way you engage people and, and your, your value in your building practice. I wanna get back to that, but talking about the seven, eight day build and <clears throat> Our, our first project that we sent out to uh, uh, Nebraska, uh, I was here, here in Canfield and we had generated an order together. We're gonna need this, 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 and this. And <clears throat> we, had, we had the trucking company come in to load to, to head out to Nebraska and I, I was watching that and I thought, wow, that's a pretty good truckload. And then we flew out to Denver, drove four and a half hours back up into Nebraska to Hyannis. And, and uh, I remember pulling in, in the drive that, that first morning <laughs> and there were four bunks of lumber, not half bunks, bunks, not framing lumber, finished material. And I, I, I'm shaking my head thinking, there is no way experienced trim carpenters are going to go through this lumber in a, in a matter of a week. And son of a gun, you guys made the piles disappear. <laughs> That's it. I, there was, we had to, you know, <laughs> it's in order to get done what we needed to accomplish inside that, that build. Uh, yeah, there was no exception. And with, you know, the limitations when you do these projects, there's no place to source materials when when you come up short right. for certain things. But when you have a surplus, you don't have anywhere to go with that either. So it's like you gotta come down to the, the penny on, you know, or the inch uh, with the material wise of what we need. And you come out there and it's like, all right, I got two more rooms left and you're looking at the bunk of, of shiplap or whatever it is and go, <laughs> whew, is that gonna be enough? So you get through with one and go, oh, we're going to have extra. Then you get through with the second one. I'm like, all right, I need a two foot piece to finish <laughs> out. But sure enough, you know, we managed to whittle it all away. Um, and yeah, my, my thoughts exactly, you know, when we unloaded all that stuff, I'm like, oh my gosh, <laughs> <laughs> we need about 10 more people in here. Uh, well, uh, you know, I, I remember, I remember when our truck backed up to the Pennsylvania project, the Tyanesta project. And he opened them back doors, and that's that's a 26 foot box truck, and it was filled front to back, bottom to top. And I'm thinking, because you and I were very much involved in that material list, and I thought, oh God, what did we do? This little house can't take all this lumber. Uh, again, it's like <laughs> this is not going to fit in here. 
<laughs> if we just stack it on the floor. <laughs> but uh, sure enough, you know, that one finished out as well. You know, you did trick me though a little bit on that one, but uh, we'll get into that well, yeah, another we'll time. Yeah, we'll get into that a little later. <laughs> uh, you, you, you know the thing about it, and, and I believe it was back in April of, of this year is when, when we first met. And, and we didn't know each other from Adam. And, and uh, you know, we, we, started, we started communicating, we started talking, and, and then uh, we, we met again in, in down in Virginia. <clears throat> and, and same, same. Uh, and then we got up to Tyanesta, and it's, it's like, like you and I had worked together for a number of years. And I attribute that to a couple things. Uh, the way you approach your work, uh, the quality that you expect to achieve, and, and the timeliness. But I also attribute it to personality. And I think like a lot of a lot of the folks uh, of the of the uh, cast and the crew, there's a lot of small town people there, mm -hmm. <laughs> and a lot of small time values, and uh, a lot of small time camaraderie. What do you think? I I agree. I mean, it's they they take it they take things personally, which is critical when you're doing especially you know projects like this where they want to put their stamp on there because yep. their stamp means something to them and then also with the small town following uh, or some of them on a larger scale you know they want to be able to show people this is what you're capable of doing you know under these conditions or with this product or whatever the situation is but the small town values um that was a critical and that was a critical part in developing you know my construction background yeah going back to what we started talking about in the beginning um i grew up in small town of denver pennsylvania uh, lancaster county southeastern pa heart of the amish country um, and the businesses largely were off of second, third generation, like Baird Brothers. Yeah. Um, but th that was the craftsman. So if you were a Mason, your grandpa was a Mason, your dad was a Mason. <laughs> um, if you were a carpenter, trim carpenter, whatever the situation is, I was fortunate enough to have friends that all had different businesses. Uh, my uncle started an electrical company, electrical contracting business. My dad worked for him. My dad was more so into the he was running it from the business standpoint which taught me how to run a business bookkeeping accounts receivable payable i mean from the time i was eight years old i was doing inventory counting screws and fittings and all that i don't want to have flashbacks on that one but right. um but in doing that so you're working with with other trades or other families who do things and you never exchanged money it was like, hey, you know, I, I, I want to put a new service in my house. Okay, I'll come over Friday, Saturday, put a new electrical service in your house. What owe you? Nothing. I've just, I'd like to have a brick patio. Okay, I'll come over next weekend. I'll put your brick patio in. That was it. You traded it out, you know. And in doing that, I was also helping them. So when you learn a trade from a second, third generation craftsman you you change that learning curve exponentially you know all the mistakes you make in the field as a rookie trying to do it on your own versus you know some 75 year old man who's showing you how to cope in two different types of crown <laughs> so that they receive themselves properly and you don't have a small joint in there that a small child could fall through right <laughs> you know, it's like or you're not caulking it you're staining it when you learn those skills from these these seasoned carpenters um it just helps you so much along the way and that's part of the the, the fun too with renovation hunters 
is being able to show share some of that you know with the crew well you 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 mentioned you mentioned something about uh to the effect that you were surrounded as as a young person by talented people and uh very similar to myself in that I, I, I love the old adage, it takes a village, right? It, it, it takes a village to tutor younger people and, and, and the willingness to share their information, their trade, their techniques, and that makes community. And I know uh, just over the last eight months, what I've what I've been exposed to information-wise about you and and your family and your wife and and uh, uh, your uh, Catawba creameries and and you are very heavily involved in your communities down in North Carolina, right? Uh, yes, sir. It's you know we've been fortunate enough. Um, to have the opportunity to open not just one, but two small ice cream shops, Catawba Creamery in Catawba, North Carolina, and Catawba Creamery in Claremont, North Carolina. Um, a vision that my wife and I had shared from the time we got married. We used to go out, you know, on a weekend or something and go find antiques and go for ice cream. <laughs> but we talk about, you know, the small town ice cream shop or something that you did as a child and nothing against you know strip malls and and big corporate entities but we wanted to have a place that families can come and reminisce talk about you know i remember when i did this um, and we were blessed to find a, a place that uh we ended up putting our first ice cream shop in and doing that you know we've had thousands of customers come in i mean the, the small town in catawba has 660 people <laughs> um i think last year we served 33,000 people and it's the rural areas that are so easily overlooked um but it's that's what holds i think these these towns together is the, the tight bond with the people, you know, so you got grand, you got three generations of kids coming to share ice cream, right? It's simplicity. You know, you had talked about, you know, simplicity on, I think with, with, uh, Chris in, in, uh, earlier, um, about, you know, enjoying that out in the woods. This is something that they can enjoy inside. Um, and you know, we're also, Fortunate enough, we have schools around there um, and we do spirit nights for them where the families come in, they support, proceeds go back to, you know, they're, they're cheering their football team, their basketball team, the PTOs, whatever. Um, it's just a simple way to, to engage the community and then give back. And it's, it's so simple a concept though, it's ice cream and they have fun doing it. And, uh, you know, there's worse things to do um, they sit down and eat ice cream. Yeah, yeah, you know, and 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 kudos to to you and your wife. I mean, I've <clears throat> I've started you started uh, uh, following following along on some of the Instagram and Facebook, and and you guys have a full schedule. There's not a weekend that you don't have a, a group or an organization in there doing their fundraisers, and and bingo, right there you are teaching them young people community involvement. And I, my wife, Jody, takes care of all of that. I come in, I say hello, I clean tables, I fix things, <laughs> <laughs> I do the outfits in the stores, but get in there and, and mingle, you know, with the families. Uh, you know, you develop relationships and, and, you know, it might be somebody new passing through that we catch um, and we just have the experience to sit down and talk with them. They want to know the story. They want to know what 
what brought you here? What's this? What's that? Um, but just have that engagement. But my wife is the one who takes care of all of that. She has a full schedule. Um, and bless her heart, because when I got into renovation hunters, now that pulls me out of... Yes. Um, Takes a busy schedule and really made it complicated. Complicates busy. it, yeah. <laughs> and then we have a little small farmette with a ton of animals. And so now she's she's dealing with our 14-year-old that's still at home, or our last one that's still at home, um, a barnyard full of animals and two ice cream shops, <laughs> and then listening to me call in, you know, at the end of each night of renovation, Hunter's a trip going, oh, I'm about to pull my hair out. I don't know if we're going to get done. You know, I can't let that cat out of the bag when I'm on the job because, if, you know, what is that saying when they see fear there? Right, right. <laughs> no, no, you know, and that's, that's, that's great. And I, and, and I think it was one, one of our phone calls over the course of the last week or so in, in making your arrangements to get up here, uh, I mentioned it on, on the phone. I said, yeah, I see you got the football team in one of the shops and you got the cheerleaders down at the other shop and you, you stopped me and interrupted me and you said, now wait a minute, those football players, the only thing they're allowed to do is dip ice cream. That's There's no it. Sundays, no floats. <laughs> said, they're football players. We actually had, I think, two turn in uh, applications <laughs> because they had so much fun that day. That's, that's great, that is great. So, lo and behold, uh, prior to April uh, and us meeting in, in April, uh, it was the uh, Missouri project that, that you guys gave this thing a whirl. And, and the next thing, uh, next thing I know, uh, we're involved with this company called Come On Media Renovation Hunters, uh, a show going to be featured on the Outdoor Channel, the first renovation type show on the Outdoor Channel, and and uh, we said, "Wow, let's jump on this wagon. Yeah. This looks like it could be could be fun." And and little did I know in, until we landed in Hyannis, Nebraska. How do you keep that cast of characters straight? Starting from the top. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you've got you've got a couple in Hal and Chris. Uh, no, it's. You know, keeping them straight and, and not <clears throat> not getting distracted. Uh, yeah, that's that's a chore. Um, starting out, you know, with with the pilot episode we did in Missouri. So I'm friends with Hal for years, hunted together, uh, done some stuff with him. I actually got to know him through his partner in Drop Zone, Greg Zipadelli. I was working for an interior designer, and they said, "Hey, we have a customer." high-end customer. He wants to do an extensive remodel to his personal office. We'd like you to go ahead and spearhead this thing, take it. We need it to be low impact to him, but we need it, you know, to the T. Met Greg and Zippy and I hit it off uh, probably two or three months into it. He goes, hey, I got a place up in Virginia. He said, do uh, you think you could do some work for me up there? I'm like, yeah, I think I can fit it in. So he said, well, I don't have time with my NASCAR schedule. You have to ride with Hal. Okay. So next thing you know, Hal and I are riding to Virginia <clears throat> to a lease property that they had, doing repairs on there. Then we're setting up deer stands. Then we're doing this. Then we're doing that. Uh, and like I said, Hal and I hit it off great. So fast forward a few years. He said, hey, I need a, a hand with a kitchen <laughs> remodel in Missouri. And I'm thinking, <laughs> okay, it's out of the lease. Um, all right, what do you got? He goes, well, we, we need to tear it out. Can you, can you come out? All right. So bump the schedule around, fly out there. Little did I know, he goes, well, I'm going to in introduce you to my partner, Chris. Meet Chris out there. I don't, you know, Chris and I, we all get along great. Do a little demo in here. Hal's not telling me the full story. <laughs> Yeah, after, nice we, after we come back, he goes, hey, I need you to come back out when we put the kitchen in. Okay, well, it's just some boxes, you know. He goes, no, I, it's a little more than that. It's like, well, what do you plan to do? He goes, well, we got to film it. <laughs> For what? He goes, whoa, uh, 
uh, I didn't tell you, but we're going to do a pilot episode for a, an outdoor show. <laughs> okay. So that's, we've got Crescent that, that joined in and Matabo and came out there, did that, <clears throat> put the pilot together. And then it's a year long process. When is this coming out? When are you going to see it? And so it sort of loses momentum because you're thinking, you know, not being introduced or exposed to the TV industry <clears throat> before I had no idea. Yeah. You know, I thought you'd just go out there, film the thing, do a little editing and boom, here it goes. No, no, it's a year plus. Uh, pilot comes out, it's well received. Hey, we're gonna do this. So we fly out to Nebraska, look at the property and Hal's like, uh, so what do you think? I said, man, I don't know, it's a lot of work. So he goes, well, if you don't do this thing, we're not going to do it. I'm like, okay, no pressure. <laughs> uh, so here we are, what, 10 months later, and we finished the first season of Renovation Hunters um, and keeping the crew, uh, the, the morale up, uh, the intensity, you know, has been a challenge. Hal is is always right there he's he's a, a big uplift to any spirits and you know he can engage anybody yep definitely in, in a conversation or situation or make it you know feel good chris is the methodical approach where he will analyze the situation and go what can i do to make it better he's always the behind the scenes guy hey are you okay you need anything okay just checking and you know, he goes off to the next person. So I couldn't do it all by myself as, as you know, definitely it's a group effort. Uh, and I must say between the influencers, they encourage each other because they have their, their own community. Yep. Um, which is, it's, you call it a click, you call it a, I don't know. They got their own little society. It, their society, yeah. <laughs> So no, they, the, and it's, it's in a good way because they respond better to each other, but trying to find that balance of being the enforcer, being the instructor, and then also being a friend and without anybody taking advantage of the situation, which is fortunate because the maturity level of the people that we have helps that situation. <clears throat> Very much so, and and uh, <laughs> listening to you go through and and acknowledge your your two partners in crime, Chris and Hal, because at the end of the day, you know everybody's headed headed back to their 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 rooms and getting cleaned up for dinner, whatever, whatever. Uh, but you three, I, I would have paid to have been a fly on the wall <laughs> for your for your coaches meeting <laughs> at the end of the day, getting, getting your mindset towards the next day, talking about what went on for the day. And I got to witness it live in from Hyannis to Kreitz to Tyanesta. And okay, let's partner this one with this one. This one's skill set isn't exactly this, but when working with this one, they work. And then you talk about the influencer, that interconnection and support system that they have within themselves, mm -hmm. and now that works. And at the end of the day, you say, wow, yeah. they got that done today. I can honestly say if we would go back to Hyannis, you know, it would be a little bit easier. You know, you watch me on the site. It's, I like to joke. I love having a great time. I love to kid. I love to have fun and joke around. But mentally, I'm constantly checking things off, putting new tasks in order, trying to figure out who can do what, if they can't, how can I do this? Um, but when we first started in Hyannis, I, I gave a questionnaire out to everybody. I'm like, all right, tell me what you like what you don't like, what you're good at, you know, and everyone's like, oh, I can do this, I can do that, I can do this, I can do that. <laughs> we get out there, they're like, ooh, I don't know about this. <laughs> I'm like, 
it's okay. We'll, we'll get it. Okay. And you know, it's, it was a, a learning curve, um, almost baptism by fire, right? Because, you know, someone said, Oh yeah, I've done this before. Yeah, but not like this. Um, and there is never a day when someone said, you know, I'm not doing this today. Now I gave them options. <laughs> yeah. I, I'd yeah. say, listen, it, we need, we need to know if, if you're going to be totally engaged here or not. And because on that tight time frame, we don't have a, a warm, huggy, feel good day just because, you know, you're tired. And <laughs> it's like, we're in the, I mean, we're on the edge of death sometimes and you're trying to knock this stuff out and still get, get the best product you can. Yep. And people don't realize, you know, when you see other shows and not anything disparaging about other shows, but you see the, the front clip, you see the middle, you see the back, you don't see the 30 people that come through with renovation hunters. It's the same eight people with the exception of partners like Bear Brothers coming in there and bringing the crew and you and Zach, somebody putting up uh, shiplap or, yeah. you know, building frames. Um, so we have the partners that are on the show with us that are more than eager to jump in and help because they realize they want to and they realize the intensity and, and what we have before us. Um, but it's, it, it really, I don't know. At the end of the day, it's, it's a real testament to the group of people that we have. Very much so. And, and I'm, I'm, not, I'm not saying it, it, uh, it's not hard work. There's, there's a, a lot of blood, sweat, and tears put into it. And, and that's, that's, a, that's a testament to you and, and the way you, you communicate to those people. And, and uh, yeah, you can be buddies, but sometimes you gotta crack the whip too. And, and uh, uh, you've, you've managed to do that. And, and uh, congratulations on, on uh, the first three builds uh, that, that I've, I've got to witness. And, and more importantly, or just as importantly, uh, the relationship that we've been able to build, not as business partners, but as, as personal friends. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, you know, having said that, we walk away from 2022 uh, uh, better, a better person because of what we've been exposed to and the people we've had a chance to meet. So I wanna thank you for that, Kevin. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, Continue to follow along. Follow this guy, Kevin Tokovich, right? Yes, sir. Okay, I knew we could do it. Uh, Instagram, Facebook, Catawba Creamery, uh, and Baird Brothers Fine Hardwoods. Across the board, Instagram, Facebook, BairdBrothers.com, American Hardwood Advisor. Follow along. More great guys like this character coming up. For all you folks listening, thanks for talking shop with Baird Brothers Fine Hardwoods. If you've enjoyed this episode and want to stay up to date with the American Hardwood Advisor Series, give us a like and subscribe. For more tips, projects, and inspiration, check us out on Facebook, Instagram, or at BairdBrothers.com. Until next time. Brought to you direct from Studio 3B at Baird Brothers Fine Hardwoods, the American Hardwood Advisor is your source for trends, tips, and insights into how the building industry has evolved. Join me, Steve Stack, along with guest builders and industry leaders as we talk shop and go in depth on what it takes to be the best of the best. Dive into topics like architecture, industry trends, project plans, historical tools, tricks of the trade, and life's lessons from more than six decades of experience in the hardwood lumber business. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, Steve Stack, Baird Brothers, Fine Hardwoods back here at Studio 3B, Canfield, Ohio. We have a special guest today, uh, one of our newer partners, Chris Filardi. Chris, you know, welcome. Great to be on your home tour. Oh, hey, we've, we've traveled across the country this year together, uh, man. Yes, we did. So Chris, your, your relationship with Baird Brothers comes from Come On Media, the renovation hunters, soon to be featured on the Outdoor Channel. Uh, 
It's been a crazy ride thus far. No, it has. <laughs> I'm doing stuff I never thought I'd be doing before. <laughs> right. A, a lot of folks, a lot of folks did. Yeah. And, you know, that was, that was kind of the beauty of the team that you guys brought together. Uh, nobody was real bashful or shy if, if uh, uh, one of the guys on set would, would say, hey, you're doing this. It got done. Yeah. Well, I tell you, the, the, the crew is awesome but they're all A types too, so it's always fun what happens. You just never know, you know, you just never know. So you have you have an extensive background uh, from the marketing side to building brands. And and I know just in our conversation, you've had you you've dealt with some pretty heavy hitters. Mm -hmm. uh, a couple that I know a lot of folks and myself are familiar with. Take us down that path from Chris Filarty. 20 years ago, 30 years ago, and bring us up to 2022. Wow. Uh, so I grew up in Connecticut, uh, New Haven, Connecticut. My dad was a residential construction guy. So on the, on the contracting side, I literally started picking up nails at, at eight o'clock in the morning. And just when I was eight years old, that's what I did. There was no magnets back then. You did it with a paper bag and picked them up one by one. Yep. And then yep. I'd give them to the guys who were framing and we didn't have guns. We didn't have all that stuff. So. Uh, I've got a, a, a pretty good uh, feeling towards the construction industry. Uh, when, I, when I went to Penn State, I met my wife at Penn State um, at a frat party, which was also really fun. Um, and uh, we got married at Penn State, and then we had our family. I ended up moving out uh, towards uh, Western PA. Been out here for probably 22 years now. Um, on the business side, I've always worked in home improvement brands, uh, you know, from Werner Ladder, uh, Crazy Glue, uh, I did uh, one of the first polyurethane glues uh, with uh, ProBond, which was a professional brand that Elmer's did. Uh, I worked with long handle tools, Jackson wheelbarrows in Harrisburg, True Temper. Uh, so, uh, you know, I've been in the industry for a long time. You, you mentioned Warner Ladder, and uh, we, we kind of consider them a regional company uh, from the area. And, and, uh, that had to be that had to be quite the experience. You had you had to be jet setting it. Oh yeah, it was it was crazy because when I first started, it was it was all the Werners. It was just a small company, um, and I just I kind of fell in love with their their attitude. Actually, it's a funny story. I met Don Werner at the Cologne Hardware Show, and he was doing a videotape with his agency just to promote some new product or something. And I was the only guy that spoke English, so he grabbed me. So hey, come here. And so when I interviewed him, that's how I ended up meeting the Warners is because he grabbed me and I did an interview. And when I was done, he's like, hey, you're pretty good. What do you do for a living? <laughs> so that's, that's I ended up working story. for Warner there, yeah. Yeah, you did. You had quite a stint with Warner. Yeah, I did about 20 years uh, with Warner. And uh, we went from a family business uh, all the way to, uh, to where they are now. It's over a billion dollars. Uh, tr tr transition was unbelievable from a small company to sell it to everyone, Depot, Lowe's, Menards. You global, know, global. Global, yeah. I don't remember the number of brands. We had like 12 different ladder brands around the world. So it was very exciting. Unbelievable, unbelievable. But I've always been in the marketing side, you know, and, and so I've always got out and uh, I strive to find stuff that doesn't exist for the brand, you know, and that, that's been a, a really sec a good secret for us. You know, it, 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 and I don't know, we've, you know, all, all said and told, we've probably spent, three weeks together over the course of the last six, eight months, and, and uh, let alone the, the Zoom meetings and the phone calls and this right. and that. But at some point, you shared a story about Werner Ladder and the NCAA that I was never aware of. Mm -hmm. Tell us about that. Yeah, that was fun. I, you know, we had a situation where uh, back in the day when the tournament happened, whatever facility had ladders would get the shot. And so we figured out, hey, is there a way that we can get ladders associated with the net cutting, uh, which was obviously very authentic and very real. So uh, at the time, our president, Steve Richman, he's the CEO of um, Milwaukee right now. Uh, him and I were out at a trade show and we had lunch and he's like, hey, you think we could do something? I'm like, I don't know, I'll try. And, and he literally said, yeah, go, go. I'm like, oh, I need some money. Like, how much money do we got? And so we went through the process and stuff. So it was a, it was a tough deal. It was, it was Werner, it was CBS, it was NCAA, and it was Lowe's at the time. So all four of us had to agree 
uh, to get that sponsorship done. So it took a little bit of finagling, but once we got it, it was such a natural fit oh. uh, that you know we just we just had tremendous amount of fun. I mean, I, honestly, I've met. I think there's 14 uh, coaches that have cut the net down that are still alive, and we've actually had events where we had all of them in one place. That's cool. Yeah, it was really That's cool. cool. That's fun. So you've had you've had a very busy career, careers, and and uh, in talking this morning over over, over breakfast, uh, you're you're busy again. You've mm-hmm. you've got some, and we're not going to leave the cat out of the bag, but. Uh, our families are keeping us busy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I guess I can let the cat out of the bag, right? Because yeah, she won't yeah, hear there's going to be a little cat. bit of a delay. Hopefully she'll <laughs> say yes. My, my daughter's getting engaged tonight, so I have to go bop out of there and run to Cleveland for that. So we'll see how that goes. But, oh, well. Yeah, I'm uh, excited. Like I told you this morning, congratulations. Uh, I've got one coming up in two weeks and one coming up in five weeks. and. It's it's been a crazy summer. Renovation hunters chasing us all over the country, and, oh. and the kids running us from venue to venue. It's it, but you know what? You know, we we spend a lot of time talking. I know you and I have talked a lot about you know life and balance and all that stuff. And you know, at the end of the day, when I got out of the corporate world, I needed a break. I you know I didn't want to be on. Call. I had calls all day around the world, like you know in the morning, you know, and then we do China, and then we do all these different countries, and then I get to my job at like two in the afternoon, you know? So I really enjoy now having my own business. Uh, my partner and I uh, get along great. We are the, you know, animated individuals, but totally different. So together we are, you know, one and one equals five, you know? So it's been fun partnering with Hal. And, uh, you know, what we do is we just try to connect dots for brands and, and make opportunities where we can. And I'm having fun just doing fun projects. Like I never thought I would have a TV show, right? Right. Ever. Right. It wasn't even in the game plan. But when I was with Hal, it was like we were we were talking. It was like, hey, let's do this, and we started talking about it. and It made sense, and he's got the outdoor background. I have the home improvement background. It was kind of like, yeah, let's do this. So, so that that led to uh, what Baird Brothers Fine Hardwood feels is a very good partnership, uh, one we're we're very excited to be part of, and and that goes to. Uh, I, I'm trying to think back. It may have been late 2021, early 2022 this year. You approached us. Mm-hmm. How did you find Baird Brothers out of all the companies across the United States? You know, it's funny because I live really close. I've heard of you guys before then, but never really did any business with you or anything. Uh, actually, we've got, uh, I got the information on you guys from Christy. From Christy oh, Miller. Oh, Hill Millworks. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, she was one of the people that we were working with uh, as some of the guests on on the show. And uh, she's like, hey, you got to talk to Steve. He's a great guy. And the rest is history, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Well, you you, you came in and, and uh, presented, right? And actually, uh, we were in the Maybe, workshop yeah. half of, of the studio here. And and uh, you you caught our attention. And, and we saw a lot of parallel in Come On Media, Renovation Hunters, and Baird Brothers Fine Hardwoods. Mm -hmm. And it was, uh, if you recall, I think it was within 36 hours, we said, yeah, Yeah, we're in. And and, and, uh, little did we know, uh, you were gonna traipse us across the country, but but man, we had a blast following, you know, we had, uh, what was it, April we started off in uh, Hyannis, Nebraska? Yeah, Hyannis. And uh, then we bounced back across Virginia. and rested for a few weeks, and then we went down to Christ, Virginia, and and then uh, <clears throat> not too awful long ago, uh, we spent about eight, nine days up in uh, that little town of Tyanesta, right? And had a great first, project. That was the first, the first town I ever hunted in. It's Tyanesta. Yeah, so it was really, well, that's your really stomping cool. ground. Yeah, so. it was really cool. Yeah, yeah. Th- I mean, that was fun. The uh, generating the idea behind renovation hunters and bringing in the cast and crew together, the makers played a big part. How did how did you come about determining yays and nays when you were selecting oh, your sorry. your folks? It was hard, but you know, we we had a couple of major objectives from a business. It was like a business promotion of a new show. We felt like everything we do is a year out. 
So as excited as we felt with that customer after we did their place, no one's going to see it until February. You know what I mean? Yeah. So we, we ended up uh, interviewing a, a whole bunch of the makers and we decided, Hal and I, early on that we wanted to have a footprint socially. And so we felt like getting influencers, makers that could make furniture, that could be a part of that home improvement environment would really help us generate kind of like a drip uh, groundswell of the show and of the program as we got into it. And then obviously once we hit linear TV, then it all you know, goes together. And we launched in February. So at that point we'll have, you know, we did pretty good. We got a lot of people following us. Uh, we've got great content and people are starting to follow. We do a lot of collaborations. So we picked them out with that sole purpose that we needed help. We needed people that can do really crafty, cool things like make tables and make stuff out of, because we always felt like the table was a really unifying factor in the show that everybody will eat, drink, pray, and be with their families at the table. Yes. So can we figure out a way to make the table special uh, for a particular customer? Yes. And so we spend a lot of time, especially early on with Kevin and I and Hal go to a site to interview them. We like, we don't tell them, but we look around at stuff on the walls and stuff on the floors and what is it that can survive a renovation and be moved into the point where my God, that was my grandpappy's chair, you know? Like that's that's how we look for it. And, it, and it's really been a really nice link emotionally with, with the audience. I, I, I had a chance to experience that firsthand. And one of the, on, on two of the projects especially, one project in Kreitz that was so close to perfect, you almost didn't want to touch anything. Yeah, and 75 year old cabin. Right. Yeah. And, and you guys had the wherewithal to know that, okay, we're not going to do this complete makeover. We're going to tweak. Mm -hmm. We're going to add some of the amenities and it worked out beautiful. And then to your point of that certain piece of furniture that you referenced, that job site went through a complete transformation, but that chair still stayed there, yeah. you know. And you know, what's on film and what happens is always a little bit different. What's on film is the conclusion of all the hard work and thoughts. When we're not on film, for those of the part, you know, for all the people that are involved in the show, there's 30 people that, that build and stuff. You know, they have sons and daughters and nieces and nephews and all that. And so we think about, okay, what would a 14 year old kid do here right. at this 175 year old log cabin? Like, what do we do? And so we talk about it. Like, you know, do, do we do cornhole? Do we do games? Do we do fishing? Do we do a dock? We, we will literally take, I don't know, Kevin would, probably disagree on the number. We take 80% of what we're gonna do as a construction job and plan that. And the other 20% kind of happens based on knowing the people, knowing their kids, knowing their family, knowing what they like. And a lot of times it happens after the fact. So Kevin will be talking to the owner about something, asking permission if we could do a floor, whatever it is. Right. And we find out something. And then we go back in our meeting and we say, hey, we found out. Like uh, the one in uh, uh, Kevin's, uh, the. Uh, Mom, the grandmother used to always say a line, a very sarcastic line to everybody. I'm trying to remember. Do you remember what it I was? Don't, I don't. We ended up making a frame of it. I'll, th <laughs> I'll think of it. Ah, I can't remember. Um, but basically what we did is we would, we would take that and then we'd make it bigger and put a frame around it and put it on the wall. And so when they come back, they're overwhelmed by the structural changes. But then emotionally, say, oh, you know, there's my daddy's chair and there's my grandmother's sign. And, and then they, you know, they cry and get weepy and it's just wonderful. You know, it's hard to explain, but that prep is so important. Most people don't know what, what they, we do in the beginning, but there's a little bit that comes out at the end. You just never really know until oh, it's no, edited, no. you know? Yeah. The, the, the emotional side of it uh, was, was so fulfilling to, to be able to experience that, witness that. And and uh, it was it, it was fun. I mean, the, the whole the whole series has been fun. And well, we and we 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 talk about those things that we remember because remember you and I were like, okay, after uh, Ty and Esther, we were like, okay, wow, how many people get to enjoy that kind of emotion in a oh. day's work, right? But there are challenges. 
There's a ton of challenges. Uh, you know, like there's challenges trying to get sponsors. There's challenges trying to get a location. There's challenges sometimes trying to get product. You know I mean, Nebraska, yeah, like every time we needed something that we didn't account for as good as Kevin and the team does, you know, it's a two hour drive each way. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, you know, out, out, out of Nebraska, I, I remember folks disappearing for half a day just to go on a lumber run. Yeah. <laughs> you know? I, I would say if, for, for those out there that aren't in the outdoor space, I, I say the biggest challenge is that most people think of out, the outdoor channel as, oh, I'm going to see, you know, an animal being shot. And, and, and this is not that. This is... This is really about enjoying the outdoors and trying to get both husbands and wives to sit down and look at something that they may say, you know what, we, you know, we want to motivate them. Like, we should do this. We should get our nieces and nephews together at our place. Oh, we got to fix it up. Yeah. So it, it, it really is the, the challenge of the outdoor world and then taking, we're the only show, the only DIY show this year uh, on the Outdoor Channel. So it's a big deal. It's a big deal for us to expose what we know is an audience that already uses their hands and uses tools. Listen, I've never been ever to a camp or somewhere where somebody wasn't handy. I mean, and so we, this audience is built in and no one really capitalizes on it. And that's really one of the most exciting thing from a business standpoint that your customer, now you're, you're Western Ohio, I'm sorry, Eastern Ohio, I'm Western PA. We know hunting is a big deal here. Um, so it's easier to sell and to work with someone when that happens. But when you go into different brands, like we've been into a couple brands, like I, I remember when we started doing uh, with Sweet Dreams, I'm like, furniture? Really? Yeah. I, I, and, but you know what? Not only did they bring furniture, but they created a, a aura, an atmosphere in the room. I, yeah. 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 Was, yeah. Not just for TV. I'm talking about like to live. Like yeah. it was funny because when they, when she came in, she's like, this is going to stay like this. This isn't staging. Like, no, this is your house. They did it so good that like that, that one was one that I had a, a little bit of difficulty in the beginning, but then once they came in and stepped up and did what they do, I was like, oh my God, this is great. You that, know? that project I, I may sell my primary house and just call that my residence, yeah. right? They probably let you stay. <laughs> <laughs> but but in, in in talking about partnerships, uh, you you have you have some some great ones in in Crescent Torn, in Metabo, um, Wall Control, uh, Richard and yep. and, and uh, Steph down at down at Wall Control and and others that that I, I'm forgetting. Uh, you mentioned Sweet Dreams. Yep. Uh, but to the media side, you guys started out with the Outdoor Channel, and then you received some news. This is going to be carried through Roku, through Hulu, Sling. through Sling. <laughs> yeah, so there's another 60 million uh, devices uh, that, that it will go on. Uh, so we're so excited about the extra distribution um, and and uh, American Outdoor will be another one that takes it. So the, the the Outdoor Network has done a really good job of recognizing. You know, for us older guys, it's like, what do you mean I'm going to get rid of cable? You know, like yeah. they recognize all of the different places that you can get content, fundamental content on outdoors, and they're they're maximizing that. And that's part of the relationship that we have with the network. That's really probably one of the biggest attributes of the strength and the success of of the show is just knowing that behind us they got our backs and they're trying to get as much distribution as possible you know we haven't touched on it yet but we're gonna we're gonna jump into that you know the partnership with you and hal schaefer and come on media and uh that's two of the key components of renovation hunters the third being uh, our buddy kevin mm -hmm. and 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 uh so let's talk about that a little bit how how did you guys become uh, affiliated. I mean, well, I actually hired Hal unknowingly. Uh, I worked with the Outdoor Channel at the time with WeatherGuard, uh, one of the brands I was managing. Okay. And uh, we we got a, a a star from the network to come and do a commercial for us. I was traveling at a customer or something, and I couldn't make the shoot. But I got a call from Harry, our our creative. He was our creative genius. I used to call me. He was he was so good at what he does, but he, he he's very unflappable. And he called me and he had this like backdrop of a little nervousness. And he's like, no, it went great. We got the great footage. We got the spot. You're going to love it. But uh, you, you, I don't know. You, you might want to call the talent. I'm like, well, what happened? <laughs> well, it turns out because it was WeatherGuard, they did it in a uh, car wash. 
with no one thinking the water was caustic. So they Hal put the goggles on, they put them in the back of the truck, and they kept running through. And after like the to fourth, get the shots. to get the shots, <laughs> and then after the fourth one, his arms started getting red and stuff. So he had to run in the shower and r wipe off and everything. So I called Hal, you know, to apologize and thank him for going above and beyond and all that stuff. And uh, we said, hey, let's have dinner. We had dinner, and it was like that was it, man. I knew I didn't know. I would ever be in business with him, but I, I knew we'd be friends forever. That's cool. That's a great story. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's, a, that's a real good story. And so then you guys meet by chance and, and you're sitting around talking one day and you say, hey, how about this concept? Who introduced that? You know, uh, well, first off, the working together was before uh, Renovation Hunter's idea or anything. All we really knew was that he really knew everything in the outdoor world. I didn't. I started hunting when I was in my 40s, so I was late. Um, and then I knew all, like, the home improvement stuff, and we figured there was something that we could do. But we weren't really sure what it was. And so uh, we started a company. Uh, we started helping brands figure out how to get in the outdoor space and how to get into sports and, and different things for sponsorships. And then as we started spending more time together, we just kind of, we got the idea. We were in Missouri at one of the leases that we do for, for the show, for Drop Zone. And we just, we started coming up with the idea. And, and the whole thing is, you know, it's funny. Hal's a professional hunter, right? right. World renowned and all that. I'm more like a party hunter, I'm, to be honest. I'm like yeah. Western PA. I go, I have my week to go hunting with my friends. You know, we may not get a huge buck, but we're going to get a buck and we're going to cook and have fun and make fires and stuff. So we both have the same love for the outdoors. Um, and it's funny because I thought the answer when I first started, I thought the big thing to cure in the outdoor business was to get young kids to get licenses for fishing and hunting and all that. And at the time, it was down from 11, 15 years. And when COVID happened, everybody started going out again, and it totally changed that. Yeah. So when we came into being literally the year that COVID happened, we were like, well, okay, the kid thing is out, but what we can do is preserve people's ability to be in the outside. And what we've learned by just talking to consumers that send in their videos and stuff and want us to be out there is that so many people go and have so much fun at their camp but they don't have time to do stuff. They don't have time to put a new kitchen in or to put siding in. Now, if it's leaking, that's a different story. Right. But like, usually you're up there for fun with your friends. You're just like, I'll do it next time. So we've kind of cornered a nice niche, which is we're helping people preserve their investment so that when they go up there, they're bringing the kids, they're bringing the cousins, and they can enjoy the outdoors. And that's, that's really how Renovation Hunter started. And I've had, uh, you know, the, the preservation side of it is, is one thing. And I've had the, the privilege of, of experiencing firsthand. It's not about our generation or the families that you have taken on their projects this initial season. But that allows that structure, the, the structure, the mentality, the the family gatherings to be turned over to the next generation right you know and i i've heard i've heard how talk about uh we've had discussion of of uh wildlife management and forestry management and how both affect each other and how both of those affect these next generations of hunters coming up yeah, and you know what's funny is, like, we never, I never, Hal was always on that track. I was more like, you know, hey, we can help people. We can get, you know, get them outside. And and I have no, like, with my kids, like, I don't force them to do anything outside. I just try to get them outside. Right. You know, we ran around with sticks and played army. So who knows when they're out there, what they do, and they all enjoy the outdoors you know, a, a, a little bit differently. But what I didn't know, like I knew the brand stuff would work. I knew it was a good concept and all that. But I had no idea the emotional impact oh. that it would have. Like when I, you know, you interview someone and they're crying and they're not crying because they want you to do it. They're crying because all the love that they have for their building and their family and their cabin. And they know that if we fix it, it's going to be preserved. And, and to see that, I never thought that would be a byproduct of anything. I just kind of assumed we'd do stuff and then move on. But the relationships that we're forging in these towns with the people and, and the homeowners is, is just incredible. I, again, I never even thought it would happen. And, and it is interesting. 
in that you, you touched on the towns and we were in a town in the northwest section of, of Nebraska, 142, 152, 152. Yeah, right? And it was like stepping back in time. It really was. But I met some of the greatest people mm -hmm. that the, the gentleman that allowed us to ship to his uh, drilling uh, company and because he had warehouse space and you guys had that warehouse full of product, oh, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, and, and that was, that was cool. And, and then to the, uh, the little, little town of Tyanesta, they were such a great host. That's, that's a fantastic little town sitting on the Allegheny there, you know? And, and again, the people, that little community where you guys did the, the, uh, the cabin there, I mean, if I'm if I remember right, they just the neighbor the na neighbor said, "Hey, we're not going to be around for the next ten days, two weeks. Take our cabin." Take our cabin. <laughs> and the other guy had a long extension cord. Was giving us coffee. I mean, they were wonderful. Right. They were wonderful. And then, when you want to talk about tugging on heartstrings, a couple of the families that you guys dealt with, uh, unbelievable. Yeah, it, it's nice. Uh, you know, we we we've seen a lot over the the first year. We've seen everybody just, you know, one side just grateful to have a very efficient, clean place and like, like almost like a sigh of relief, like now we can be here. But we've also seen one, and you, you were there. I, I was, I had to go home at that at that one point. But the, the guy in in uh, in Kreitz was, you know, he's like, hey, I, I kind of forgot about this. This is I used to live here, and now I'm coming back, and and now you got someone who we converted who already was an outdoor person. Yeah. To be an outdoor person again and make a commitment to his family. I mean, that, who can do that, right? Like this, <clears throat> fantastic outcomes to really what ultimately was a simple objective. You've you've allowed allowed these families through uh, through renovation hunters uh, and some of your sponsors, uh, Matabo and and Crescent and Wall Control and Bairds you've allowed these families to go to camp, whether they hunt or don't hunt, that's their choice, but to go there, relax, and get back together with their families. Mm -hmm. See, that's why cool I, go, that? I go back to the party hunter thing. I mean, if there's food and there's music and there's a fire and they're outdoors, that's a good place to start whatever it is you're gonna do that weekend. <laughs> so if you happen to hunt, fine. You know, my, my family still makes fun of me for being, they call me a hick, right? Because I live out and they live in the city. But you know, at the end of the day, what I've learned about renovation hunters is these small towns that so many people in the city, myself included, when I was younger, that just looked down upon like, oh, it's this little town. But boy, this this community, everybody knows everybody. They just got done with calving season, so they're all working together. Uh, they know who has skills, who doesn't, who's the empathy person, who's not. And and they all thrive in these little towns. People think have nothing, but what they really have is so much better than the cities because everybody knows each other. That doesn't mean they're all buddies, No, but they come, no. they help each other when they have to. And to me, it was a fantastic way to see our country, see these small towns, see how people are either enjoying themselves or just living their daily lives, you know? Once this thing gets rolling, and I, I hope I hope you folks see it when you start watching uh, the renovation hunters on the Outdoor Channel, you're gonna you're gonna see good in America. Yeah, right. That's a great way to say it. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, everywhere we went, we saw good. I, I I took away thousands of things from our Nebraska trip, from the landscape to the, the project, the one thing that I, sh I share this story all the time, there was one little grocery in town mm -hmm. and you could still run a tab at the grocery store. Mm -hmm. How cool is that? Hey, that was my job. I had tabs in about five <laughs> different places. I mean, after the second day, people were like, hey, Chris, how you doing? It's like, I just got there, you know, and, and they would tell each other, you know, like literally someone in the store said, oh, you need that, and then go call Jim, I'll call him for you. And then Jim, one guy came down and gave me gas, uh, propane gas, because we were filming something for Mr. Heater. And he literally, she called her husband, he was at work, 
Just oh, I'll go home and get it. He got it, went home, got it, and brought it to us within 15, 20 minutes. Yeah. So the, the, the small towns are wonderful. The other thing that I think was really fun, I was telling my wife about this, is like, you know when you see like at a wedding or something, you see, like, I've got wedding on my mind, but you see a little girl and she's got a dress on and she just really wants no part of it? Well, I thought that was going to happen when we were when we were in the restaurants and stuff, and you see these little kids, and they're real cowboys. I mean, legit cowboys. They ride, and they're four years old, and they got cowboy hats and boots and everything, and they wear them. And they're that's you. Can, I'm like, oh my god, that, these, these guys are really ranchers, you know. And I've never seen that, and it was fantastic to see how the the young kids and the old kids all got together and hung out. They they were yeah. they, they were taking care of each other. It was it was fantastic to watch. It it, it was. Cities have a lot to learn, I think. You know, we've we've had every, every place we went. It, it was a very positive experience, and and I think that has a lot to do with the group of people, the audience that we are dealing with. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're outdoor people. They're DIYers. Uh, they're people that if 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 they can, they'll do it for themselves. Right. Right. And <clears throat> but. The core is they're neighbors, and they treat each other like neighbors. They might not always get along, but if you're in a bind, your neighbor's going to be there for you, right? You know, I think that's one of the secret sauces, if you will, of, of the show is that it's not, you know, we're on, a, we're on an outdoor channel. There's a lot of hunting stuff. Some people don't like the hunting part, watching the hunting part. It's not really about hunting. It's about everything you do to create that environment to be outside with your family. You know what I mean? Everything, whether it's food, whether it's how your fire pit is arranged, whether it's what your food, food plots are doing. I mean, all of that stuff come together to me has been such a kind of a, just a different way to look at things. And, and you know, that's, that's, another, that's another aspect of, of Renovation Hunters and Baird Brothers Fine Hardwoods, uh, just like Studio 3B here. We, we looked at it as an opportunity to be informational, educational, and to bring new products to folks. And you guys are doing the same thing in the show. Oh yeah. Right? You know, one of the things we've been with Kevin and, and House Help, we've we've been very focused, you know, I don't know, maybe someday there's some type of boilerplate type, you know, strategy we do for each episode. But we, we don't want that. We, we want things to happen all the time that people learn from, that people experience will stay tuned to the show. And we don't, it's not like Hal is a star gets filmed, you know, knocking the first wall down and then we cut and then we come back three weeks later when it's done. Everybody does everything. We have to do it in seven days. And so what that means is that at some point when Kevin assigns somebody to do it, they may not be able to do it for whatever reason, don't have the experience, don't have the time, it's worse than we thought, whatever it is. And then you start to see other people come in and jump in and help. And so it's it's truly a 15-hour day, every day situation. But at the end of the day, everybody works together really to make it happen, you know? One of the more impressive things from back in April until just a few weeks ago, how not only the show, but the makers and influencers matured as a group. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was a matter of six, eight months and every project you can see it. And and I mean, kudos, kudos to Kevin, you know. (laughs) I mean, he, he, he was the guy that had to snap the whip but he was the guy that had to gel everybody too. And so y'all, if you don't know, Kevin is our job site supervisor. He's a great guy. Uh, he, apparently they, they say his name differently in all different countries. So it's Tarkovich, Kovich. Tarkovich. Tarkovich. Uh, but anyways, his job is to get everybody to do everything, to figure out what we have to do, to figure out what materials are. Basically everything is on his shoulders. And so when you, when you watch how he does his job, and you see, it, you know, he's kind of calm and relaxed, and you know, but but no nonsense, get it done. I think it's really rubbed off a lot on the staff and, and a lot of the workers, especially the makers. Some of them, you know, make furniture. Making furniture is really quite different than doing an addition, <laughs> right? You know, Very so, much so but they're all learning, and everybody's open to it. And and again, I you know, it's again one of the dynamics in life where you see stuff develop. I, I always assumed and hoped that everything would go great, but to see the personalities develop and to see them 
start to realize what other people do. In the beginning, every, nobody knows what everybody's doing. They're, they're, you know, we got makers, we got contractors, but when you put them together and they start to realize, oh, wow, okay, you're doing this, you're doing that. So yeah. I think it, it, it creates ultimately a mutual respect. And oh, very you can much so. feel it, like you can feel it on the job site, especially now where in the beginning we were all getting to know each other. The fun times now are when there's nothing happening. You know, you're cooking food and someone's just yeah. sitting around, they're joking. I mean, those are the moments to me that make me thank God that like I changed my job to do stuff that's fun. You right, know what I mean? Right. Like I really, when, I, when I'm there, I'm, I always take a, account, if you will, and say, okay, I created this with Hal and I'm having a lot of fun and it's a good business model and I'm, I'm meeting all these people and we all have the same thing in common, which is above and beyond materials and building and all that, it's about preserving fun and preserving outdoor. And most of the people that we deal with have that. So yes. it makes it so much fun, even when you're not working. Yeah. Right, right. It has, it, it, it's, been, it's been a fantastic uh, experience through the first season of filming. And, and I can't wait until folks get a chance to take a look at it. Uh, from Baird Brothers Fine Hardwoods, thank you for including us with Renovation Hunters and Come On Media. Folks, there is, there, there's some more great stories coming down, down the line at uh, American Hardwood Advisor concerning this group of guys, Renovation Hunters, Come On Media, and uh, we're gonna have, we're gonna con continue to have fun with this. I mean, it, it's been a blast so far. So guys, stay tuned. More, more cool stuff coming at you. For all you folks listening, thanks for talking shop with Baird Brothers Fine Hardwoods. If you've enjoyed this episode and want to stay up to date with the American Hardwood Advisor Series, give us a like and subscribe. For more tips, projects, and inspiration, check us out on Facebook, Instagram, or at BairdBrothers.com. Until next time, Brought to you direct from Studio 3B at Baird Brothers Fine Hardwoods, the American Hardwood Advisor is your source for trends, tips, and insights into how the building industry has evolved. Join me, Steve Stack, along with guest builders and industry leaders as we talk shop and go in depth on what it takes to be the best of the best. Dive into topics like architecture, industry trends, project plans, historical tools, tricks of the trade, and life's lessons from more than six decades of experience in the hardwood lumber business. Hey folks, Steve Stack, Baird Brothers Fine Hardwood Studio 3B with another edition of American Hardwood Advisor. I'm joined this morning with the third generation Baird, Mr. Zach Baird. Welcome, Zach. Yeah, thanks for having You're me. You're in the hot seat today, buddy. <laughs> yes, sir. We're gonna have fun, we're gonna have fun. I hope we can have as much fun as we did last week. Yeah, that'll be hard to beat, but we'll do our best. Right? We went, we went on your first Baird excursion. Uh, we traveled, where'd we go? We went out to Hyannis, Nebraska. We we're doing a new project with the Outdoor Channel, new TV show they have coming out called The Renovation Hunters. So we got to go out there and check that out for the first project. We were in the middle of nowhere. I think we were a little bit past the middle of nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> right? So, so uh, folks, this was a great trip. We, we went, uh, we flew to Denver. Uh, we were joined by a couple of our partners from Ice Energy. And uh, we drove for four hours through cattle, uh, sagebrush, and uh, a lot of lakes and from the farm country to the sand hills. And, and we wound up in this great little town of 152 residents called Hyenas and a great, uh, great old house. What I, what they say the house was 118 years old. I so, believe so. Right. <clears throat> and, uh, we got to meet some new friends. Who'd we meet while we were out there? Uh, so when we first got out there, we got to go to the project, check it out to, to get going. And uh, they had uh, Hal Schaefer, he'll be hosting the show. Uh, Chris, he's also uh, a partner on the Renovation Hunters and Kevin. And then they had about eight makers from across the country that uh, were there to help get the project done in eight days, which was quite the tall task considering all the challenges they had to face. Yeah, you know, we, <clears throat> when, when this opportunity was 
presented to us the renovation hunters, uh, their approach to this, these projects. Uh, there's going to be a couple more projects, uh, two more, two more houses or cabins or lake houses or whatever they end up being. But the, the whole premise of renovation hunters, similar to Baird Brothers Fine Hardwoods, and you're the ideal representation of that today being third generation and your involvement in the company now. Uh, but they want to see families like the Baird family. They want to see these families pass on the tradition of family, hunting, fishing, getting together and hanging out if it's out at a little lake house and passing those traditions on to future generations. So we looked at it and we thought, wow, this is kind of a parallel mindset to the Baird family. And, and uh, you know, some of the, some of the traditions of, of uh, we've, we've got a couple folks, yourself included, uh, that enjoy the outdoors and hunting. Uh, you know, Hatch and, Hatch and Terry, you know, first generation, second generation, they go on a trip every uh, every fall. Where do they go out to? Uh, they head out to just nor northwest of Bozeman, Montana. They go out and, and chase some elk, and they've been quite successful over the years. So that's <clears throat> been pretty cool to see. And 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 that's it is cool to see. It, you know, um, again, and and Terry has Terry has children. Terry hunts with them back here. You know, around the mill here in Canfield, Ohio, and. And, uh, and it's a good thing. You, you know it, you and, and your brother Benny, yeah. right? Uh, you guys spend some time in the woods together. You went on a trip last fall. Yeah, Benny and I went out on our first uh, Western elk hunt. So we were out in uh, Colorado, just uh, west of Montrose. So that was our first excursion yeah. on the Western hunt. So it was a good time. I do, I do some upland bird hunting. I enjoy it. Uh, my, kids, my kids came into it. Uh, you know, we, we, we've had, we're on our fourth bird dog now and, and how do I, the, the time you spend, you didn't come back with an elk this year, no. but you have how many crazy memories of while you guys were out there? Oh yeah. The clarity you get while you're on the hunt and just being out in nature and getting to explore different countries, just unparalleled experience. And then with that, you know. The, some of the better memories come actually from back at camp when you're hanging out with, with all the guys, chalking up what, how the day went, and you know you, you get some good laughs. You know, bust each other a little bit on who messed up a few opportunities, who did some things right, and that's where I think the the renovation hunters project's really neat because a lot of those memories are formed back at camp. Oh yeah, yeah. I I I've I've had the fortune of having four generations of my family up in uh, uh, Valdor, Quebec on fishing trips. You know, how cool is that to be with your great uncle, your uncle, myself, my son? And yes, the stories that are generated out of that cabin, mm -hmm. <laughs> they're, they're priceless. You know, and, and, and when we get together today, even though we're not fishing together or hunting together and this and that, and we start, ha we, we start sharing them stories, and you hear, you hear somebody say, hey, Uncle Paul, do you remember when you did whatever, whatever, and, and, and again, it's laughter. Oh, no doubt about it. You know what they say, a bad day in the woods is still better than a day at the office. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. And, you know, that's, that's, it goes back to family and tradition and, and uh, it's just great experiences. And, and when, when we were driving uh, from Alliance to Hyannis, Nebraska, we, we were, I was driving, you were spotting. What, I mean, what all did we see wildlife wise? Oh man, I don't even know. A couple hundred whitetail mule deer, it seemed like along the way, a handful of antelope, some uh, pheasants, which was a pleasant sight because we don't have any of those running around wild anymore around here. And then, uh, you know, we also crossed a few turkeys yeah. trotting out in the fields. Yeah, and, and the thing that, that took me was the uh, the waterfowl? Oh yeah, that's <laughs> completely slipped my mind. Thousands. You know, we 
<laughs> we'd be driving along and we'd, we'd come across whether it was a half acre pond or a two acre lake, and there'd be thousands of, bird, thousands of birds. Oh yeah, a ton of waterfowl. I, I think when, when, uh, when it caught my attention and I, and I started looking back, I think there was 27 different waterfowl that run that flight path and, and, the, and as they migrate, and a lot of a lot of them settle in there for for the summer just because of um, the beauty of the the country. The 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 aquatics are were unbelievable. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, so it was. <laughs> Wildlife wise, it was it was a crazy trip. Yeah, no, definitely. I, it wasn't quite what I was expecting. I'd never been out to the sand hills before. I lived out in Kansas for a year or two. So you know, I was kind of anticipating it being similar to Western Kansas, but it certainly had its own unique uh, characteristics. And it and it changed. I mean, you went from you went from farmland uh, a little to the west of Hyannis, and as you approached Hyannis, the sand hills just come to life and and uh, you know, we got to we got uh, one of one of the experiences that I, I I keep reflecting back to. We jumped we jumped in a, a side by side ranger with Hal Schaefer and one of the videographers Buck, and and uh, we went out onto a ranch, and you know back home here, you know a few hundred acres. 600 acres, you're, you're big time. Yeah, that's, that's going a long ways around here. <laughs> <laughs> but, but out there, that ranch we were on, what was it? I believe it was 60,000 acres. You know, and, and I know we, we drove on the first segment, we drove out to a knoll where we had a little photo shoot with Hal and, and uh, we had already passed a couple thousand cattle and calves, you know, out on a free range. I mean, we went back like 60 years and it was like, it's still like this. Yeah. And we had to drive three miles into the ranch and then Hal says, well, while we're this close, let's go check one of my, one of my cameras, pull the card out of it. And we drove another three or four miles. <laughs> Certainly weren't near the end of it. <laughs> you know, so, uh, what an opportunity to experience that firsthand, and and uh, you know we we met so many cool people. Uh, the show, I looking back, the show did it right. They went into that town, and they made they made friendships, relationships, um, anything from. Pioneer Drilling Company, Chad and, and uh, Mark that we met, uh, they, we had all of our product that we supplied to the project out to, shipped out to their facility because they had the equipment and, and the warehouse space to uh, offload it and, and uh, store it until the show got geared up and, and they started using material job site. And, you know, those guys were, were fantastic. Uh, Everybody we met, I mean, it was their character. I mean, they were down-to-earth, friendly, obliging people. Oh, there's no doubt about that. And I, I think the, the one piece that stuck with me on that front was, you know, you go to the grocery store, they still let you put your groceries on a tab out there. So it tells you the type <laughs> right? of people you're working with. <laughs> yeah. 150 to 160, uh, you know, however many people are in, are in the town of Hyannis, Nebraska, you just got the feeling they all have each other's back. Oh, no doubt about that. You know, uh, you have to, you have to. Uh, it's, it's small town, it had, had enough of the grocery store, the uh, saloon slash restaurant slash hotel, the Hyannis Hotel that a lot of the, uh, a lot of the, uh, uh, the production people and, and the makers stayed in and uh, uh, you, you felt welcomed everywhere you went. And we had a great night. We had a great night on, on Wednesday out there. Uh, all the townspeople came into town and, and uh, renovation hunters hosted uh, uh, more or less a great little party. Had the buffet set up for the folks. And what was uh, the gal's name from Nashville? 
Karen Walter. Yep, there you go. <clears throat> you know, they brought they brought her up from from Nashville and performed for the local folks at at uh, the Hyannis Hotel there, and put out a nice little buffet spread and and. Uh, you could just see the relationship that they had built, renovation hunters had built prior to us rolling into town. And, and uh, it, was, it was neat to see. It was neat to see. We, we walked onto the job site and they had eight days, I think, eight or nine days to, to try and complete their project. You know the volume of material we sent out. Yeah, they got a full truckload. <laughs> <laughs> and and we walked we walked in the house and it was like this is gonna happen by next weekend. <laughs> and what did we fly? We flew in on a Tuesday. Yeah. And and um, they had already had their demo day and this and that and and it was like, wow, there's a lot of work to be done. And and then we went back out uh, Wednesday, spent the day at, at the job site, and before we knew it, they lassoed, lassoed you into, into helping out. Yeah, yeah, a little and, bit. <laughs> they were. And, and uh, you were working with one of the makers, one of our friends, uh, partners in, in Oak Hill Millworks and Christy, and I, I uh, got roped into helping uh, Rachel run some product, some of our product on, uh, in, the, in the kitchen area, and. I turn around and next thing I know, a couple of our friends, uh, McKens and, and Joes from Ice Energy, they're, they're rolling paint on some boards in one of the rooms. And it was like, it was like all hands on deck. It had to be. Right? And, and you even saw that from the videographers. I mean, when they weren't shooting, they were jumping in and, you know, whether it was a paintbrush in your hand or holding the end of a board, so, so they brought these makers from all over the United States, and uh, Kevin, uh, more or less the job site superintendent for the whole project. Uh, they 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 were like they were like bees on honey, man. They were they were all over it. Yeah, and that's that was one of the more incredible things when you think about bringing in you know eight ten different guys from and women from all across the country that never worked together. <laughs> And you don't know how those personalities and skill sets are going to complement each other. And it was pretty incredible to see them throughout the week kind of figure out who was doing what and keep the project on track. And I, I had a, a little conversation yesterday with, with Kevin. He, he called me up and, and uh, it was kind of a debriefing. And, and I know you and I spoke on, on our drive back to Denver to catch our flight home and, and, uh, a lot of what we witnessed, Kevin witnessed and identified, and and kind of by design, uh, he he challenged he challenged a lot of people on that project, uh, maybe a little bit outside of their boundaries. Yeah. But but he put the challenge out there, and and uh, you witnessed it, I witnessed it. I mean, he was. You know, he didn't always have a ball cap on. Sometimes he had a he had a fireman's hat on, <laughs> jumping from fire to fire, and you know, helping helping the makers out. Yep. You know, and uh, uh, I mean, they have some they have uh, renovation hunters. They they brought together uh, a good group of sponsors. Uh, you know, some of the uh, Metabo Tool and and uh, Crescent Crescent Tools and and uh, Baird Brothers Fine Hardwoods. And everybody, everybody performed. Uh, it might have been a little shaky start, but uh, a little Kevin, bit of a learning experience to get Kevin, going there. Yeah, Kevin got them reeled in. He said, "Okay, the, the learning curve's over. We got to get this done." <laughs> and and uh, so it was crazy. You know, we put <clears throat> we put some different products out there. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna sit on some of that information until. Until renovation hunters start start uh, socializing a little bit, and you'll you'll see some phenomenal Baird product in that house. You know, uh, anything from ceiling walls, uh, kitchen items. Uh, one of the one of the cool offshoots going away from the house. They did a great bar shed. 
Oh, yeah, no <laughs> doubt about it. Definitely going to have some good memories in there, you know, after coming back from the hunt and <clears throat> yeah. the stories of the day. Yeah, you know, where we're guys, can, guys can come in out of the weather, warm up, kick back, and just like you said, share their stories, their hunting stories of, Oh, you should have seen the one that Joe missed today. Yeah. You know, that kind of stuff. Unfortunately, there's plenty of that when you're out hunting. <laughs> right? Right. So what, looking back, I mean, I know my my personal experience was uh, one of the locals asked me, well, what do, you, what do you think about Nebraska and, and our little town? And, and my response was, and it still is today, just the the sheer vastness of the land. Yeah, no doubt about that. You know, that and and the wildlife, um, you know, and they, <clears throat> they're doing it right. Whether you're talking about the cattle and, and the ranches or whether you're talking about wildlife, <clears throat> they're, they're both, they're, they're managing a, a, a sustainable resource much like we do here at Baird's. Yep. And it goes from the forest to the animals to the cattle and and taking care of that, that those resources and, and managing it in a way of harvesting, uh, whether it's a crop or whether it's it's uh, the animal population and and taking care of the land so the wildlife can thrive. Yeah. Yeah, and that goes back to, you know, a lot of our practices around sustainable timber harvest here. You know, traditionally we're going in and harvesting the most mature trees, which then in turn opens up that canopy, allows sunlight to get to the forest floor, which generates, you know, head level and down native browse for the deer and the turkeys and the wildlife to eat on. So I don't think they quite have the trees out there to be doing uh, timber harvest, but they're certainly implementing different man or wildlife management practices, you know, putting in food plots, clover, to make sure they have the nutrition they need to get through the winters. It's it's amazing. It's it, it's a full circle. It's a full circle. Whether you're in Canfield, Ohio, and uh, we're we're fortunate to have some phenomenal woodland plots here uh, that we didn't see out in Nebraska. <laughs> a little bit of cottonwood and cedar. That's about all we saw out <laughs> right? there for trees. <laughs> and, and I'm I'm excited. Uh, Having worked our way through this this first build out, uh, this renovation with the renovation hunters, what a what a fitting name yeah. <laughs> for for a group of people uh, from from Kevin, uh, the on site superintendent, to uh, the makers uh, and the personalities and the skill sets to. A very interesting character, Hal Schaefer. Yep. I mean, how <clears throat> how has how how has a show already uh, on the Outdoor Channel uh, drop zone, yep. right? And besides a, a phenomenal personality that he brings he brings with him, he brings some of the knowledge of of, of hunting and the outdoors and. And we got to experience, uh, you know, walking into to one of the windbreaks, which is, I don't know, you know, 10, 15 acres of, of planted cedars and, and, and different conifers as a windbreak to break that wind coming across those sand dunes so the animals have a chance to get tucked in, you know, behind something. And, and went in and checked one of his his food plots. You know, you, we were talking about management, food plot, feed, you know. Uh, and you, I know you do that back here. Yeah, yeah, we do our best to try to give them what they need to continue to, to grow. Around here, we're a little more fortunate. You know, we have a lot more ag country, so it's almost done for you with all the soybean and corn fields. But you know, we'll, we'll mix in a little bit of clover and turn up food plots also, depending on where we're hunting. Yeah. Uh, I, I never, never in my wildest dream, when, when, when we started this adventure, did I think I'd be seeing prong, pronghorn on the plains of Nebraska. Yep. <laughs> yeah, there's a few unexpected things while we were out there. <laughs> it, it's, it really was. And, and uh, going back to the people of, of Hyannis and the people 
uh, associated with renovation hunters. Uh, every, everybody was welcoming in the sense that <clears throat> I know we came home with a couple invites to go back. Yeah, this might not be this year, but definitely looking forward to the potential of getting out there, doing a little deer or pheasant hunting in the future. So I'm, I'm, I'm curious and anxious. Uh, renovation Hunters, at Renovation Hunters, follow them on, on Instagram. Uh, and right now, they're inviting people across the United States to reach out to Renovation Hunters if they have uh, a, a cabin, uh, whether it be a hunting cabin, fishing cabin, whether it be a, a, a little little lake house or a house on the river, needs a little doctored up, yep. they're inviting you to submit your information, your project house, and we've got two more opportunities to, to travel with these folks. Yeah, and there's no doubt about that. And I think with that, you know, it's important when you're submitting your story to make sure you're getting a little bit of the story and the history with it. So, you know, if it was a family camp growing up, share some of those memories so yeah. they get a chance to see what that story is with the hunting camp. And that'll certainly play into, you know, that project. That's that's it. And and, and that's what they're looking for. They're looking for that great backstory. Uh, it, it can be a hut. It can be a cabin, yep. uh, you know, and, and uh, it can be an outdoor project. They're 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 wide open right now as far as how they're how they're gonna pick and choose, but uh, I know we 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 came we came away from a gem. Yeah, uh, I think that was one of the first home first, one of the first three homes in in Hyenas, 118 years old, and uh, she needed needed a little love and attention, and and they gave they gave nine days worth of of elbow grease, and and you know by by gosh they got her done. Yeah, it was incredible to see the progress they made just in eight days. Yeah, so, uh, friend, we had fun. Oh, we no had fun. About it. We 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 did a lot of traveling uh, with with our uh, with uh, uh, each other and and uh, Mackenzie and Joe's and and then uh, we landed. Uh, you know, you can call it the middle of nowhere, or you can call it. In the middle of God's country. Yep. <laughs> I mean, it was phenomenal, phenomenal trip. So, folks, uh, Zach and I, we're probably gonna pack our bags one or two more times and and uh, chase renovation hunters around the United States, uh, supplying some of Baird Brothers Fine Hardwood products to uh, this project in Hyannis, Nebraska, and to uh, to be announced future pro uh, projects. But uh, until then, follow Baird Brothers on our social platforms. Jump on Instagram at Renovation Hunters. Uh, they're going to be releasing some, uh, some information about this project and upcoming projects. So until next time, hang in there, guys. Have a great day. For all you folks listening, thanks for talking shop with Baird Brothers Fine Hardwoods. If you've enjoyed this episode and want to stay up to date with the American Hardwood Advisor Series, give us a like and subscribe. For more tips, projects, and inspiration, check us out on Facebook, Instagram, or at BairdBrothers.com. Until next time. Brought to you direct from Studio 3B at Baird Brothers Fine Hardwoods, the American Hardwood Advisor is your source for trends, tips, and insights into how the building industry has evolved. Join me, Steve Stack, along with guest builders and industry leaders as we talk shop and go in depth on what it takes to be the best of the best. Dive into topics like architecture, industry trends, project plans, historical tools, tricks of the trade, and life's lessons from more than six decades of experience in the hardwood lumber business. Hey folks, Steve Stack, Baird Brothers Fine Hardwoods, coming to you from Studio 3B, Baird Brothers Fine Hardwoods, back in, where we at? Canfield, Ohio. Uh, we have joined, we have rallied back together after chasing each other across the United States this past eight months. And I am joined by, to uh, my far right, Mr. Chris Filardi. And then he's followed by Kevin Tarkovich. And then we got the character, Hal Schaefer, <laughs> the legend. <laughs> no, there's no legend here, buddy. <laughs> oh my gosh. What a, you know what though? The one thing I will say is, 
the last time we were together, none of us were this relaxed. <laughs> we, were, we were just short of jumping off a ledge. No, we was it a little was, bit nervous. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was nervous. It, that whole thing was, but it's just like I said, it was the, the reason behind it, you know, even though it was stress and blood, sweat and tears and all that, man, it was just, just an awesome feeling. We're going to go, we're going to go through your projects. Uh, the Renovation Hunters, uh, soon to be released on the Outdoor Channel. February 24th, 2023. So yeah, that's, that, we're pretty excited about that. It's just around the corner, actually. We're getting a lot of the rough drafts of the show, which, which is very exciting that's, and a lot of fun. That's gonna be carried uh, Hulu, Roku, Sling. Yeah, all the above, Outdoor Friendly, Channel. Outdoor yep. Channel. Yep, Friendly TV. Friendly's, my, like, that, that's a deal. Two ninety five, you're in. So I got to ask, and I'm I'm going back to, I think it was late April, out in the little town of Hyannis, Nebraska. What were you guys thinking? <laughs> <laughs> well, obviously we weren't. <laughs> um, so uh, it's a pretty cool first video. I said, Kevin, I want you to come see this place. <laughs> So I took him out there and his, his head shook like this for the entire three hours we went through that house or longer. I don't know if it was the condition of the house, getting there was a circus or the no heat, frozen water pipes. Leaking roof. Uh, I about took myself out sliding across the bathroom floor. Yeah. And all these things just compounded into like, yeah, let's do this. Yeah. <laughs> so Absolutely when, when, not. You, when you first walk in, somehow or another, the heat had broke. It was a super old unit. Um, water was sitting there spraying out of the sink, but yet there was a nice tower this tall where it was spraying. <laughs> the bathroom ceiling was leaking because everything had froze and then started to thaw and bust. So there was a sheet of ice through the kitchen right into the way, and when you took a step on it, it was adios amigos. <laughs> it, was, it looked like me and him trying to do ballet dance together. It, it was not pretty. Um, and through all that, I looked at Kevin. I said, look, Kev, come on, dude. You can do this, right? You know? You got a pep talk him. And, and, and then uh, I go, look, you got all the time you want to do this. And all of a sudden he was like, oh. I said, you got all the time you want as long as we get it done in eight days. <laughs> and <laughs> I was at absolutely no way, no how. I was against it. No, oh, he was. So in the course of trying to figure out where we're going to stay, because the accommodations were limited, limited. How we're going to get everybody there was going to be really hard. It's a town of 168 people, right? Yes, sir. So Hyannis, Nebraska is four hours from Denver. Um, and then if you were lucky, you could either catch a glider <laughs> or a microplane <laughs> or a crop duster from Denver into Hyannis. And uh, nobody was really excited about that trip. Um, nobody wanted to be on the small planes. Uh, so it, there was a lot of challenges, but... Um, the one thing we did know and the one thing we did decide was we really needed to test our group because we, we didn't test it that much. And when we did our very preliminary build, when we were just thinking about this in Missouri, we needed boot camp. That's a great way to describe it. And boy, it, it, it was. And, you know, we weren't it wasn't no, just it, their boot camp. It, it was all it was. Everybody. It was our boot camp from. The planning side to to the, the the partner side to the logistics of the design side and having a hundred and eighteen year old house that you couldn't spell square anywhere in there. I mean, there was nothing square in that house. Why that house? Um, How, how'd you come about that? So house? the funny thing about that house is the the this is all about you know doing people's hunting camps or or getaway places or fishing camps and stuff. And I had visited this house with an outfitter um, before we acquired the property out there. And the guy come to me and 
I said, what, what are you going to do with this place? He goes, I, I, I'm, I'm not going to make it as an, you know, as an outfitter here. He said, I'm going back to my outfit and business closer to home. Uh, I do really well with that one. This one's been a, a challenge. And I mean, there was so much wrong with this house. And we were trying to, the problem was is we didn't have a contract done with the network yet, even though we had an idea of what right, we were going right, to do. Right. So w this takes a lot of planning. So I said, you know what? I told the guy, he told me what he wanted for the house. And I told him, you lost your mind. And I, I told him how much it was going to cost to fix a house, all this stuff and that. And, there, and then I told him what I paid for the house. Because I've said, you know what, if we buy this house, this would be the perfect house to do. So we made a deal. We bought the house. That way, if we came up short on our first build, the responsibility laid within us, right? right. We, right. We, we, we were not going to be responsible for something that wasn't built right or we did something wrong or, or, uh, or a crew, just, may have, a crew could have threw their hands up. You don't ever know. The crew could have threw they their could, hands they up walked off the job. walked off the job, <laughs> right. right? I just don't want to have them disappointed at the end <laughs> when it's supposed <laughs> to be an exciting thing. You know? Yeah, yeah. We, we never want to disappoint anybody. So this was the ultimate trial by fire for every one of us. And we all had our meltdown moments. I mean, no, we really yeah, did. Yeah. Just because it pulled every ounce of effort from you. It was... It was super hard on him uh, because we had so much stuff trying to get done. In. And it, it was like the first three days was a lot of spinning our wheels. And we didn't feel like the, it was not going to happen. There was one point he looked at me and said, Al, it ain't happening. He, he truly did. We were out in the front. It's not going to happen. We're not going to get done with this. He said, so we, we might as well quit kidding ourselves. And a while I had to pep talk. And we talked about it all night. And. You know, come up with a plan, and then the next day, after he summoned the troops, and and you know, we basically had that drill sergeant type conversation with them of where we had to be if we we're going to continue and do this show, where what kind of effort it was going to take, and you know what, on that fourth day, stuff started happening. You were there. Yeah. 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 Things started coming together, and at the end of the fourth day, me and him were like, Whew. there was there was there's hope. a chance, and. You know, the light at the end of the tunnel might be a train, even though the train it's rolled past every 15 yeah. minutes. We started to see that there was some possibility. Right. And, you know, here's the thing. I was against it till, you know, we're looking for a place to stay. We go into town. He's telling me the whole time, this is a great town. This is a great town. Just wait Greatest till you people meet people. Greatest people you ever met. Just wait. And I'm going, okay, yeah. I'm caught up in the house. We go to have down to the hotel to have dinner. And we start meeting the people he's talking about. Someone yells over the corner booth, how is that you? And it just snowballed. All of a sudden we're embraced by these people. Never met them before. He has one or two, but everybody came in. And I left that evening and going, okay, I see. I yeah, see he it. gets the picture. I get it. Because the, the people of the town were not happy with the former owner of the house, oh, no, right. because this is one of the most, vi if not the most visible house in the town. Wasn't that one of like the first, one of three of the first homes built in Highness? Yes. Mm -hmm. And so, and in its day, it was the most beautiful house in that town, right? And so the people were very upset. The yard was never maintained. There was dead giant cottonwoods in the front yard that the city had been begging for them to be taken down. There was the, the natural gas propane thing was sitting illegally next to the highway. I mean, it, it was it a, a nightmare for the town. A list. Of and, and when you met those people who opened their homes and their kitchens and their dining room tables to us, you said, you know what? That's what we said. You know what? Now we have a really good reason. This is as compelling as doing somebody's home for them as to do something in this town. And now everybody in this town is so proud of it. They say, do you mind if I take some people and show them the house and all this? And we get these calls all the time. And it is just a, a really beautiful house sitting on a landscape piece of property now that people are proud or very proud of. And they were proud that Renovation Hunters chose them to be their initial show. That town was extremely proud to, and embraced that fact. And it was really cool for them. You know, I look back at when we were getting ready. So we had like, th what I would say, three really heads up, like we got three weeks to get ready for this thing. We had meetings, we did videos, we did everything we can do. 
I thought we were going in 80-20. You know, like we got 80% of this thing down, 20% will just happen, we're all good. But, you know, we really didn't know the people that well, right? Some right. of them we did, obviously, personally, but not what their skills were. The, the weather didn't really cooperate all the time. Just getting well, supplies, didn't cooperate? Right? First day there, first day there, 96 degrees. 14 hours later, it was snowing. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, yeah. it was dropping hail. We had 50, 60 mile an hour winds, for 12 lightning hours. for 12 <laughs> hours, and then it snowed. And then we had cool Rain. weather, and then it got hot again. And then as y'all saw, the end of the week, it snowed again. Yeah. I mean, I mean, go you, ahead and finish. Well, I but. was going to say, thank God for, for Chad and the local hardware store, because if, if they didn't have it, it was a two-hour drive both ways to get there. So That's what we were we, up against. Yeah. You know, well, but, I said we were an hour from nowhere and three hours from somewhere. Oh, no doubt. Is, is literally, I mean, you, you joke about that. It's like, yeah, we're an hour from nowhere. Uh, we're literally an hour from nowhere. And that only got you to a small town. Yeah, and I stayed, I stayed 45, 50 minutes away and yep. to the west over in Alliance, and there wasn't a lot there other than the rail yeah. sidings. Right, the, <laughs> the, the closest big box hardware store was Menards in North Platte, which was yeah. a minimum of two hours and 45 right. minutes mm -hmm. one way. Yeah. So it, it presented every kind of problem we could possibly have. It really did, but it did exactly what it was supposed to do. It showed us every weakness we had. It showed us what we were really good at. And it showed us the areas that we thought we could do, but we needed the improvement on. And then it told us the areas we never needed to touch again. I, I think <laughs> what speaks loudest is the passion that the two of you had in your vision to do this. And the fact that we went in without sponsorship, mm -hmm. without a contract, we didn't even have contract on the house no i need the, the house that was still was the a, guy was still jerking a chain around going well i don't know and a lean showed up on the house on the tie of the house <laughs> all this that we did not i did not close the loan on the house till the day before we cracked and work the fact that these two would go okay you know what we're going to take this bite and we're going to sink or swim and we're going to put forth and and that was evident by the townspeople. They saw the chance that we were taking, these two in particular were taking, how more so than any, because he had the vision of going after this place. But it, it got the, the, the appreciation of the people, the respect of the people, and then it also trickled down through our team because they could see no doubt. what this meant. And I told them you know, in our Zoom calls, when you meet the people of the town, you will understand why we are, why we are going 1,200 miles, 1,500 yep. miles, whatever, west, and doing this project. Well, and then the unexpected thing happened. That was truly our savior, and that is our partners. You guys showed up. Moss Epoxy showed up. Wall Control showed up. I mean, you name it. They showed up there, and it wasn't you brought your stuff and left. They brought their stuff, rolled up their sleeves, and went and to work and stayed in work and stayed with us and stayed at it. Without that whole group, with the, how this whole group's come together is actually, yeah. it's, a, it's, a, it's very much, it's, it's, it's in a, I don't know what you call it. It was a miracle the way everybody molded together. I mean, we you assumed know. it. We didn't know over the three builds it would happen so efficiently. By the time we got to the third one, it was significantly different how we approached and, everything. And, and I got to I got to be a little bit, a little bit critical, because I think all three of you need don't, your, don't mind, say, your mind examined. Don't say anything about how. <laughs> yeah, I need our mind examined. <laughs> and, 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 you and my mom agreed on that, right? <laughs> and and uh, we had some conversation back and forth. You know, what kind of materials we're going to need? How much we're going to need? This, that, and the other thing. And by the time we were done building shipping containers and crates, we needed a dedicated truck to run from Canfield, Ohio to Hyannis, Nebraska. And, and then they, he's like, what did we get ourselves into? <laughs> I, I, you know, all of us, I'm sure, would, would reach out to, to Chad over at Pioneer. Oh, yeah. And what a great staging area he mm -hmm. afforded you guys, right? Mm -hmm. And We couldn't have done it without Chad. 
No oh, way. Uh, no way. Yeah, mm -hmm. you guys, you guys forwarded me some photos after after the the freight arrived, and it's inside. You guys are identifying it, this, that, and the other thing. I thought, wow. He had all the equipment, cool. everything we needed right? to transfer it to us. I mean, you know what? There were a lot of things that happened that may, and and we believe was certainly a divine <laughs> movement because there's just no way that this stuff wasn't planned and it just happened, right? Okay. So we fly to Denver, uh, myself, Zach Baird. Yep. Right? And uh, we've got the bird dogs behind us, you know, from Ice Energy, they're, they're tailing us. And, and uh, we meet up in Alliance and we jump in my pickup truck and we're driving from Alliance over to Hyannis. <clears throat> and we get two thirds of the way to Hyannis and I see a little sign, Ellsworth, two miles ahead. And I told Zach and the girls with us in the cab, I said, we made a wrong turn, guys. We left Alliance and we're back in Ellsworth, Ohio. How's this happen? Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and so at that, at that point, like you said, things started taking alignment, okay? Yeah. We've got Alliance 30 minutes down the road here, Ellsworth right around the corner, right? And I'm thinking, this is kind of eerie. It, it is. <laughs> it's crazy. And it, it is. It's crazy. Um, we talk about not having anything scripted. In the show, that's, that's the biggest thing. We don't want to have people come in there and, you know, scripted lines. The builds, we have a plan, but it's not ironed out 100% scripted. You can't do that in a renovation. Okay. No, because, because you never know what you're going to run into. Okay. But and we did run into our fair share. No, no, but what I was going to be critical on was, okay, first race out of the gates, all right, let's, let's add a little bit of chair wear on this room. Let's rework this kitchen a little bit, you know, this, that, and the other. And you could have got away with it, but you guys dove in head first. I'm just, I'm, I'm looking back trying to remember. We sent a bunk of Naughty Pine tongue and groove paneling out there. I don't know if it was one bunk or two bunks of prime poplar shiplap no, out that there. Was, that was definitely two, 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 right? two and a half. We did, we did, we did some, some countertops, you know, for different areas of oh, the yeah. house. We did a bunk, literally a bunk of dimensional stock <laughs> as a just because, yep. just to have job site. I mean, yeah, that was we Casey's. build brand new homes and don't put that much material into it. <laughs> right, and, and that's, that's right. And then we had the crazy, and then the unexpected things that, that happened. And the biggest one that really left me the most frustrated was that the thing I did way in advance was contract a painter. <laughs> Got a, got a bid on it, had him go look at the house, got, got everything set. And then the second day, he's, he's there pressure washing one day, pressure washing all the stuff off, doing what he's supposed to. We, we were questioning his equipment a little bit, right? right? And, so, then. And, then, and then he tells me, well, I don't have no help. I don't, I don't, I've got to try to find some help. Okay, well, okay, you, you need to find some help. And then the next day, no painter, I check my email. Sorry, Hal, I can't do this job. Sorry to leave you like this, but I can't do this job. And, you know, that was, it took us three days. You talk about crushing curb appeal. Oh, Let oh that yeah. House, <laughs> yeah. Half pressure washed. I mean, it's bad enough with whatever paint yes. residue was, was still, on, still was on it. Yeah, not much. So, so you, you just, you just, you just, you know, but the people I, I of the in town, my notes. the people of the town are the ones that saved our butts again. Yeah, because they found us a painter very last second. Yeah. And oh yeah. But but I you know I had I, I had in my notes to ask you guys you know, you know what went wrong and you answered how'd you adjust and, and and it worked out. The first thing that went wrong is we showed up there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's the first thing that went wrong. Did but but honestly, with everything that that did go wrong, the people and the talent that we had there was able to overcome it. Right. And, and that was the key. And when we left there, even though we were tired and distraught and, and everything else, we were extremely proud, but we knew that we would never probably take on a task like that again. We were but, wrong. But, but it was boot camp, <laughs> you know? Yeah. But it was boot camp. And and boot camp is supposed to be the toughest, the absolute worst training you're ever 
thing you could ever be up against. It prepares you for it. And it really did that. So I, 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 the thing that I take away is, so in my role, I'm in and out. Like I'm going to get something, I'm coming back. So I could come in and everybody's jived and happy. And I'm like, I leave the building and say, you know what? It's going to work. And then I come back 20 minutes later and they're all sitting on the floor going, this, this kitchen floor has been made, leveled, and done four times. And they're all going different ways. And everybody's depressed. <laughs> so it, the swings of emotion were amazing how quickly they could happen. You know, we, Baird Brothers Fine Hardwoods, with the help of, of renovation hunters, I think, uh, I think Kevin generated the materials list on that project pretty yep. much solo. And, and uh, we, we did, we did a, ton of, uh, a ton of product. Uh, some, some uh, knotty pine tongue and groove paneling, uh, a boatload of, of our poplar prime shiplap, shiplap. material, yep. uh, dimensional lumber enough to build two new homes, I swear, uh, one by four, one by six, one by eight, one by 12. Uh, we, did some, we did some really nice countertops for that kitchen you guys oh, yeah. revived. That was you know, gorgeous. Remodeled. Uh, you had you had your makers doing different side projects, and we we sent out some some uh, red oak to complement the countertops. Right. And uh, who was Christy? Oak, Christy Oak Hill did did some co uh, coffee table on site, and and that. And then Joni did the the actual server, the coffee server. Yep. Yep. Yeah, so. and and uh, who was it? Adam Adam reworked that cabinet in the did in the mud room in, in the kitchen mud room area there. Uh, there was a there was a ton of stuff going on. Kevin, where do you start? You know, I mean, you're you're the house for its age wasn't in deplorable conditions, but it was close. No, but you know, anytime you have age and attempted remodels in the course of a house's age or time period, you run into all kinds of things. So that house had horsehair plaster walls on lath that were wallpapered and walls and ceiling mm. wallpapered multiple times mm. and painted so what that equates to is unknown cracks in the plaster uh, unstrippable condition yeah. because you, you can't yeah. they tried we tried in, yep. in a fair attempt we tried but we also have to look at our time frame i mean we are doing this with our crew in eight days yep so i don't have the luxury of sourcing time-consuming products, but yet I need solid products that we can build with and we get, a, in its rough stage, a finished quality product that, you know, is, is paintable right off the bat. That's where the uh, shiplap was so critical in this. Yeah. That... It, it trued up our walls. Yeah. Now, for installation-wise, in an old home, uh, install kit, or install point number one, do not start with the baseboards because the floors were just wavy all over the place. You just, you just made me think of a, of a quick story. I don't know whether it was our first day on a job site or second day on a job site, but uh, you and a couple of the guys might have been running some pine tongue and groove in the, in the big front room and then in the second room and, and uh, you had charged a couple of, of the makers to start running shiplap in the kitchen area. And so we were walking back and forth, back and forth, and, and uh, you could tell walking through, it was like, okay, how do we start this? <laughs> no, what, no, I had a clue. <laughs> and, and it was, and, and I, I loved doing it. Uh, first time I had met 90% of the makers, and uh, Rach, Rachel, oh, yeah. she was teamed up with Adam in the kitchen area, right? And, and uh, she says, Steve, this is your stuff. You know, how do, we, how do we do it more or less? And I said, well, get us a four foot level and a tape measure and something to stand on. And I said, we're going up top and we're gonna start up top. Yeah. And, and we did, and, and we showed scribe line, how to, how to get that first piece to fit nice to the ceiling. Mm -hmm. We did some math to figure out how we were breaking at the bottom, right? So you didn't just start at the top and guess what you were gonna be at the bottom. Right. You, you had an idea. Yeah. Right. And Very then that, that, that transferred all the way around the room, yeah. you know, uh, but it was that starting point. 
And once you got them started, okay, you feeling comfortable now, guys? All right, I'll cut, you install. I'll cut, you install, you know? And, but you saw that in every room. Every product we put out there, there was different hands on it. Yeah, there's different hands, there's different techniques. And, you know, there's a lot of uh, first timers getting into something. You know, I'm gonna say all but one of them may have installed wood over a plaster surface. So they don't know to, you know, check for humps first and, and try to true up the walls. The fortunate thing we had was your product, the rigidity in it, the quality in it. We start off with a, a story course or a, a level line that does a perimeter of the room. We're true the whole way. Right. There's not a variation. And when you're putting up shiplap or anything that has any type of reveal or you know joint or kerf in there, when you get to a corner, that separates your men from the boys. Because if it looks like you can climb the thing, or if it looks like a continuous line, <laughs> yeah. you know, and there's the right way, there's the wrong way. So, we, you know, and with all the stuff that we had to do in there, we wanted to give it the best that we could do with what we had. And that's why, you know, I have to forecast, okay, if we can't do it this way, we'll have to do it that way. So, you know, talking about the stock material, well, I had to compensate for the baseboards. I had to create a back band right. on the windows to receive, you know, the three-quarter trim. Uh, some of the windows had different styles of trim. Some didn't have any. Different widths. Uh, different the, widths. I mean, the, the, the windows in the dining room, the trim was not the same on every window. Yeah. It, it was different widths. And, I, I mean, I was, like, blown away by that. And it's like he said, back then, it wasn't about curb appeal, Right. It was about necessity, yeah. so they did whatever they could to make it yeah. what it was. And when you go to remodel something like that, you you you're the one paying for everybody else's sins, right? right? The previous owners, you pay all the sins. It comes forward, it's paid forward to you, and then it's it's nasty from there. Yeah, but uh, yeah, you deal with it. Yeah, but, exactly. You know, <laughs> and in our product choicement, you know, we wanted to have something that was reflective to a prairie style home yeah the ship lap the tongue groove board across the ceiling that pine that 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 and leaving that, was that the best, the tongue in a, in a natural finish just it, it lightened the mood everywhere gave it that nice airy feel because yeah, it was a dark house it was a very dark house <laughs> yeah, it wasn't back then there wasn't a lot of lights right right the, the lighting was minimum uh your your electric outlets were, were minimum too for for adding lighting but putting that ship lap on those walls and then that raw wood ceiling, man, that house was. You know, not to sound crazy, but it did do something else to the workers too. When they walked in and they saw completion, it changed their mindset that, wow, we got this. I saw, you know, they would, at first it's like, oh, how do we do this? But then once they got it going and they got a couple up there, they're like, hey, this well, it's, it's the old yeah. saying, give them, give them, give them one victory. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> you can't see the tree for looking at the forest. Yep. Right. That's that's the thing. And once they got seeing the tree. And they saw, oh, wow. And, and it was a challenge in that home, like you mentioned, Kevin, a four-corner, two-story prairie. I mean, you know, we all, we all saw the glory of it in its day. Oh, yeah. We, we could appreciate that. But we weren't doing a historical renovation. No. Okay? No attempt. So in, in the same token we wanted to give it a little bit, and we had this in conversation, we wanted to give it a little bit of a cabin feel, feel. a little bit of a modern farmhouse feel. And you guys did it. I and mean, we wanted, it. and one of my favorite things is, we wanted to timestamp it a little bit too. And that's why we did the kitchen the way we did the kitchen. Yep. That, that to me, mm -hmm. when you walk in there and, and you see that, you're like, wow, yeah. they didn't turn this into some ultra modern. No, right. they, it's, it's modern conveniences, but it is definitely time stamped. It, it has the, the time stamp influence. How I wanted to get the, the retro appliances, which well, huge they, call, huge call, that huge was call on that transition. That point. Yep. Um, and, you know, we wanted with, with the, 
the tongue groove and the shiplap, we wanted something that was livable and durable. Because let's face it, we have hunters coming in there. You can't sacrifice, you know, um, somebody walking past and punching a hole in a drywall. And then what are you going to do? Right. You know, this place here, I mean, we have basically created a bulletproof <laughs> yeah. way to enjoy it and not feel like, you know, you're, you're walking on eggshells coming through there. And then with the kitchen, like you said, that, that transformation, uh, redesigning the whole thing, changed the whole yep. layout. Yeah, that, that was, yeah. that was really cool. And that, and I would give him him. I, I gave him what my thought process and what I wanted to do with the retro appliances. Right. And because I was dead set that that was going to happen no matter what, but he took that and then drew it out. And I'm going to tell you that was, that was genius. Yeah. The way, the way we stopped the flow through the kitchen to the bathroom, which was a nightmare because people would be walking straight out of the bathroom right to the stove. Like, you know, just hygienically, it don't even feel right. Is hygienically a word? But anyway, it is now. <laughs> By God, it's a howlism. Um, but you, Roll Tide, um, you can't, <laughs> you cannot, absolutely, you just didn't feel right walking from the bathroom to the stove. It just, there was yeah. something about it that was weird to me. So he shut that wall off. We put in a window, which was soup. That was that made a that, big that difference. A huge in, difference, too, huge yeah. difference in that kitchen. But then we talk about all the stuff we did in the house. We look at what the on the spot boys did because I had another thing is I wanted a speakeasy, and a speakeasy. Anybody knows what a speakeasy is? It's a prohibition style bar that. When you look at it from the outside, you'd never know it was a bar. And that's how they were done. They were hidden. Right. They weren't fancied up on the outside. They looked like old metal buildings or whatever the case. So when the cops would come by, they would not know that that was a bar. But when you walked in it, you were like, wow. So that's what I challenged old Mike and Camper. Yeah. The, the, bad, the sad thing is we were there looking at the house. And I'm saying this house is just too much to tackle. We walk past this and I'm go, stupid me. This would make a cool bar. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. because it was yeah. already a it bar. Was, it was already a bar. Their bar. Sort. I'm like, yeah, was, this would be the speakeasy. All of a sudden, lights go on his head. He goes, yeah, we're gonna do this. I'm like, no, we can't. <laughs> we don't have the manpower. We don't have the time. He goes, no, we're doing it. It's gonna happen. <laughs> so and I remember he called me and I'm like, yeah, I think it's a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> it's always a great idea from afar. <laughs> <laughs> and he spearheaded. He's like, this is his his baby and he got the guys from on the spot mike and camper yep and i'm like oh, listen i'm i'm in the house you want your speakeasy you do your speakeasy and that place i would be happy just staying there oh yeah what, what yeah. speakeasy yeah now and 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 looking back and i don't know chris do you remember off the top of your head did we put two or three of those workbench tops in there for bar area two two, two. of them yeah two and, and one, then we built, and then one and, on we, the one that they had theirs on wheels, and then you put the two in there. Right. So, so yeah, because we wanted the town people to feel a part of everything too, right? So, Mike and Camper took some cypress, some red cypress. Yep. Yep. And they built a gun rack and they built a rolling bar, but the gun rack had this big flat wood on it, and I said, you know what? We need. This is where we decided. We wanted all the ranchers to bring their brand in and brand that wood. That's and cool. so yeah, everybody come cool. in and branded the wood with all the local ranches. And, you know, that to me, that's just just ultimate in the cool side. Right. It is just really neat. And everybody feels a part of it. You know, when somebody walks in, they feel like they had a part in it. And that's the important because a lot of people did. Uh, Jeff and Sen, uh, Seth. Yeah. yeah Adam, Jenna yeah. and Seth Adams at You Lazy uh, Leather Shop. Wow, the talent they did with the Buffalo well, Skull. The, yeah. I mean, you know, come and put, it's presented funny. that thing to me. We're, that was awesome. When we got there, I, I got there and we're, we're over their house, uh, Jen and Seth's house, and we are in a, I've never really been in a leather place like that. Tools, I didn't even know what they were all over. They were so, and so Hal is drawing a logo. I'm like, what are you doing, man? We got stuff to do here. And I had no idea what he was doing. And then <laughs> the next day, she starts banging it out of leather and made the logo and our brand for renovation hunters and they put it on top of the the buffalo head or it, it, yeah. it was 
It was outstanding, and it was just a small thing that stops you when you're walking through the You walk through the wow. house, you see yeah. that big buffalo skull yep. with that custom leather patch on top of it, and just the way they did it was amazing. And, and that's just the way that whole town was. Yeah. I mean, you look at Chad, and not only did he, did he help us with a storage place and everything like that, he come and replumbed the whole house. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. Hey, that was, that was crazy. Wired up the, the washer and dryer, put, fixed, put an ice, wired in the ice maker and plumbed it and everything else. I mean, for him, it's been the, the never ending story. But anyway. So, <laughs> when, when, you, when you look at that house in, in its entirety and you try to figure out what's great, I mean, there's, there's, there's more than 15 things that are noteworthy to talk about right away. And clearly the kitchen is an amazing transformation. But I kind of like to give creds to the little things. Like they opened up the roof and the speakeasy and put gables or you yeah, know across, yeah. and it changed the entire thing. It made first of all, it made it seem like it was twice as big as before. Yep. I thought that was a huge thing, even though all the wood and everything we did looked so great. Yep. And I gotta tell you, the bathroom, the bathroom goes underrated. It used to like you had two doors to the bathroom. So imagine someone cooking eggs and you walking out of the bathroom <laughs> and you got the bedroom. And oh, it, well, even know, worse, the bathroom. When you went to the shower, there was a shower on the back wall. There was a shower curtain. When you moved the shower curtain to the, the back wall, there was cabinets. <laughs> we always put stuff up in the cabinets when we're taking a shower. Well, that's where we put our pots and pans and, 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 you know, and, and, well, and cleaning pan, products. That's the pantry for the kitchen. The pantry right? for yeah. the kitchen. When we so put Robin while Dane. you're taking a shower, you wash off your roast and you carry it out to the kitchen, put it in the <laughs> stove, you go to the bedroom, you get dressed. When okay. we put Robin Dame in the bathroom, these guys are like, yeah, it's just, you know, do this, do this, do this. And it was, so you got to imagine, the floor is completely trashed. It's covered it with the ceiling. Covered with the ceiling. Yep. The ceiling's yep. laying you on the floor. You could see somebody's head up there, like total hole in the ceiling, no plumbing. It was, it was a disaster, but they made it look so I, cool. I think they lost trust in me when I gave them a list of who's tasked with what items. And then they get there and they actually see, because you're saying, okay, I got a little kitchen, bathroom remodel, whatever. And they look at their name on the sheet and look up and go, oh my gosh. Yeah. What's, what's going on here? Okay, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to skip away from the construction side of it. And I'm going to jump back into Hyannis, Nebraska. And uh, Chris down on the end there, uh, he started a couple new businesses, an entertainment company and an Uber service and an airport limousine <laughs> yeah, service. Right. And, <laughs> and, and you have a thousand miles that we go and back right? and forth to the store. So, <laughs> and, and but it it goes back, and you guys mentioned it earlier in in our conversation, the community. So there's this little, like a lot of old western towns, uh, the bar, saloon, the diner, the hotel above. Just like a saloon. It was it, a saloon. It was a saloon. Old saloons in the West. The bar was downstairs, and the rooms you stayed were upstairs. It's exactly what this was. Exactly. I mean, it's, and it you would feel like Clint tracks. Eastwood or John Wayne could walk in there any minute, and they would not feel out of place. Right. You guys, as a thank you to the community, what was uh, the gal's name you brought Karen in? Karen Waldrop. Yeah, Karen Waldrop. Out of Nashville, right? Yep. Yep. And you invited us to attend that event on Wednesday night, wasn't mm -hmm. it? Yeah. And, and uh, you walked in and it was like, we're not, you know, 2022 anymore. We're more like 1822. Exactly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Everybody's cowboy hats, old jeans, belt buckles, cowboy boots. Dress cowboy <laughs> shirts. Dress cowboy shirts. <laughs> Furs. With the thin tie. With in the white shirts, and honestly, I've been out on the property when they're moving cattle with horses, and that is exactly what they're dressed they're in. They're in their work clothes. They, 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 they were. I mean, they they didn't dress up to be look the part. They dress because they are the part. Yeah, it, that's a real it's, deal. It is. It is a real deal. Steve, let me tell you the best cowboy we, town I've ever been in. Something that we planned but didn't work out and worked out better. We planned for Wednesday to have Karen sing because we thought it'd be cool, but more importantly, we thought by Wednesday, if the staff wasn't killing each other because the task and where we were, we figured we'd give them a little party, give them a little yeah. break. And what turned out was it, it became a party for the whole town. Yeah. The whole town. Now, now there weren't a lot of streets downtown Hyannis, no. right? It's bordered by railroad tracks. And 
you had the one street, the one up the hill, up to there's three the, the police station and yeah. the and three the dead ends. town hall yeah. there, you're right? And the grocery store was on that street and a couple other little businesses. In fact, uh, I forget which which one of the gals from from Ice Energy we were we were in the saloon there, and yeah. I said, take my phone and go out there and get some pictures because that was the old diagonal parking up, up, the, right. up yeah, the street, up the, street, up the hill, yeah. and parallel parking between the railroad tracks and, and the saloon. There was not a parking spot in that town available. No, Deb and, and Mitch <laughs> that run, the, the great people that run the Sinclair, um, they even had their parking lot full, people parking at the Sinclair to go to this little event. And you would think, holy, how is there only 170 people in this town? Because it looked like there was a thousand when when if you yeah. went down that town, it was amazing, and and that's just how that town is. They nobody there, everybody there helps everybody, and it's and it's not a like how much you're going to charge me to do this or how much you're going to charge. When it comes to moving cattle, the ranchers help each other. They they come help each other, so it's it's really neat. Uh, the world could learn a lesson from that town. Very much so. Very much so. Big time. So. Let's 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 bring this to a conclusion. I think you, Chris, kind of might have showed your hand a little bit when I asked all of you's uh, favorite area or room of the house. And then this is this is the one that I'm gonna I'm gonna really I'm gonna place my bet on this one. The funniest moment or mishap that took place in the eight day build, Chris. I think the funniest was Hal's emotion when the second painter, they, because we filmed the whole conversation, it was hysterical. The guy was like, yeah, I can help you, I can do this. And Hal was just high up here, just like, we got this, we got this. And then the guy called back like 10 minutes later and said, I'm sorry, I can't do it. <laughs> and it was sad. No, no, no. <laughs> there was no humor in, he in was, there. No, but he was so upset and then he was so happy and then it went back down again. <laughs> just that was the, to me, that was the whole week. Every week was up and down, every day. And your favorite room? Well, I think the kitchen, to me, is the favorite room, without a doubt. Kev? You know, with this project, it's, I, I get engaged and, and married to him mentally, physically, just because I feel if you, if you don't, then you don't take it to the maximum potential. 100%, and that's and what you do best. It's a, it's a fault sometimes because you can get that deep. Fun time, I, I, I gotta admit, I have a hard time. I like to joke around and have a good time, but mentally you're that tight that it's like, okay, you know, that I, I, need, I need something, but I gotta stay true, I gotta stay on track, I got this coming up, this coming up, this coming up. And if you're on one of these jobs, it's like, hey Kevin, hey Kevin, hey Kevin, you got a minute? Hey Kevin, hey Kevin, hey Kevin. Most common Which, name, hey Kevin. <laughs> That's the most Which, common statement of every build. Hey Kev. Hey, Which Kev. I encourage them because I don't want anybody to struggle on the job. I don't want them to guess. And we have such a tight focus of what we can do, whether it be material availability or they don't know what is going down next, that I have to make sure that we stay on track. Um, so what we, was your favorite room? My, my favorite room, man, I like the transformation of the kitchen, the dining room. I loved the liquor cabinet that we had in yeah. there, bringing that back to life because before it had just sort of dissolved into yeah, it the was wall space. Six coats of paint and yeah. how were you going to do it? Yeah, I, um, I had a lot of blood, sweat, and tears in that. I'd, I would have to say, I would probably say the dining room just because, you know, that having that, that, that in there and then, awesome. of course, the table. That mossy pocket just table, that the, was yeah. the most, that, I, I, first of all, 450-pound dining room table. Okay. <laughs> Right. You know, freaking thing. When if a tornado comes through, the table's gonna stay. Get under right. the table. <laughs> it's, you get under the table. But the detail that went into that box elder, and you can appreciate yep, this, yep. and how they worked that epoxy, and it was truly a table of the area. It had sand in it from that area, because it is the sand hills. It had deer tracks through it. It had 
arrows in it, broadheads, barbed uh, wire. Barbed oh. wire. I mean, everything to do with that area, shell casings, and a lot of hidden, hidden items that yep. you really have to look to find the details. I'm going to tell you, the people at Moss Epoxy just knocked that out. But the dining room having two pieces of furniture in the table and the serving counter that Joni made, yeah. and just that wall cabinet, the simplicity of it, but yet it speaks oh, so deep mm -hmm. it does. to me, yeah. anyway. And I just... And also for a gathering. I mean, we, we got to sit down and enjoy everybody, a meal. Everybody um, fit. That's a and yeah, thing. everybody fit. It was very comfortable. And, you know, I can't imagine what that space is going to hold in the future. Okay. So how about funniest mishap, moment. miscue? You have, you, have, you have a funny or a, a serious? <laughs> well, not mishap, miscue. I don't know. I'm down there shoveling sand out of the basement. And he comes up and yells at me and say, I'm Igor, you know, <laughs> like I'm the dungeon mole. But, you know, in, in JR's defense, he had that spot first. You know, I was trespassing. But <laughs> the troll. I called you a troll. Yeah, but, under the bridge. You know, What's that's, the troll going to be? That was, that was a situation on itself, too. But, you know, us, despite everything that we did above ground, JR busted his tail in the basement, putting in a new furnace. Yep. Yeah. We had Air to dig out all the sand that had washed in there over the last 20 years, 30 that, years. And then pour a bunkhead. And then pour a bunkhead to, to uh, stop it. I think JR it. gets a special award because he, he didn't go get a heater and put it in. He created a recreated a whole manifold. The, the, whole, yeah. the whole manifold system. Right. From a, and it wasn't just a heater. Design. Yeah, it we everything. put in a, a central heat and air unit from our friends at Coleman and it it totally, because the people in the neighborhood said, like, if we get really hot, can we go sit in your house and watch TV? Because <laughs> we got air conditioning, yeah. right? You know? Yeah. Um, so you might have showed your hand on favorite room. Yeah. Right? I mean, uh, <laughs> it was, God, there's, there's so much about that house. It was You're just surprise such, me or disappoint me. It is a super transformation. But I, I have to say... I had I had a lot to do with the kitchen. I loved the appliances. But I'm going to tell you, I, in my whole, I have always wanted a speakeasy. Bingo. And the speakeasy was by far. On the spot, nailed it. Oh, they, no. <laughs> uh, they they couldn't have done them. Couldn't have done a better job. Um, how, about, how about a moment that <sighs> kind of sticks in your mind? Might have been funny, might have been serious. Uh, it, it, I mean... It had to be the splinter in the old butt. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and the trip to the emergency room for Joni Sprague. After, oh my after God. they tried to get hold of the vet. Yes, we but, tried to get a veterinarian, <laughs> who was the closest thing to a doctor in that town, to come pull a splinter out of this poor girl's butt. Um, and, you know, come to find out the splinter was never in there. They, it, it, it had already came out. It just looked like it was in there. They spent all this time at the... At the emergency room and made it a lot more sore. It actually did it, come out. It did come out later. It oh, it did it come out. out. Oh, she, oh, I thought she told me they couldn't no, get it out. Though. They no, couldn't they get, get it out. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, yeah. see, obviously, uh, I'm the butt of this joke, no yeah. pun intended, because <laughs> I thought there never never was in there. But um, we will have nobody scooting on a wood floor or any floor on their butt anymore. <laughs> so that that's not going to put wheels, roller skates, whatever they want. We're, but, though, I there were so many jokes <laughs> Uh, in that text chain for when she was telling it what was going on, everybody chimed in. Everybody made a joke over it. It was, uh, it was so funny to read and to go back and read it would, would be hilarious. <laughs> it is, I don't think I've laughed that hard in a long time. And I was, and it was at her expense, right? Yeah, right. You know, right. she definitely uh, was the butt of the joke. Well, you guys, you know, just to recap the project, the group of um, you want my you want my biggest disappointment i gotta tell you my biggest disappointment gotta tell you this went to town went three hours into town to get all this stuff that i dreamed up for the landscaping come back chris and i busting our tails landscaping buck was out helping laid all this stuff out got the landscaping down made laid all the the wood chips down put all the cloth down got the sidewalks edged and when it come time to reveal it 
It snowed, snowed and covered it all up. <laughs> I was so freaking mad. <laughs> yeah, you couldn't see any of it. Yeah, you know, it was like, and, and we didn't even talk about the front porch, that whole wraparound porch that had fallen in and was destroyed. We have a brand new walk around porch and we did a beautiful job of landscaping around it. And it actually still looks good to this day. Uh, the flowers, the roses have done amazing. But uh, I was so mad when it covered it up with snow. I was, that was the most disappointed I had been the whole day. Because we, we were already there. We had achieved it. I was happy. I was excited. That was, that was a grand and, the, and this was the, the really <laughs> cool look for the cameras, right? This big grand look we're going to get. And it snowed on it. And the good Lord looked at me and said, don't smile too much, son. You know, because... Uh, it, Oh, no. And, and, you know, being outside the circle, looking back on it, uh, congratulations. You're not guys. outside the circle. <laughs> congratulations. You're a dead You're squat inside. in the middle. Yeah. <laughs> but, but, you know, you walk away from a project like that with, with quite a bit of satisfaction. Uh, the sense of accomplishment of starting to recognize and assemble your, your team members and, and, uh, I know you didn't dwell on it very long because a few, you know, a month and a half, two months later, you're coming back across the country to the next project uh, in Christ, Virginia. And, and uh, I want to thank you for including Baird Brothers on, on the Highness Nebraska project. Oh, absolutely. Uh, folks, we're, we're going to hear some more insider views coming up real soon. We're going to take a quick break and, and uh, regroup. And uh, as, as these things progress, we're going to share your conversation with the folks on both the Kreitz Virginia Project and the Ty Nesta Project. Yeah. Yeah. Stay Love tuned, it. folks. Follow us on the socials, Instagram, Facebook, Renovation Hunters, Baird Brothers, Fine Hardwoods. Stay tuned. For all you folks listening, thanks for talking shop with Baird Brothers, Fine Hardwoods. If you've enjoyed this episode and want to stay up to date with the American Hardwood Advisor Series, give us a like and subscribe. For more tips, projects, and inspiration, check us out on Facebook, Instagram, or at BairdBrothers.com. Until next time. Brought to you direct from Studio 3B at Baird Brothers Fine Hardwoods, the American Hardwood Advisor is your source for trends, tips, and insights into how the building industry has evolved. Join me, Steve Stack, along with guest builders and industry leaders as we talk shop and go in depth on what it takes to be the best of the best. Dive into topics like architecture, industry trends, project plans, historical tools, tricks of the trade, and life's lessons from more than six decades of experience in the hardwood lumber business. Hey folks, Steve Stack, Studio 3B, Baird Brothers Fine Hardwood, Canfield, Ohio. Uh, we're gonna sit down here today with, uh, with the leaders of the renovation hunters, I guess that's a good way, appropriate way, with uh, Mr. Chris Filardi yeah. to my far right, and and Kevin Tarkovich, and yep. the GC on the project, and and uh, then this guy you might know, uh, Hal Schaefer from from the uh, other Outdoor Channel show, Drop Zone. Right? Yes, sir. And uh, wow, where'd this year go? Yeah, huh? It, it went in a hurry. So we, we, you know, we did that project out in Hyannis, and then next thing we know, we're coming back across the country, and we land in Kreitz, Virginia. Couldn't be, it, it, you could not have the most opposite topography build. Everything about it was a total 180 degree from where we were at. You guys, jointly, tell me, tell me the process, how you wound up in Kreitz, Virginia. Well, um, they send in all these videos to a landing page, right? And um, I think all of us looked at it. I know Kevin mm -hmm. and I did. I don't know yeah. if you got to look at all of them. But, uh, you know, after looking at them, uh, I told Kev, I said, Kev, you know, we need to lean on you on some of this because, you know, I can help with the story, where which stories seem to work. But it also needed to be something that we could do, right? Because structurally, he's the man that's going to – he's going to determine – that part, right? What is this? Is this something we can do? So we got it down, narrowed down to a few, and um, the Kreitz thing was crazy. It was 100%. We didn't know who the guy was. You didn't. I didn't. 
Chris didn't. But after we chose it, it come to find out that everybody I knew knew these people. And one of our partners, Sweet Dreams Furniture, were their neighbors. <laughs> and it was the most, it was crazy. It's just like everything we do with this thing, there, something aligns that we had nothing to do with. And we're like, how does this happen, right? You know, how does it happen? Uh, sometimes things are just meant to happen. And this particular build, 100%, without a doubt, nobody can argue with me, there, there was some, there was some uh, direction from up above that led us to that because of the relationships these people had with other people that we knew with Sweet Dreams Furniture and the story behind the family was incredible. But just the story they sent us was, yeah. you know, it was, it, you, when, you, when you went into it and it was, it was pretty moving and um, it, was, it was so perfectly different than what we had just done that it, it, it was the thing that yeah. me and him rode up there, we, we, just like we did before, we didn't tell him, yeah. hey, we gotta come up here and look at your place. Um, we got to, we got to see this place. We got to look at it. 172 year old cabin. You do not absolutely have any idea what you're getting into. I've got to, I've got to compliment you at the end of this statement. And there is such contrast from highness, larger structure, <laughs> uh, needed help to having experienced the cabin in Kreitz firsthand and when Baird showed up on site and you guys walked us through it's like this is a challenge 180 degrees away from the highness challenge you had to recognize and respect that 172 oh, yeah. year old cabin not oh, yeah. honor it Right? Oh, perfect. Honor it. And, and kudos to you guys. You did it. You didn't go in and remodel. You, we went, in and, modern, you went in and yeah. tweaked. Yeah. And that's all that place did. And you tweaked it in different ways. We, we had uh, less material involvement, but <laughs> it was key. I, I like the, the less material. It was half a pallet <laughs> of premium hardwood hickory beautiful mm -hmm. stuff but it's delivered out of the back of a crazy fedex driver's truck oh my god <laughs> but the I'll fact never that, forget that it was just a palletized stock of wood versus a tractor trailer load you know but uh, it, it's you know as far as our product went and but, you guys added so many amenities right conveniences but the impact of your product was no less than what it was in INS. you know it was a smaller amount but the impact was every bit as great or greater you know the the recognizing the elements of of the cabin and uh a few of you one one two three of them all three of them may have shared some photos with me when you guys walked it to preview it oh yeah that baker's cabinet the wood coal cook stove oh yeah right the old wash sink over on the one side the ice chest in the ice chest right it had all the charm it needed oh, it just the charm just needed to be highlighted a little bit well the problem with this is is it met the criteria for a bunch of guys to go hunting it yes. was fine for that yep. right but our mission statement and our vision was not just for guys. It was to gather families. And so, as Kevin said, we, we needed to add creature comforts to this. And then on top of that, it was way more than a structure. This was, we involved the whole property in this renovation. Yes. Um, from, I mean, even just like the On the Spot Boys did the custom hay bale blind for um, Hyannis. That, crazy modern blinds that nobody else can build that they're they're incredible they took it a step further on this one and created something that once again was super friendly for kids 
but yet met every need plus really, that really any guy could ever want and meet the needs of getting the females introduced to the outdoors as well and not experience, not have to deal with the climate and, and everything else that's going on. That's what this all was about. This was, it. we say it was a smaller transfer. I don't think it was smaller. I really don't. When we encompass what we did property-wise, structure-wise, skin and shed, shooting house, um, the property was, there was a lot of work went on oh, five oh, straight yeah. days on that property. Yeah, you took me for a ride in the side-by-side -side and, and uh, uh, the food plots, uh, oh. the, the, the shooting, positioning and shooting installation, lanes, the shooting lanes, and, creating tunnel, creating yeah. funnels and squeeze points. It was, I mean, it was, did, it was a whole package. Oh yeah. We did a lot to make that for one thing you want to keep, keep kids happy and, and the ladies interested, they don't need to be bored. Right. So we created opportunities that would keep wildlife in front of them more often and, and give them more opportunity to harvest animals, right? right? So we created a more exciting hunting experience and visual experience, even if they don't want to hunt, that where they can go watch wildlife, right? So that that's that's part of that. You, everything we did, we we thought about to create a better, more interesting experience, especially for the youth, right? Because you know you got to remember the attention span these days, where we'll, no matter whose fault it is. Is way less than it used to be, and kids get bored way easier than they used to. Yeah. So quick, we quick segue. Whether it's this. good or not, we have to do it. We have to we have to create ways that we can keep them interested, and and worry about and quit worrying about why they're that way. Right. You you were saying. Well, yeah. Well, one of the things we learned after all the builds, it's the filter that you look at the project. So, a, a tip to consumers that want to send the videos, you know, we have a construction filter. We have a story filter. We have, what do you want to do on the property? What have you always wanted to do? What's your family history? What's your kid's situation like? In this one, they had a whole bunch of kids. They loved the place, but guess what? They couldn't shower, they had no power. They had, why would they go, right? And, and, and folks, my, my first look at this property, I think was, was day two for you folks. Yeah. And uh, you're, you're down there in, in Christ, Virginia, very rural area. Oh yeah, and and you're you're coming up this two lane road, and and there's the driveway, you know. You went through some feeder creeks, getting back up to it, and 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 it's wooded, and you come up to the top, and you open that clearing where the cabin sat. Yeah. And that little pond adjacent to the cabin, and it's like I'm not going home. No. And you guys made it so. You don't have to go have to home go. right away if you don't That's, want to. To be able to generate a wow factor, when you roll into things, I, I can't remember your exact words. You pulled me to the side and you're like, this is a little gem. This is yeah. this place, as, as it sat in the raw before we started. Yeah. Because we had the makers in there, you know, coming from Hyannis, we were able to, <laughs> we were still licking our wounds. No, no yeah. we were beat yeah, you, down. You were beat up. We were yeah. beat up, beat down, but. I was able to put them more in an element on this project where they were they were doing more creative shop work. They were busy as crazy. I mean, building screen doors, building kitchen uh, counter vanities, building custom window tables, screens. window screens, bathroom vanity, those things that were well within their wheelhouse, their comfort yeah. level. They, they had a, a level of enthusiasm that, you know, it just, wasn't there in Hyannis because of so much work and being out of their comfort zone. But being able to put together something that when you turn that corner after the renovation was done, that they just went, oh my gosh. And and that goes back to what I said earlier. It was it was a gem sitting there. No doubt. And you you had to you had to approach it with kid and gloves. Yeah. And you guys did a great job on it. You know, as far as Baird Brothers Fine Hardwoods were concerned, uh we did, we had conversation, okay? After seeing the photographs, what kind of tops are gonna work best in this kitchen? Yeah, we, one thing to do there. Right? We stayed with nature and the characters of nature and we put that beautiful character grade hickory top in there, right? Gorgeous. Mm -hmm. And then to you guys' 
approach to the show and to family and to, to tradition and table time, as I'll call it. We, we sent down some heavy eight quarter maple. Oh, that, and, that table soap. Right? Oh my God, that table you know, so crazy. And, and, and the makers, Adam did they such created an amazing a, job a, on a that. table, right, right? Adam did a beautiful job on that. And, and then, you know, we're, when you guys are talking, we're listening. You know, you guys drive family, you drive, you guys drive kids. Well, we had conversation back here at the shop, okay, with, with ownership, with our marketing partners, Ice Energy, mm. and, and we're talking kids, we're talking farm pond or, or you know, uh, that, that great little pond adjacent to the cabin, and we're talking fishing. So with Baird Brothers, one of our build it with Baird projects suddenly became a fishing rod and rack reel. And that right? was such an awesome feature because we get so consumed on the build aspect. Yeah, the structure. And he's working in the food plots. I mean, he's covered in sweat and tears and thorns and everything else. And I mean, we're sawdust covered and you roll in and you open up back of the truck and here you have this fishing rack and all these reels fishing are rod. like oh, well, man. fishing rods and bobbers and i'm like oh scene stealer you know <laughs> yeah. thanks a lot glory grabber, glory grabber glory <laughs> grabber yeah <laughs> and 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 i'll go back to conversations we've shared numerous times with renovation hunters in the outdoor channel and your approach and when chris first approached baird brothers fine hardwoods and he laid out the plan and the map and the reasons. We said, this is us. This is Baird Brothers. This is family, this is tradition. This is doing stuff for the right reason. Yep, you know? exactly. And, and so those decisions, you know, you, you, throw, you, you put that pallet out in front of us in, in the case of Christ, Virginia, and, and uh, they said, oh, this is a no brainer. You know, so, yeah. so you know, the, how rewarding is it? And, and I don't know if you guys have experienced, you, you reinforced that deck and did some deck work and that little pier that shot out, jetted out onto the pond. You know, pull in, pull in there and see three little tykes running around with fishing poles in their hands, fishing in that pond. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> that's, that was the thing, the creature conference we did. You think about this, the, one, the number one reason the ladies did not want to come stay there was there's no place to take a shower. Yeah. They couldn't take a clean. So you know what? Our friends at Cape Cod Outdoor Showers sent us this amazing shower set that we set up there. Kevin did some some unbelievable plumbing. I don't I don't even know. I still don't. Plumbing I don't even. No, wait a minute. I don't <laughs> want to know <laughs> everything. The filters and the reservoir tanks and um, how that thing was plumbed together. Uh, and you know what? At the twist of a knob. They had great water pressure. They had hot water, they had mm -hmm. cold water. And that Cape Cod shower looked amazing yeah. out there. I mean, it, it really did. It looked absolutely amazing. And it blended right into the, to the cabin. cabin. Yeah, it was <laughs> like, okay, that, that's actually supposed to be there. Right, you know, and, yeah, how long has that been but, here? But, but the thing about it, being back there, you, you're not worried about, the ladies are taking an outdoor shower. They're not worried about, it, it is truly a, a cool experience to take a shower out in nature and feel exactly. secure and have the conference. It, it, is, it is actually, to me, it's like meditation. Right. It, it is yeah. that out there where that's at, in that bowl, in the middle of nowhere, it is cool. I mean, you may have a bear come peep over and, and say hey, but other than <laughs> yeah. that, it, it, it was, that was just really cool. So, you know, with the, with the shower, that, that's, you know, Hal comes up with these ideas sometimes. He goes, I'm gonna put a shower in, I'm like, this, this cabin is 300 square feet. I don't know where we're going to put a shower. <laughs> and he's like, no, no, I got this. I got this. I'm like, I, I got to come up with some water system. I got to do this. Like, <laughs> you can do it. I got the shower. Hey, the shower is here. We need to get it. Oh, by the way, uh, they sent us two hot water systems. So I want to do a skinning shack and then have hot water down there too. I'm like, a skinning shack? When did this come? Oh, no, I got a great idea. Every, Here's a sketch. <laughs> He's, that's the one thing he had. When, he, when I, I, I have a great idea, Kevin's going to learn to get in his truck and leave. <laughs> because, <laughs> because it, uh, you know, I'm proud of the ideas, but 
Well, I'm telling you, this is what I told you. You tell the guy that we want something, and 30 minutes later, he's got it drawn out, and this is how we're going to do it. I just, I just, I just had an, an eerie hair on the back of the net kind of rising thing. Yep. And we talked about it on, on one of your recent visits to Canfield here at the shops. <clears throat> Crates, Virginia is a miniature Baird Brothers Fine Hardwoods. You guys went into Crates, Virginia, 172-year-old cabin, was smart enough to leave well enough alone, and you, no, 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 no pun intended, you showered the place with amenities. Yeah. Okay? So you've got the most technologically advanced, solar-powered, right, heating Nature's system. Nature's generator system. Right? Yeah, nature generator. That's a great right? system. An outdoor shower, running water, all the modern conveniences. We've got woodworking equipment in there from 1908, early 1909, 19 yeah. right, right, and and you guys witnessed it on 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 your visits. <clears throat> We've got some of the most technologically advanced equipment. Yeah. So you off grid, both of you off grid. Don't mess with the old. Self sufficient. Don't mess with the yeah. old. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> and, and the thing is, is even your sawdust is used. Either you're selling it to the farmers and they're using it for livestock, or you're burning it to create more energy or heat or whatever it is that you use it for. Yeah. Everywhere you turn, there's something here, and it was it's a lesson to be learned of what we all can do, and it is certainly something that will we will heed and, and take into consideration on a lot of these things because you got to realize most of these vacation places, whether hunting camp, fishing camp, whatever it is, whatever gets people outdoors, that's what that's we're excited about. Line. Right, yep. right. Most of these are not going to be in the center of town, right? We're not going to have these convenient. We're going to have a lot more of this. We don't have power here. We don't have water here. We don't have this right. here. I mean, it's going to be a lot of that. And, uh, and, and including different partners, um, you know, you guys were giving me credit for the food plots, but Expedition Land Management, uh, old Chris Van Gerpen come out with, uh, with one of his buddies, and between him and I, um, them boys know what they're doing, and, and, and we come up with some really cool places, and I can't wait because deer season actually just started for them, and I can't wait to see the fruits of what we bore, you know, oh, yeah. everything yeah. we we of what we did and things for them I'm, I'm so excited about it they've been sending pictures of of bears and deer and all the animals in the food plots so it's pretty cool and the thing about that is we we gave them a plan from year to year a three-year plan on how property to continue, management of property management yeah. and that was left with them on how to continue to improve his property the there were the the dirt there was the worst dirt that we had ever tested it absolutely was the, the yeah. worst. You'd have a better dirt. chance of growing on blacktop. Oh, yes, exactly right. The, <laughs> ad, the acidic level of that dirt was so un unbelievable. We had, to, we had to increase the organic matter. So we put organic matter, rotten hay, on top of everything. And then the stuff that we planted, not only would it provide nutrition and food for the animals, it was going to provide organic matter for as the it, soil. As it, for the soil, because yeah. we need to build topsoil, and organic matter is the only so way. So do don't it. downplay the organic matter because it's 95 degrees. There's <laughs> virtually no air rolling through that mountain hollow. <clears throat> They're out there rolling around these no, three these or four year old hay bales yep. that are, if you've ever been in old hay, it is nasty. nasty. <laughs> it's infested with everything that crawls, bites, stings. You got it. It was all in there. <laughs> not to, not to mention the remnants of the poison that was probably in the hay field when they did it. Yep. And these guys are busting their tail, manhandling this to spread out in someone's food plot. So, hey, speaking of organic matter, do you know how hard it is to get a porta potty at some of these places? <laughs> Not only one, yeah, right, but like, they're, and they're like, "Well, is there only I, Chris can a, take us there." According <laughs> to my GPS, there's no building there. Oh, I, oh yeah, there. Well, have you been there? Well, I haven't, but Kevin told me there's one there. Yeah, can you turn around? Oh yeah, you can turn around. Absolutely. <laughs> it, and 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 you know what? There we go, right back, right back to Project One back in in Hyannis. Okay, what do we need? What do we need? You guys, we rolled into into Kreitz, a couple porta potties down there. Uh, Hands, wash station, water station, dumpster, right? dumpster <laughs> tents, generator. Yeah. I think the only thing we didn't have that we probably needed, 
coming from Hyannis to here, there were still people suffering, suffering from PTSD from Hyannis, who was probably a psychologist. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the only thing we didn't do. I tried, but uh, you, you can't expect a crazy person to fix crazy. So, so um, <clears throat> but everybody, boy, by, by day three again, by day three, things started rolling and people started smiling and, and um, well, it was so had, good. I told them they had to. Yeah, <laughs> you told them they didn't have a choice, but, but anyway, we got it done. Smile. Uh, but, but you think about it, I think our break on this one, the family come and joined us on the break. Uh, Matt Tucker band yep. Yep. did an amazing job. Matt, uh, it's my cousin, did an incredible job. And now he has written our theme song called Tiny Towns that nice. is going to be released the week after the show airs is going to be released. And it is, oh my gosh, it is one of the best country songs I've ever heard. It is one of the catchiest tunes. Can't it's wait. It's so real. It the is so real. real. And man. the story is so 100% renovation hunters. When you overlay whole, that soundtrack is, oh, oh. with some of the video footage oh, that is generated, oh. it's like, okay, what was created first? The song or, or the, the, or the chills, hunters, the yeah. chills that run down your back listening to that song, knowing what we've all experienced there and the emotion that we've already encompassed and locked away in our heart. I mean, it, it's it's a tearjerker. It's it's it is just so what tiny towns are now, all about. Now, now you got me. Now you really got me stoked to to listen and see that. Uh, and I I wasn't able. Uh, to stick around in person for the reveal on that project, but with what you guys have shared and I've seen. Uh, now, uh, the reveal process. <laughs> okay, so we, we had a, a simple reveal in Hyanna. <laughs> yeah. uh, now we have cars parked a mile away. We got families, kids, grandparents, houses, I need to go out and get 20 blindfolds. So, <laughs> you know, they don't know me well because they trusted me to blindfold them and, <laughs> and then to lead them somewhere. So I was like, man, I'm feeling really good about myself. <laughs> and, uh, but they did it. They blindfolded them. Blindfolded them, took them down. We had them all lined up behind the Renovation Hunters trailer. My wife came up to visit. She's now the truck driver. <laughs> so we set out. Lined everybody up. I mean, they, they don't know what to expect. There's some tears. I don't know if they're scared or happy or what. <laughs> she pulls the truck out of the way, and they get to see this cabin. With a new red roof. New red roof. <laughs> oh. New porch. New grill area. Oh, yeah. And all the renovation hunters lined up, welcoming them. Welcome to your new old cabin. Oh. You know, There's the skin and shit. Yeah, man, that skin and shed was like I had skin and shed envy when we done because I've I, at none of our camps do I have a skin and shed anywhere close to that. So I mean, right there, and, and and let me interrupt just a second. You have you had Richard and Walt with Wall Control incorporated into that. Right? Oh yeah, absolutely. Right? You had your partners over at Case Case Knives involved in that. Yep, you know, and it, it's just it's it's all about our partners. And so Richard, I told him what we needed. And he come up with all the attachments. Him and Stephanie were down there knocking this thing out. Um, and while they were there, they did the drop zone, I mean, the drop zone trailer. See, I'm still on that show. Um, uh, the renovation hunter's trailer and went in there and Stephanie went in there and just, oh my gosh, made that. We are wall to wall. Wall to wall, wall, wall control. control. And yeah. everything was organized. You could go find something. It wasn't looking in the bottom of a bag for something. You know, because you get to think about it. We have a lot of Crescent tools out there. And when you go to try to find the tool you want, you're digging through bags. But not no more because it is all laid out on the wall control there. But I challenged them to this skinning shed. And so what's the one thing that happens to you when... Your skin and deer. I mean, you get pretty nasty, right? Yeah, right. It, it 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 does that. So, we on the backside, we had a shower, an outdoor shower to wash off after after processing all your, you know, your meat because that's that's the reason we hunt, right? And then on the front side, you had a sink to continue washing the meat, processing it. You got cold water, you got hot water. We had 
Mr. Heater there to keep you warm while you're, while you're doing it. We actually had a, a, a hoist and a crank system. And then we also had two hooks on the bottom of each of the big pillars that were holding the skin and shed up. And that's where you use to tie your, your carcass off so you could better work and when you're processing your meat. Right. I mean, we really sat there and thought about everything that aggravated me when I'm when doing this, <laughs> when, when I'm doing, when, when I don't have it, I still don't have yeah. it. Well, when I'm doing things in other places and that thing conquered all. And I'm going to tell you, I think Daryl, that may have been his favorite part. And he, cried. he cried. He cried. He cried at the skin and shed. You know how good a skin and shed's got to be? Yeah. <laughs> Grown man cry. Come on. I'm telling you. Roll Tide. That was amazing. We say, we so often think that that was the, the smallest renovation. When in my mind, it was actually the most encompassing. Yeah. From property to, to just usability, uh, creature comforts. It, it, it made it, the experience so different for them that it was unbelievable. And, and then we go to on the spot, Mike and Camper. Every time they build us another custom hunting blind, it is even that much better. It is crazy the stuff they put in it. I made, I made the comment when you took me down there and, and, and showed me that, that blind. I said, this thing's downtown New York City. It's $3,000 a month. Yes, exactly. <laughs> right? It really is. No, no if, if you want to take family if they're on the on the fence about going hunting, you break them up in with that that you, you've just lost. You're, you're not just, you're, you're just not hunting see, by that, yourself. See anymore. that's see you don't that's do thing. You, you got to use the opposite. Like we broke everybody in with boot camp. You don't break people into hunting with boot camp. <laughs> that'll that'll send them <laughs> the other way. That'll sour them. You, you got to start them up here and bring them back to let yeah. let the the draw of nature to bring them back, right? To bring them to they want more nature, more nature, more nature, more nature. That's that's what you want. And the only thing I'll say is, I got elected to be the guy driving the skid steer carrying that heavy thing that nothing else, the tractor wouldn't even lift on that uneven ground. And now I'll tell you right now, that was spooky. A little bit nervous? That was a little bit. <laughs> when I got up, half the seat come up with me. I'm just going to say that. <laughs> well, guys, uh, I got to congratulate you on another successful project. Christ Virginia, the Joyce family, right? What a family. And, and uh, kudos, number two. Check it. Number two in the down. book, baby. <laughs> right? <laughs> One more to go, and 2022 is in the books. It's, it's getting exciting now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're headed that way. We're going to be there soon. We're going to be there soon. Folks, again, renovation hunters. These guys across the board, Chris Filardi, Mr. Kevin Tarkovich, Hal Schaefer, Steve Stack, Baird Brothers Fine Hardwoods, Instagram, Facebook. We're all follow, there. Follow along on the websites, right? We got we got one more of these to go this year yet. Yeah, absolutely. All right, one more. Okay, stick around, folks. We'll be back at you. For all you folks listening, thanks for talking shop with Baird Brothers Fine Hardwoods. If you've enjoyed this episode and want to stay up to date with the American Hardwood Advisor Series, give us a like and subscribe. For more tips, projects, and inspiration, check us out on Facebook, Instagram, or at BairdBrothers.com. Until next time. Brought to you direct from Studio 3B at Baird Brothers Fine Hardwoods, the American Hardwood Advisor is your source for trends, tips, and insights into how the building industry has evolved. Join me, Steve Stack, along with guest builders and industry leaders as we talk shop and go in depth on what it takes to be the best of the best. Dive into topics like architecture, industry trends, project plans, historical tools, tricks of the trade, and life's lessons from more than six decades of experience in the hardwood lumber business. Hey gang, Steve Stack, Baird Brothers Fine Hardwoods, uh, back here at Studio 3B, Canfield, Ohio. And uh, it's, it's kind of sad to say, but it, 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 it's kind of a celebration to say that I am joined uh, for the final time this season yeah. By my friends from Renovation Hunters on the Outdoor Channel. My buddy Chris Filardi on the end. Good to be here. The jokester, the general contractor right there in that beautiful blue shirt. 
Mr. Kevin Tarkovich. Polo inboarded. And then, then the guy that, uh, uh, yeah, pokes you in the ribs, keeps things light, Mr. Hal <laughs> Schaefer. And uh, man, have we had a good year. Wow, it's been crazy. Huh? We did. I, it. I tell you we what, did it. Disney World don't have the ride we've been on. <laughs> I'm going to promise you, this is the best roller coaster I've ever been on in my life. Oh, Lord. Uh, folks, for those that have been following us, you know, we've been to Hyannis, Nebraska. We came back home, licked our wounds, rested up a little bit, jumped down to Christ, Virginia, did a uh, just an absolutely beautiful 172-year-old log cabin, mm -hmm. perched over top a little quarter-acre lake or whatever it was, and only thing more beautiful than the cabin was the family itself. There you go. I'm telling you. The Joyce family. Amazing. Uh, number three. Here we go. Here we go. We travel over to Tynus to Pennsylvania. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's a short trip for you guys. I loved that it. That was nice. I loved it. Yeah. To my home uh, turf, first place I ever hunted. Right? You know, and, and you, you don't live that far from no, that, that community uh, camp that we visited. How about that community? Wow, that was pretty cool. Huh? Once again, tiny towns. Tiny towns, big hearts, big people. Seems to be the recipe across this country, don't it? You know, the community, the Tynesta community was bigger than the whole town of Tynesta. I mean, of, uh, of Hyannis. Hyannis. I mean, just oh, the, absolutely. Just the community. Just, just, yeah. the, community. just the, the collection of houses yeah, it, right there. But it is a tiny town. It's a tiny town and the, the neighbors, the, the interaction that they had, all positive, supporting, yeah. you know. It just shows you not only the diversity of renovation hunters in what the vision of Hal and Chris had, but in the construction process of our builds, we've gone from one extreme to the next, inside, outside, ponds, food plots. Um, mm. We've done and it locations. Yeah, it's all been totally different. And, but we've had the common denominator is family and friends. Yep, 100%. And it, you, I mean, once again, we could not have dialed up and picked a better, more compelling story than this than the Lutz family. Good old Double L. They, I'm telling you, wow, you you were there. <laughs> we, y'all, y'all, y'all got to hear this. This was so. At some point, I had to call Christine Murphy, who's, don't get confused, her maiden name is Lutz, so she is with the Lutz family. But she was the person that sent in the video, she was the person that was the contact point, and it was, uh, after we did it, we decided, hey, you know what, I need to call her and see, we had another actually another we had, property. We had three other two, properties, two, yeah, yeah. prospects. Right, to look at. To look at. Yeah. yeah, and they were up there. So that, that worked out great. So I call Christine Murphy up just out of the blue, about five o'clock in the afternoon. And she answers the phone. I said, hey, Christine Murphy, this is Hal Schaefer. And then it was on. <laughs> oh my God! She started. Yeah, we won. We won. She started telling everybody in the house we won. She went outside. I, we won. We won. I'm like, wait, hold on. No, you haven't won yet. You haven't won yet. And and I can't get her slowed down long enough to to stop her before she told everybody she won. And then I said, no, you haven't won yet. She goes, oh. I, I said, but you are in the final running. And, and and then you could hear some of the excitement come back. But but it greatly scaled down from I won. Um, we, it was the best part. I mean, you could, right then and there, as soon as she did that, I knew that was the right place. I knew it was the right family. It was the right place. They were so, oh my gosh, I, I can't even tell you the emotion. So I told her, I said, look, we, we never, we're never going to come do a place and commit to doing a place until we go look at it and understand that it is a job that we can complete and we feel like that we can overachieve and you'd right. be super happy with, right? That's, yeah. We owe that to everybody that enters, and y'all know that. Everybody that enters, that sends in a story, before you're chosen, if you're one of the finalists, we're gonna come look at your place, right? That's just, that's just part of it. So, enter Steve Stack. <laughs> we said, hey buddy, we're gonna come up there, we're gonna drive up, Chris came down, 
me and Kevin drove up and we go meet the Lutz family. And so we get there and they've got food on the grill, stuff been <laughs> smoking, dips, drinks, a cooler full of drinks just for us to come right. look at the place. Hey, I'm telling you right now, I understand. I'd have been selling it too. <laughs> I will promise you that. Um, but we go look at this place and, and um, structurally, it was probably the best that, that we've yep. looked at, right? As far as the bones of it. The straight, bones straight, of it. The, the straight bones forward. of it. It's, forward, it was just works. straightforward square house. Um, but there was a lot. I mean, they had over 13 people or up to 13 people staying in a 800 square foot house that had mm -hmm. two bedrooms that were what, 100, maybe 100 square foot? Yeah, it was tight. They were, they were, they were if uh, that. Yeah, 10, 10 by 11. Yeah, so, so, yeah. okay, 110. <laughs> um, Y'all surprised that I'm from Alabama and I could do math, right? Uh, roll Tide. Anyway, um, so we go inside and we're sitting here. We're measuring stuff. We're looking at the floor. Of course, there's some floor problems. And the floor was like the story behind the floor was crazy. It's an old, an, a school in the area, an old school, pulled up all the hardwood from the gymnasium. And they said, don't throw it away. We want it. Right. And they hardwooded the floor with yeah. this old basketball court. <laughs> the, the, the entire cabin was built from reclaimed material Yeah, back in 1970. When nobody thought of doing that. But it was all Made up to affordable. date conventional construction. It was done well. Yes. <laughs> what they, they had limited resources, but they did it well. Yep. And that's what gave us a starting point. You know, you come in there and you look at these places and you try to think, what can you do that's going to impact this build? What's going to look right? And you have to approach these places with kid gloves, especially something that's been in the family history for all these years. Has deep meaning. Deep, deep meaning. meaning. Not just you know, the structure, but you know, also some other things that it's, we'll talk about it's later. It's in the family tree. But it's in the family. So you're, you're battling with, you know, we've had some prospects that Oh, withdrew, withdrew because of too much family turmoil based on what them not be wanting to be updated. Yep. You know, so you approach these things with kid gloves and you're just trying to generate ideas and thoughts. And that, that's one of the things that was awesome about having the four of us on site because it's, it's a whirlwind of things that we're coming up with. Steve, you were the most important factor in this because you were able to see exactly what we had to work with and knowing the entire product line from Bear Brothers, you're firing away. Hey, let's do this. <laughs> what do you think about that? Hey, I have a product here. I'll show you this. I'll show you that. And you're measuring doors. You're doing this, changing that. And it's like you were able, we could sit down and discuss the nuts and bolts. Hal and Chris are going through looking at different features to incorporate. And not only that, but getting a feel with the family. Yeah. Because that is so important to get the family's input. Now, they first came out and said, well, we'd like a room built out the front. Yeah. Which would have destroyed the whole front elevation and the quaintness and put us way over on timeline. Because Big time. Um, but they're getting to know the family and that interaction, giving them a sense of, confidence and comfort, but yet pulling tidbits of information that we were able to incorporate into the build, which makes it just exponentially more personal to them. Yeah. They're not just walking into a new place, a cleaned up place. It gives them this, this personal connection that I've received text messages from her and calls and saying, I still can't believe Absolutely. when I come yeah. in right? yeah. and say, this is our new place but it's, it's our old place. It's still our cabin. Yeah. And that's, that, that is the fine line that you walk with every oh. one of these, every one of these, you can't remove the memories of this right. place. And we did a really good job. I was really proud of our team because we took a lot of things that were in that cabin. Right. And, and we, we kept it there and even made them more of an exclamation point. Right. Than Chris, what they were Chris before. had the, his two, his main focuses were on two things. They, they didn't care about anything else in that cabin except for two items. Yeah. 
was rocking chair from their granddaddy. And I mean, I'm not talking about just a cool rocking chair. It was like the, the, you could feel his personality the way they would tell stories about him. And the, ma, the grandma always used to say, don't be a smart ass. And so they had a little a sign, little sign yep. that said, "Don't be a smart." Don't, but don't they the all said door. it. Yeah, yeah, there. The front door, and that couldn't leave. <laughs> this that this to one part. to me, like Hal said, when I met Christine right away, I knew in my heart, I knew this was the one. I was just hoping that the story, the rest of the house, everything was good. But these guys, listen, they hunt, they fish, they enjoy the outdoors. They are well known in their community. They have fun. They party. They cook. They have multiple generations. They don't need anything. They had it, and we had the opportunity to work with them to just make, just amp it up to but, make but, it better. They had, they had wants. Oh, they had a lot of wants. Oh, they, they, yeah. they, they poured that 12 by 24 foot pad for a reason. Yeah. Oh, yeah. With the hope that someday well, it I mean, could be we, a carport. It was going to be a carport, <laughs> right? right? And, and you got to look at this. So, so we all show up there, right? And, and we're talking inside, and we all come up with a decision. You know what? We're gonna do this, okay, we're gonna do this. So we walk down and I lead her down a road that makes her think we're not gonna do it. No, you were dirty dog on it. Yeah. <laughs> it was almost mean a little bit oh, there. Yeah, it, was, it was cruel. <laughs> no. I had, I had to turn. You had, <laughs> you have to bring a full swing of the heart so they could. You didn't swing, you tore it out. No, I didn't. <laughs> no. I never told them we weren't doing it. But. The fact of the matter is, the, when we told them we were doing it, oh my gosh. Oh, Christine, just great. Oh my God, it was, it was awesome. I mean, you, it just don't get any better than that. And right then you say, well, guys, we're going to have to do a better job than we thought. <laughs> I mean, really, I mean, because of the, the reaction that she gave was, was amazing. Then she called her sister in South Dakota, Sister Lutz. Calls her in South Dakota, she starts bawling on FaceTiming us. And I'm sitting there FaceTime with her, she's crying, she crying, and I'm like, wow. Okay, Kevin, here you go. <laughs> so, I'm like, I don't want to start crying, because I was about to. In that time, I realized, okay, we, we can do no wrong between the two sisters. But I look over at Brother Jim. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Jim is the thinker. He's the analyzer. He's the analyzer. He's looking at me, sizing me up, and I'm thinking, oh, dear Lord, please give me the skill set to appease and to, to make this work for them. Right. Because I took it personally. He never, never said one derogatory word. No. Had you, anything. You, you could feel the apprehension. I could feel it. And I, and I discreetly contacted Christine, and I was like, what's your brother's take on all this? Uh, he's a little reluctant to do this. I'm like, okay. <laughs> we yeah. can feel that. <laughs> yeah. We no, can feel that. No pressure. He, but, was, he was the protector of the floor, remember? No, no, yeah. no, no paint, oh. no stain, no nothing. No. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it was, he, he filled the shoes because this was so dear to them. He was there in, the, in baby pictures, you know, Through as, all as the parents were building this, right. grandparents. So the personal connection is not even... Uh, it's 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 life breathing to him, and in the course of completing this, and I told him, yeah. I'm like, listen, you were you were my biggest hurdle that <laughs> I felt that I had to overcome. He was he was the ghost in the back of your head. Oh, yeah. Was, yeah, there wasn't a voice. I mean, there was a man with a shotgun in the back of my head. Was, Don't that's screw up my the way cabin. It was. Exactly. And that's how I took it, but he's like, "Listen, you made this place into something far beyond anything we could have ever comprehended." Well, you and know, and that was just that was one of the biggest that was the biggest compliment from he, all, from anybody. Yeah. yeah. Because and I shared it with him. I'm, I'm texting him one night and I sent it to Hal. I'm like, look at this. This comes from Jim. Yeah. Oh and my, I'm wow. about half in tears going, oh, thank you. He's not coming <laughs> after me. So, so, so we had, and, and guy, you, you, you won't know how I appreciated you, including myself and Baird Brothers, in on that, that preview. And, and I, I felt like you guys did, I thought. 
man, what, what corner did we just paint ourselves into? <laughs> right. Oh, oh, no doubt. And, you know, it's just like once we got started on the house, our, our original plan was, was to change the cabinets around and stuff like that. But they had decent appliances. And, and then, oh, my gosh, everything started transforming. And everything started. And, and then the, the neighbors and Christine were so helpful with all of our crew and doing yeah. things for us and doing this and gift bags and stuff like this. And I'm like, Oh, I, I let uh, Kevin, I said, Kevin, look, it ain't in the budget, but I, I'm, I'm going to get these people new appliances. Said, Where's the budget at? I tell him, <laughs> and he goes, no, it doesn't it, matter. I'm going to get this. <laughs> and, and, you, and you know what? We, the four of us, when we were on site that day, <clears throat> we talked, we could do this. We talked, we could do that. Man, it'd be cool if we could do this. And next thing you know, we're measuring interior doors. Let's swap the doors out. Yeah. You know, and, and having done a couple projects and budgets are important there, there for a reason yeah <clears throat> and so so we we came up with our wish list you know and and then we started talking numbers and and man you know we'd, we'd wow, love this to is but yeah yeah and so you w know without I, a doubt without I, a doubt the greatest transformation of the year I'm, I'm back here in I Canfield, think. Ohio. I might as well have had palm palms because I'm, I'm cheering for this family up in Tyanesta, Pennsylvania, right. to right. the family, right? And <clears throat> all three of us at different times had conversation. Oh, Steve, man, we're not going to be able to do that. We can't afford it. I said, Let me go me, back and talk to him. Give me a couple hours. That's what I hear. <laughs> Let me go back. And, and, then, and then so <laughs> Steve shows up with a cape on and an S on his chest. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Woo! Superman, we got pricing. I don't know if you went to the woodshed and you got whipped and said, you know, here's your 30 lashes. Now go back and tell them yes, you can do it. But not only between the, the products, the, the shiplap, the tongue and groove, the reclaimed ceiling material. The exterior. The doors and the then exterior. the law cabin you, exterior. You not only gave us our wish list, but you amplified it. Big time. And I'm just like, oh my gosh. And, but we all saw the potential in this. I'm, I made the statement that day up there. I says, in, 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 in the most respectful way of cabin life, I said, we could turn this place into a dollhouse. Mm. What I say, I, That's exactly I'll, I'll sell my property out, out west of the mill here. I could, I could live up, up there at that camp. Well, <laughs> you know, and, and we got to look at this, guys. The one thing that was pretty common denominator, with the exception of Hyannis, is, you know, there, we, we never had enough power. We never had enough places to plug stuff in it. And if it had not been for the, the technology of Matabo HPT <laughs> power to cordless power tools yeah, and, yeah. The, and the quality stuff they sent us, I mean, do you know how difficult oh. our job, how difficult, I mean, from highness all the way down, how difficult, Christ, Virginia would have been absolutely impossible. Yeah. It, would, it, would, it yeah. would not have happened. Uh, but how easy they made our jobs, how much easier they made our jobs. Uh, it, it's, it's unbelievable. And then you, you, you look at Richard from Wall Control and Stephanie, and they come up and they were like, oh, man, what, what can we do here? What can we do here? Because there wasn't a lot to do in the house with the wall control. No. And there wasn't, there wasn't a lot to do in the new room with wall control. But they had a big storage yeah. building out back and, and then like most any storage building, like mine would be, like anybody's would be, it was cluttered. It was yeah, cluttered that's bad, all. right? So we empty everything out and wall control goes to work in there. And oh my gosh, did they turn that building around? And then we like, I'm like, yeah, I done built one skinny shed. We put another one up. <laughs> <laughs> so we came off the end of the barn and put another skin and shed there, more wall control, more of our friends from Case Knife and Zippo. And then these guys love a fire pit, so our friends from Zippo made, made us a whole Zippo kit for starting fires. And the thing about that is, people don't even realize it, they make the best fire starting equipment in the world. And nobody wants to sit there and fight a fire when you got all your friends over and your neighbor over. Click, boom, bam. It's you burning. got heat, baby. It's, burning. It, it's rolling. And, you know, from all that, but I have to say, the people who came in truly with S on their chest was our friends from Sweet Dreams Furniture. Oh. They, what, what, what they did there was 
so over the top. What's the best cake, tasting cake in town if it isn't frosted beautiful? Oh my God. There <laughs> right? you yeah. yeah. What's that? And you know that old saying, you can't have your cake and eat it too? That's the dumbest saying in the world. If I'm going to have a birthday cake, I ain't, I'm going to eat it. And there's, I don't eat it. I've never understood that saying. You don't have your cake and eat it too. Well, by God, yes, I can. <laughs> That's just what cake was made for. So we had our cake and ate it too with this job. Um, and that I'm, I'm Katie and Greg, oh my God, they, she spent so much time on, on that. She was working with Kevin and, and we were back and forth. forth. I'm showing her the paint colors for everything. I'm like, all right, here's our palette that I want to generate. Yeah. What do you got? And I mean, they are, I expected, okay, let's, they'll do a bed here. They'll do a nightstand. <laughs> they'll do, you know, maybe a lamp. Oh no, we're coming in there. We're doing full linens, dressers, everything else. Oh. So, and it, but the thing is, <laughs> if you would have put that stuff in that cabin as it sat originally, wouldn't it would no, no, yeah, it's a fish out of water. But, but it, you could have done all that and it had been putting lipstick on a pig. I mean, it really would. Yeah. As we're doing that, that build, I mean, you spent how many days there? Steve, eight. Yeah. eight days, full days, and and not walking around. You're in there. We're in there building frames. I mean, you're oh. you're doing everything. You're doing. You're hanging doors, putting lock sets in. You're teaching. You're installing, and working as hard as everybody else in there. Because, like you said, you saw the potential in being a dial house. And as they started bringing stuff in, it was like. Man, this is really going to pop. I mean, I'm well, telling you, it really could have. It really could have been the cover of Better Homes and Garden, Martha oh, yeah. Stewart, any of that, any anything in there. You could have done. You could have late took pictures of that, which we did in the video, and you guys just saw this. And if you haven't seen it, go watch it. That house was one of the most beautiful. Yeah. You know, when, they, when they went through the reveal, I've ever seen. They thought originally that it was just kind of spiced up and, and outfitted for the TV show. And we were going to take all the stuff they back. Thought we were That's what the family thought. They like, thought. No, we had, it's yours. Yeah, no, this is yours. And she goes, what? She goes, we get to keep all? And it was like, wow. Because they, they threw, uh, they thought we were staging it. Yeah. yeah. You know, they were staging it for what it could look like. Yeah. They had no idea they were keeping that stuff. We all talked about turning the corner in that back community and realizing you drove down this road eight days ago <laughs> in this little house, this little greenhouse sat there. It was just, and was, you come back, we were afraid if they came in, they would drive past it because it was that monumental change. Now, it's an eight day renovation rebuild. We have our limitations, but we maxed out oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, what yeah. we were capable but, of doing. No, but, but we had the chance and we all recognized that we had more confidence in, oh, wait, the this in, 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 in the build and the makers. And by far yeah. the smoothest, if it, if it hadn't have been for COVID slapping at us, by far the smoothness, the efficiency, the camaraderie of that build was by far, still even with, with us having to deal with people getting sick, it was by far the best. Yeah, yeah. And, and it, you, you, you say things happen for a reason. Oh, yeah. right? And then, then I want to I want to go into some other other stories. First night in town, I drove up to Franklin on Sunday, and I go go down to dinner, and a couple was sitting next to me, and of course you start conversation with them. Well, here he was the editor for the three newspapers in the Franklin Tyanesta area, right? <laughs> Crazy. I, I said I go, every bill. Th this is nuts. This is nuts. And you know, so what are you doing in town? And I tell him I'm in here with renovation hunters and. We got a little project going up on the hill in Tyanesta, and he says, oh, okay, you know, he says, I'll have somebody reach out to you, and, and which he has, and, and uh, <clears throat> so a couple days later, I'm driving over to Ty Tyanesta from Franklin in the morning, and I'm going through the radio, and I come on a country song, and I'm listening to it, and the song's over, and I hear a voice, and it's, it's the DJ on this country radio station this radio host. I says, man, I know that voice. Well here, as I listened to him through two more commercial sets, 
He's a kid from over here in Boardman, Ohio, used to be on K105, our local radio station. Oh, cool. I reached out to him on the phone. I said, dude, what are you doing over here? He says, yeah, I switched over to Froggy a couple years ago. And so now he's on board. He says, that's cool. You know, great story, guys. And, and I, told, I told Mackenzie Cross from Ice Energy, I said, Ken's, we are supposed to be here. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. No doubt. <laughs> right? No doubt. So, yes. so I show up on Monday. Monday morning, <clears throat> and Kev, you had a crew out already starting to lay plates on the new addition. Mm -hmm. had, had some folks inside. Not everybody had showed up yet. We started dropping those old ceiling tile, right? <clears throat> Shuttling stuff out to, out to the dumpster. Before the end of the first day, we're starting to put four-inch roughs on, reefs on, shiplap siding up on, up on yes. the ceiling, you know? And it was like, wow. We hit the ground running on this. Yeah, it really did. The transformation started quick. I gave them a tough schedule, but I said, listen, if you follow this, because we, we always have some variation that, that jumps into the mix, but it's like, if, if you follow this, we can get this done. It's a lot of work, but you guys nailed it. I mean, I don't have to be inside. I'm, I looked at you, I'm like, keep an eye on things. If you have any questions, just answer them. I know you can do it. You have more experience than anybody else wrapped up in there. And it, it's, it, I can breathe easier because now with the time that we've spent on these jobs with the people, I know what people are capable of. They know yeah, what's to be expected. They're in their comfort level. I'm in their comfort level. You and Rob are hanging doors. You know, yeah. I'm tearing the ceiling down. The girls are popping ceiling up. And everybody, it is a well-oiled machine at this point. It, it really was. And it Chris, was. It was. Chris was had handled so all these logistical things through there, and to send him on a window acquisition. <laughs> oh God, I forgot about that. And then they can't yeah. find. I mean, you want to kick somebody in the teeth? Get a phone call from him at the window plant, so they can't find one of your windows. We have the. This is day two. We have the windows already framed up. There's no change. These are windows. You can't just go pick up windows anymore. But with Not that this... said, the guys from Mike and Howe were awesome to us with these oh, windows. Yeah. I mean, they wanted to be a part they, of this they thing. They did find it. Yeah, they found it. But, you know, the, the stuff they sent us was really good stuff. I mean, it, it really was. Um, and so a big thank you to those guys. They, they, did, an, they did an awesome job. I was, only, just... I was only really worried the second day when the squirrel... Uh, blew the fuse of the transformer in front of the house. I, <laughs> when that we kind of freaked power? me out a little yeah. bit. <laughs> Everybody says, why did we lose power? Did we cause that? Did we cause that? But <laughs> nah, dead squirrel over next to the transformer. <laughs> but you know what? Replacing them windows might have been the smartest move you guys made. Because then that allowed us and the makers, it was a cakewalk. I'm pushing stuff. So, all materials in and out, in and out. It, we have well, yes, it worked. That yeah. and and the fact it gave us an approach on the trim. We had oh, that yeah. we had that beautiful three and a half Absolutely. inch casing in there, that craftsman style casing, right? And we built extension jam boxes out of our flat stock, poplar finger jointed flat stock. The makers pre-assembled them to measurements that we yep. determined. We trimmed out windows like Grand Oak Richmond. It was yeah. a professional trim job that you and the makers were able to do because we were at that point and having the materials and everything set up and it just it was so fluid and we we're just like and this you is, know what we found this out, is happening. The, the the biggest thing I learned here is the only thing that Baird Brothers Lumber don't make is toothpicks and rolling pins. I mean, <laughs> we I make rolling pins. <laughs> you do? We do make. We we make French pastry rolling pins. Oh my God! Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, please don't say that out loud. I'll have to buy one for my wife. Do we get um, to talk about Cougar Bob's? <laughs> right. Because that was one of my fun nights, man. <laughs> oh my gosh, Nate Hosey, did he turn it out for us? He sure Another did. Another star of the Outdoor Channel. He came out and joined us. Uh, just a good brother in camo, you know. And he came out and he did, I mean, he was awesome. Nate Hosey did such a great job at Cougar Bob's. I mean, how do you have a better event than at a place called Cougar Bob's? So Chris, Chris says- In the middle of nowhere. I, in the, in the Chris middle says, of no I, I have a place nowhere, that we can do no this. Nothing. 
Yeah. Hey, I'll have a place. It's called Cougar Bob's. And I'm thinking, okay. Yeah, this great. ain't real. And he goes, no, no, I've been there. Have many you been times, there? many times. I started hunting in Tynesta, and I'm from the city, so I didn't know anything. But I was always in the back seat after we got our deer and we would go to the bars and there was only two bars and one of them was Cougar Bob's. It was fantastic. <laughs> it was so much fantastic. fun. Fantastic. So it was a great break for everybody. And um, the family interaction again. Oh yeah, they is, loved it. Yeah. They yeah. had such a blast Just there. like in Kreitz where we can enjoy, get to meet, the makers get to meet the family. I yeah. mean, we have that luxury of, of the initial introduction, but, and you know, on the first day, but then, they scatter, the, the, the owners scatter or whoever, um, the family scatters. Yeah, we and told the them they had come to in. scatter. And, and the neighbors took a soul, I mean, they, they took a pledge that they would not yeah. send pictures. They came and filmed everything and pictured everything. They brought us coffee. They had biscuits out there. They had food out. I mean, every morning, our buddy, oh, yeah. we had coffee, yeah. cups. Everything. 80 foot extension. Yeah, oh, I mean, it was coffee. awesome. The guys across the street. Oh my gosh. They were, they were big hunters and, and we got to sit and talk hunting after, after the build. It was, it was really, it was really just such the perfect way to finish 2022 uh, renovation. Just, just the way it progressed, you know, Kevin and, and, and a couple of the guys, uh, camper, Mike and, uh, oh. Sasquatch. Oh yeah, we had right? Sasquatch with us. Yeah. Right? My buddy Sasquatch, Larry, Larry Miller, Miller from the Outdoor Channel. Long time buddy of mine. We've hunted together so many times. Um, Sasquatch is, he was our crane. We used him <laughs> as the crane. <laughs> he's uh, hes six, 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 seven. I don't know, six, eight. He's somewhere in there. And I think he's still growing. Yeah, he's stronger yeah. than freaking three oxes. Um, so <laughs> we, we'd, ha we'd have him. He would lift JR up on the roof and put him up there, no ladder needed. Um, I mean, and him and JR, you know, they actually bonded. You know, they actually got together and, and they actually, uh, JR went hunting with him yeah, I just, just saw, here recently. I just saw. So they, they had a great time. I got a great picture of them on the roof. It's like <laughs> Mutton Jeff. It is it's fun. It's like two of them. But you know, when they, the makers and JR being a contractor and Laramie had construction skills he, he grew up his dad doing concrete and he's always done some carpentry but when they're they see what's going on they embrace it and their sole goal is to do as best as best a job as they can and have fun doing it because they're up on the roof i i don't know what conversations have transpired, you know, obviously yeah. hunting. They were obviously planning well, to hunt. Well, those two, I mean, JR's here, he's here. They breathe different air. Yeah. I mean, they yeah. really do. <laughs> they breathe different air. But I'm going to say something about JR right now. Now, JR and his adorable, gorgeous wife, Sharon, that, those two are the most home down, southern country people, live in the mountains that you ever want to meet. And JR has one speed and it don't have any stop in it. Yeah. He starts. And he don't stop till it's finished, and he keeps rolling. He's it, a true marathon. I oh, mean, I'm telling you. How about hey, how about they, turning Sasquatch and him loose on that on that wood siding? Oh, oh yeah. yeah, they killed right. it. Oh, yeah. I mean, as soon as that 12 by 24 edition was framed, you know, in that yeah. back corner where the house was too low, it was cool. Sasquatch picked the house up. He put a brick <laughs> under it, got it level. We kept rolling. I mean, you know, that, and and then, you know, there was guys putting siding on putting that one by eight tongue and groove pine in the new addition on the ceiling, you know, yep. people hanging Camp, drywall. Camper, Camper and Mike yeah. doing the, the ceiling, you know, we're, we're framing, we're, we're doing a electrical framing insulation and started trimming out in a matter of a day. Camper and Mike, I mean, they knocked it out. They, the, what they did on that, I mean, from everywhere they did from, from the speakeasy they did there that they, they kept going till it, I mean, it was another one. They kept going till it was done. It was finished. Right. Yeah. But you want to talk about every time when they brought one of these custom blinds out, everyone progressed to bigger, better, cooler. Yeah. There you so, go. There you so, go. So, so the Lutz family don't have the luxury, right, of owning their own property. So they hunt on state land. Well, you can't go put up permanent blinds right. on government land. On state land. land. Right. right. You can't do it. So we, we challenged JR and Mike to this. So they made them a blind that they could pull 
with a, a UTV, a truck, or whatever, set up and, and leave. Same thing, totally off-grid, works on solar panels. <laughs> this yeah. son of a gun, though, has refrigerator, fans, TV. LED lighting, <laughs> and a flat screen. Coffee pot. And a coffee pot and massaging seats. The yeah. chairs you sit in <laughs> massaged you. And they laid all the way flat. So yes. the cool thing about that is, is the reason we don't hunt mornings during early season is not because deer aren't out. They are. But they're always out in the food sources that you want to go hunt. That's why you wait till the evening because they go to bed. You can sneak out there, get in your stand, and then the deer come back out to feed late evening. But with this bad boy, you lay them flat, throw you a pillow in there, and you can take you a siesta overnight and Beep. set you a little alarm on your phone. Beep, beep. Wake up. You've been there all night. Here come the deer. Light comes up. The deer are present. Bag your game. Change the game when it comes to early season hunting. They're, they're, they're yeah. good. These boys are smart. You know, and, and in conversation and in this, this concerning the blind, the custom blind they built, and their idea, and it might have been JR mentioned it, or it might have been one of Mike or uh, uh, Camper. Camper down there in St. Augustine. But I didn't realize it over on towards the East Coast, <clears throat> just like back here in Ohio, the soybean fields. Oh, yeah. Well, over there, it's the peanut fields. Oh, yeah. And big time deer. Yeah. And they follow the peanut fields with their mobile blinds. Oh, absolutely. You know, and I thought, how cool is that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then, like you say, to the to the state and federal land, no permanent structures on it. Right. You hook it up, you drag it out. Yep, exactly. Day, it's not permanent. Days hunt. So if you're going to be hunting all week, you leave it there yeah. all week, and then you haul it out when you're done. Right. No harm, no foul, and and you did it in extreme comfort. So <laughs> camper, one thing about camper, he's going to do it in comfort. Oh, yeah, comfort. <laughs> I'm going to tell you right now, camper's going to do it in comfort. Um, no, it, and, 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 and it's, it's the same story storyline this one was, was a little bit more on steroids i mean a complete transformation of that house leaving the character kevin you mentioned the front elevation didn't yeah. didn't change it enhanced it with the new addition there's a window at that front kitchen sink that i fell in love with the as first day I, we got there I. because i yeah, in cool all window. the years, I have never seen a window like that. Me neither. Typical cottage, cottage it's window. It's a cottage yep. style with divided light above. It had like a little uh, screened um, window section in the middle that, that it was a case. It actually, it was a casement style. It was right. yeah, exactly. Yeah. So two fixed panes on either side. But I'm like, there's no way no. we're going to replace this. No. So I decided to get the new windows to do all divided light to replicate that and actually accentuate it because now it flows across the front with the Baird Brothers log siding that you provide it. That went that, fit perfect. It, it lined up everything the whole way around the cabin. Yeah. It, it looked like we replaced every window in that. It, it, and I was like, okay, this is going to be, this, this window here is, is my baby. Day one, we start framing the addition, and Mike <laughs> sends a two by six through that window. We were like, I, oh my God. I'm no. up on the roof. I grab my chest. I'm going, tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me it's only the glass. Just tell me it's only that. Yeah, it's only the glass. And he, I got, please put a piece of plywood up. We got, and I'm like, oh. and then Joni's dad, Joni's dad who shows used to up. be a glass worker. Yeah, he used to be a glass shows, setter. Yeah, he, <laughs> shoo, yeah, done. You couldn't even tell it ever happened. It was so cool. So you know, he's finishing that up. Joni's on the inside working, and the makers had just steamrolled over that interior renovation, sanding the floors. Adam ate sawdust for two days. Rob Robbie is sanding yep, perimeter. Did, yep. yep, Rachel and Christy. And Joni are sanding and painting and banging up trim and ceiling. I'll tell you, I ate a lot of sawdust on that trip because I was a saw boy for a couple of days. And <laughs> I ate a lot wow. of sawdust. And th but then, that, that, so my boy here goes, Hal, um, you know, that big old fuel tank over there it really needs to go away. That's ugly. And that big tower, that, <laughs> did you see that thing? It was built like it'd hold yeah. up a water tank. It was a, it was a TV antenna 
that was triangulated in solid cast steel. I mean, I, I think that was a booster TV antenna for the East Coast to the West Coast. I think so. They were using it for skip radio. Um, <laughs> I'd like to uh, skip it, but so we just take the old Matabo recip saw, ring, ring, and I was like, boy, that was certainly easy. And then that third one, we just cut it, pushed it, and she was boom, timber. Right, right alongside the tent. And then, <laughs> then we had to get rid of the, there was fuel in the, the oil tank. Yeah. In the oil tank. So, had to drain all that out. And then the, we had a scrap guy that was coming to pick all this stuff up. And then all of a sudden he don't show up. We got a reveal to do and we got dumpsters here. The dumpster <laughs> people hadn't shown up. So all at the last second, everything has went so smooth. And all at the last second, we've got these things that are just gonna destroy the reveal. Yeah. Right? So. And the crew's dropping like flies. So. Because oh, of being sick. Yeah, everybody oh yeah. Sick. Uh, and so. <laughs> I'm on the phone and I'm talking to this dumpster guy and I lost my Southern politeness. Yeah. <laughs> went they, right in the dumpster. And, and yeah. it's exactly yeah. where it went. And they showed up and, and the last, I mean, literally right before 12, we were getting ready to 12 do the minutes reveal. before oh, we, the we reveal. were waiting yeah. for the family. Yeah. 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 The, the family is stacking up and they had to drive the dumpster truck around their parked cars to, yes. yeah. To, yeah. to pick up the dumpster. And I was like, <laughs> uh, you do have a sense of humor, Lord. But anyway, we right. got it. We're all good. Yeah, and, you know what? And and man, it, you could walk in any room of that house, call it your favorite. From the new addition, oh no the, doubt, the accessorizing uh, yeah. into the kitchen. You know, and and we want to thank you guys for the inclusion again on this project. Anything from baseboard to casing, the countertop. My, one of my favorite pictures that I've come across thus far is of the kitchen, those white oak countertops, that new casing around that cottage window, and it just looks like it's been there for years. Yeah, yeah. it does. You know? Yeah. 100%. And, and the, the ceilings, and, and we took a dark cabin and made it brighter. Mm -hmm. And the new addition that you designed and built, and the windows, and uh, I mean, the brightness and everything's I mean, picture our, framed. Our friends from Moss Epoxies, oh, yeah, they yeah. showed up big time. Right? You know, the, the every, game table. Oh, you know. Oh, they, yeah, and so and cool. again, family related to that. Yeah. Applicable products that they can utilize. And then when the family gets to be too much, we had the Booner Bar. Oh, yeah. The Booner Bar. Yeah. My buddy Dane uh, from Toledo Twisted Steel. What a talent. Right? Did you see right? what he, I mean, you want to talk about blacksmithing and ironworking and craftsmanship and, and, and an artist. Yeah. The Booner yeah. Bar. It, it was like a piece of art. It, it really was. was. The Booner was. Bar was amazing. I was jealous. No, I yeah. was seriously jealous of the Booner Bar. Yeah. I'm like, why is that not in my office? We, you know, we, right? we conjured up a rough idea while sitting in Pittsburgh Airport for our third or fourth delayed yeah. flight Drew it after up. the initial <laughs> visit here. And he goes, I think we need a bar here. And I'm like, all right. So I said, what do you think if we do it in antlers, holding up the bar top? Right. I'm like, yeah. So I draw it up and he goes, I got this guy that will do it. So I sketch it out, draw it to, you know, send it over to him. He sends it to Dane and <laughs> he shows up he, with he a plasma cutter, up. a welder. I mean, the guy brought everything. And this, the set of steel antlers, yeah. Solid and, steel. And yeah. I look at it, and I look at the picture, which I thought, you yeah, know, that was like the wish list. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. It's better. It's, it's better. <laughs> it's, it, yeah. And then he goes, well, how are we going to do this? How are we going to? I think, I said, I think. And Dane looked at me. He goes, I know what you're going to say. You want the antlers to come up through the bar top. Yes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yes. That was the ultimate touch. And he, you know what? He did it. We yeah. sat there and drilled and sawed and, and sanded and, oh my gosh, the piece of wood he brought was amazing. I mean, I, I'm, I'm just, that, but I, look at I would what, go there and stay oh, for time on end. That place yeah, is yeah, yeah. amazing. What our sponsors were able to deliver, what they contributed to the build, what our team was able to do, it, that is the perfect ending to a perfect first season. It, everything gelled the impact to the owners 
So uh, that's, you, you that's, know, where I, like, that's where I was so, going. Like yeah, I, yeah, yeah. It, we it thought, just, we always more said, than we that's, ever could you know, when we made up the idea of the show, we said, that's the storyline. And we always assumed it'd be great, but we didn't really talk about it because we didn't know what it was going to be. You can't predict it. You, you can't no. predict it. No. And, and it was fabulous. And so what I would do is I would say to all of those fans that, that want us to come to their place, you know, be real with us. Give us video. Tell us what you want to do. Tell us your history. Tell us your family. Because if we know that, we could we could kill it if you know if we have the time and the right resources. And I, and I just think people need to understand that the more honest they are and the more emotion they got, we will we will deliver. And just give us the real story. Yeah, you, yeah. You know don't don't give us don't give it. Just give us the real story. We want to know what we can do to make your family bigger, better, and more cohesive. Uh, one thing in common, two things in common, tiny town. Yep. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And fantastic families. Oh no. Yes. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. You know, yeah. and that's the thing you, you look at it. We, we probably will never go to, uh, a Charlotte, North Carolina or a Detroit or a, you know, a Boston or anything like that, because we're not going to find places that get you outdoors there right exactly, right. exactly. so it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna always relate back to tiny towns and 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 families and you know finding that story of and you know yet yeah, and i and i'll and i'll say this i'll guarantee you we haven't found the best story yet there is still a better story <laughs> out there that's a scary statement but but no but i a guarantee true statement. It's, it's a true guarantee yes. we that is what we are here to do we are going to find that story and we're going to go out there and and change people's lives. That's what we want to do. Guys, we could we could sit here and and, oh, and yeah. talk the rest of the day away, right? Yep. About about this particular project house in Ty and Nesta. All three are out there for people to enjoy now. Families to enjoy in person, but for the viewers, uh Outdoor Channel Renovation Hunters, uh Chris Filardi. Kevin Tarkovich and Hal Schaefer. I really don't know how to say it. Personal gratitude. No, wow. you, you, look, you don't. You guys, truly, and, and I know both these guys feel this way. You don't have to say a word. You, Baird Brothers' actions speaks yeah. it all. You, you have to say nothing. You guys, the, the, we couldn't have formulated. We couldn't have. We couldn't have prayed for, formulated, engineered, computer drew better partners oh. than you guys and. Your actions say it all. When I got here, when we come here and met everybody here, right, at, right, yeah, dude. I mean, look, I'm like, man, these, these are the coolest people in the world, and that, that is a great thing, you know, because ultimately, you, the richness, true richness in your life, is about relationships and friends that you make along the way, dude. Man, I just went from up in the richness. Of friends when we came here yesterday, oh, so Steve, it's, it's been I, amazing. I want to I want to make the correlation between the tiny town. You know, we talk about the tiny town and what it has to offer. We wish we could take everybody in the country and show them the tiny town. After two days of being with you and your company and your family mm -hmm. here, I feel like you're a tiny town all all in its own. Right this company, oh, and, and oh it's, very much so. You know, and that's tiny town, big family. When 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 uh, when you approached us and, and some of the family, Chris, myself and some of the family, and then we had a couple Zoom meetings with, mm -hmm. these, with these characters and, and the premise of the show and the reason behind it. And, and uh, guys, what they're preaching, get outside and enjoy the outdoors. You're here. It, 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 with with, your, fam with your family and friends, Absolutely. the people that mean something to you, the people that you have the opportunity to. I said that coming here and meeting everybody at Baird Brothers, it's like family, but I was mistaken because you all get along better than family. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> on a good day. On a good day. <laughs> and, and, and I will close with this. Guys and gals and people out there, we all just came through a horrible three years. We all lost people very special to us that we loved. Family, friends, everybody experienced that loss. Don't let that happen and say, I wish I could have done this. I wish I would have spent time with this. I wish we would have went camping. I wish we'd have done this. Don't have those regrets. It don't matter what your place is like. 
right? We can't fix them all. Right. It don't matter what your place is like or wherever it is, if it's even in tents. That's how my family, that's how I grew up. We didn't grow up in a, in a cabin. We grew up tent camping and pop-up camper camping. Don't take it for granted. Tell that person you love them. Go spend time with them. Sit down at a table and eat and converse with your family. Leave your phones somewhere else. Take that time. The investment you make will repay you tenfold, and you will not live this life with regrets. Yeah. There, there you have it, folks. Hey, you've just finished up 2022 with Baird Brothers and Renovation Hunters, and uh, these three are being a little bit quiet mouth about what's coming up in 2023, but I can't wait. So y'all better stay tuned. Put your seatbelts on, guys <laughs> and gals. It's going to be fun. Follow Renovation Hunters, Baird Brothers Fine Hardwoods, Instagram, Facebook, through the websites, and more coming at you. Thank you, Steve. Thanks, Thanks Steve. For all you folks listening, Thanks for talking shop with Baird Brothers Fine Hardwoods. If you've enjoyed this episode and want to stay up to date with the American Hardwood Advisor Series, give us a like and subscribe. For more tips, projects, and inspiration, check us out on Facebook, Instagram, or at BairdBrothers.com. Until next time. <laughs> <laughs>